vocabulum etheris, ominous venere obgenitor. Oh my god. That was a terrifying dream. You had it too? Yes. The same one. The descent into hell. Ah, I need a stiff drink after that nightmare. There'll be more of them. Let's get out of here. You're going to hell! Hell! <laughs> At least you're out of your underwear. You're lucky the hand didn't pick you up on indecency charges. We'll be fine as long as we don't cross the people at the laundromat who own these clothes. So what's the flow chart? Let's start with what we know. A scrub team tries to nuke us in the middle of the night, only we got lucky and stuffed them. The question, of course, is what have we done to earn midnight execution? Damn it, we're ARC employees. We enforce the laws. We believe in what the hand's doing, even though they step over the line sometimes. Maybe they nailed you for being soft on rogue techs like me. Any other ARC agents would have pulled my plug by now. Ah, that wouldn't get us cleaned. Maybe a rebuke, but we could have told them you were a singer with data on other hackers. A few months ago, we tagged some would-be deck jocks that were programming in illegal sea space. Let a couple of kids skip, maybe give them a second chance, but again, they wouldn't scrub us over something like that. I know the two of you are straight lines, but even you can't believe that transgressions only punishes the wicked. This is a tyranny, man. A government with supreme power. Clearly, the first move is to learn what the hand has, or thinks it has, on us. If it were me, my first move would be to a 787 heading to Africa. The coastal African republics have become a high-tech free zone of sorts. A little rough, but the hand don't reach that far yet. No way. We aren't running. She's right, Dante. We've spent our lives enforcing this government's laws. I won't end it all as a fugitive. We're getting some answers even if we have to go to Celine Solux to get him. Where do we start? Do you think we can trust Frank Jersey? Of course we can. Who's Jersey? He's an art captain, our superior. I've never known him to act on political motives, just the opposite. He's taken great risks defending people from corrupt busts. Lives in Georgetown. He would have the official email on our scrub. Nick Cannon. He's jacked into the Voice of God news nets almost constantly. He's one of the few people who get the news before it's run through the Decency Council's censors. Fortunately, he owes us for overlooking some information theft. Don't you two arrest anybody? We figured he was a good person to have our hooks into. Looks like we were right. You two'd have to stroll right into Voice of God headquarters on the mall. It's too risky. Nah, Voice is usually low security. And we don't plan on using the front door. So that's it. Cannon and Jersey. Not much. I wouldn't trust anyone else not to turn us in. I might be able to fill your need. I know someone with links to the front. I don't know how desperate you are or whether you have any faith left in the system, 
but you may want to see what the other side has to offer. It's funny, almost. A week ago, we would have busted you for telling us that. I won't mention him again, but if you're looking for new friends, his name's Aldous Xenon. You can find him in a bodega in Chinatown near Gallery Place. I'll pass your names to him. He's a little rough, not your usual type, but you can trust him. We'll keep it in mind. We certainly need all the help we can get. Don't deal me out. I owe you two for not feeding me to transgressions. You always have a hiding place here. Take that extra key over there. It's yours. I'll surf the underground network, see if anything's being wrapped out about your case. The electronic key to Dante's apartment. The pad of a cybertech artist. You get the idea that the occupant is apt to strum the guitar while working on the computer. The art from around the world gives the impression that he's well-traveled, too, and in more ways than one. At last, a friendly face. Dante Scrivener, underground hacker and amateur philosopher, grants you safe haven in his apartment. You never turned him in, although he is guilty of minor misuses of technology, because he has kept you informed on tech innovations in the underworld. You have become friends over the years. Your trusted Ark superior, Captain Frank Jersey, is alone in his kitchen. He seems to have been waiting for you. You've always found his calm authority reassuring. Where better to go when you're on the run? The kitchen of a cop. A safe, warm, middle-class place to discuss the fact that someone is trying to hunt you down and kill you. Cappuccino, anyone? Maybe some tea with a hit of bourbon in it? You must be freezing after your jog about town in your underwear. Ew, we figured you'd have heard by now. I saw it on the scrub team's playback footage. You two kick some ass. I didn't know you had that in you. Neither did we. Amazing what surprise and fear can do for your combat reflexes. We know it's probably stupid to come here, Frank, but we need to talk to someone on the inside who we can trust. We know the Hand might be watching this place. Screw the Hand! I'm an ARC captain. This is the last place they'd look for you. My standing orders are to scrub rogues like you. You know me. <laughs> I always follow orders. Why was a scrub team trying to burn us in our bed? Who gave the order and what the hell for? We've done our duty for hand and country. Is this our payback? We haven't done anything. That's probably what most of the people you feed to the scrubs said. Those people were sinners, Captain. They deserve what they got. I forgot. You two were believers in the guiding hand. You thought being narcs for reality containment was doing God's work. Still feel that way now? There's got to be an explanation. It was some kind of mistake. Don't play games with me, girl. The hand has something on you. What have you done? Is this interrogation 101, Frank? If I were scrubbing over the net, then you know what they're charging us with. That's why we're here. You tell us what we've done. You want to keep me in the dark? Fine. Maybe you don't know why they want you. Maybe you do. Here's what I know. The official charges are crap. Come on! You mean... This kind of stuff doesn't trickle down to grunts like you? Educate us, Captain. Obviously, we need it. The hands rule, 
isn't exactly the rule of law. It's not what they charge you with, but the fact that they charge you at all. Mm. Officially, you're in violation of the Artificial Realities and Extra Numinal Environments Design, Programming, and Transportation Act. You've been accused of dealing in pornographic virtuals involving human-demon coupling. They said we're skin dealers? That's ludicrous. Look at my case history. <laughs> I've burned whole libraries of pornographic books and virtuals. It's a frame job, Captain. Of course it's a frame job. You two are either guilty of something else, in which case I'll take you in myself, or you become politically unpalatable for some reason and they want to whack you for it. So somebody in Ark wants us dead? Uh, someone in Ark, or Transgressions, or the Pentagon, uh, somebody with some connections, because they've linked you with Mr. Beautiful. They only do that when they're desperate to whack somebody. Beautiful is one of Transgression's dirtiest little secrets. Association with him is as good as a guilty verdict. They accuse someone of running in a narcotics or porn or illegal reality scheme, fabricate a link to Beautiful, haul his ass in, he signs a confession implicating the accused. Beautiful's freed on some technicality, and the accused gets scrubbed, or worse. Let me guess. Beautiful's fingered us as accomplices in a virtual skin ring. That's a good guess. Where do we find this Assyrian scumbag? He's got a hangout in the back room of a speakeasy called The Interface out in Foggy Bottom. Watch your step. Everybody in the place fancies themselves a badass, and most of them actually are. Then we're finished. The two of us can't fight transgressions. Best you can try to do is avoid them. They'll try for you again, that's for sure, still. There might be a way to make transgressions work for you, if you've got the guts to try it. I don't know about guts. Will desperation do? Not everyone in transgressions is a despot hiding behind holy robes. There are some men and women of integrity trying to make the system work. One of them's an acquaintance of mine, named Jean Saint Mouchois. He's a compulsive diarist, he makes entries in a voice journal every day. He's a straight arrow by the book guy, so you can't risk confronting him. You'll have to break into his office, and he has passwords and everything in the system. But if you can break those, you might tap into what he knows about your case. I know that's not much, but it's a start. His office is in Sin Central, the transgressor's complex right smack in the Federal Triangle. Scrubs were out in force that night, which suggests a sweep, which means one of two things. You're either really involved in something dirty, in which case I'll haul your asses in myself, or Transgressions is using one fabricated crime to wipe up a whole lot of undesirables. The question is, why are you two loyal ARC agents suddenly dirt? Who were the other germs? Any pattern to the hits? Only name that meant anything to me was Swivel O'Leary. He ran a speak called Interface over in Foggy Bottom. Wild place. Mr. Beautiful hangs there. Transgressions had been tolerant to this point, but they finally got around to O'Leary. Well, who knows? Transgressions is shadowy in its accusations because it answers to nobody. Virtual porn's a popular setup. They get you for the sexy stuff and for the VR. Not much I can tell you because I haven't worked that turf in decades. <laughs> Pain in the ass more than anything. Spend half your time busting horny kids and couples looking for a few new thrills. But beautiful deals in this stuff? That's not his usual game. Plenty of other demons for that. Stay in touch. I do what I can to watch your backs, but be careful. The hand's not finished with you two. Imperator Solux? Avert your eyes from your Imperator. You are not fit to look upon me, much less serve me. 
How is it that you allow those corrupt ARC agents to escape the hand? Well, we didn't expect anyone else to be in the apartment, so we... You didn't expect? Did you plan? Did you think? Were you not entrusted with an important task? Could you have taken your head out of your ass long enough to point a gun at a couple of sleeping, small-time civil servants and pull the trigger? Well, but I... but I... You disgust me. You with your muscles and your firepower, pistol whipped like a coward. Do you realize that the only thing separating you from an ape is an opposable thumb? As for your balls, you obviously haven't been using them either. So they will be mine. Take him! Get him out of my sight! While many people have seen demons in the bottom of a bottle, there's no telling from the front of this nondescript building that it contains a speakeasy, which itself is a front for the backroom headquarters of the demon Pazuzu, a.k.a. Mr. Beautiful. About the only clue to what's inside is the sign on the door. While many people have a pair of big, dark, bloodshot eyes peer suspiciously out a slot that slides open in the door. The swarthy lids blink slowly. What is it? I'll give you three guesses and a chance for the washer decking unit. The password, numbskulls. You want in? You gotta gimme it. There's a password? <laughs> You're kidding me. Nah, you gotta be a member. Read the sign. Ah, uh, that ain't the password. You guys will have to do better than that. Can't just read. Like the sign says, members exclusively. No password, no entry. Now, beat it. Well, 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 and who's the next victim? I beg your pardon? So, this is what you look like now. Wow, <laughs> they did a nice job. You look great. Why, Mr. Ashanti, my little heart would be all a flutter. If I had one. <clears throat> uh, Rachel, honey, allow me to introduce Cinna Stone. She's, uh, an old friend of mine. Oh, really? No, I just mean we go way back, uh... Yeah, we used to go way back, behind the barn, didn't we, Gideon? Hey, Gid, remember the days when I used to see through you? I love you, baby, I'll always love you. Cut it out, Cinna. This is Rachel. Not THE Rachel. Well, what do you know? Walks on two legs and everything. Wait a minute. Gideon, you never mentioned that you two were... Involved, friendly, acquainted, pals, buddies, amigos, familiar with the beast with two backs, just good friends, a scream in the night, rock around the clock, what do you know, here come the daylight kind of friends. Right, he never mentioned that. So, Zinna, how's things by you? Oh, just fine, thank you for asking. I found that after you, electronics is the next best thing. Of course, it's not like I have any choice in the matter now. I was really sorry when I heard, sir. I know, I know. I got your cards. The flowers. Or rather, the flower. What is that supposed to be? Dashing or something? A man sends you a single rose. That wasn't a white rose by any chance. White as snow. You on the mailing list? One of many, apparently. Rachel, the woman was dead. I mean, not dead exactly. Uh... 
It's all right, Gideon. I was dead, still am, as a matter of fact, in the quaint, traditional sense of the word. I'm not more than a picture in a scrapbook. I just don't get this stuff. It's you. You're thinking, talking, still seem to have a little feeling, but... It's not her feeling I was wondering about. Relax, Rachel. Gideon always preferred his women to have some substance. Didn't you, Lamb Chop? He liked them live, too. So how did they do this? Did most of this myself, actually. You work with the kind of ordinance I work with? You always figure on slipping someday. Especially when the tech updates itself every five minutes. I developed this droid I'd been tinkering with for years. And every now and then, I downloaded as much of my own playful sweet self as I could into data. My personality, memories, you name it. Everything. That's me onto a couple of compact discs. I didn't bother to keep up the holographic file, so you'll notice I'm a bit younger than the last time you saw me. The last picture of me was from a cousin's wedding. I remember wishing I'd brought some plastic explosives with me. The band played satisfaction once too often. Do you, do you remember what happened? I'm sorry, you probably would rather not. Nah, it's all right. I don't remember a thing. I only remember up to my last downloading, which was about a week before what my doctors like to call the unfortunate incident. I remember taking the assignment, though. It was with an old friend from the Georgetown Revo days. You know, an old friend I was seeing in a new kind of light. He was a pretty damn good B&E man, though. But as far as demolitions go, he didn't know shit from Shinola. So, I thought I'd help out and see what it would be like to work together. The job called for us to use proto-glycerin caps. Nitro in gel form. Highly unstable stuff. Not for use at home. Next thing I know, I'm coming out of surgery, and there's no there there. You think your partner's screwed up? Couldn't say. He didn't make it. He always was kind of fumble-fingered when it counted, though. I guess it just goes to show you, never mix love and explosives. Sorry about your friend. Don't be. I'm a holograph. Go ahead, pinch me. Who was in on the operation? What was your target? Oh no you don't, Arkhead. You know I would never give up names. Well, I'm not exactly with the firm any longer. We... I heard, I heard. They finally wised up to the fact that you weren't really a fascist at heart and put a hit out on you. But I figure, knowing you, that it hasn't sunk in yet. You probably figure it's some bureaucratic snafu you can still clear up. And to be honest, it's an old habit that's gonna die even harder than I did, knowing better than to talk about the Revo side of things. I mean, remember how much trouble you had kissing in public? Even after we'd been going out ages, it made you uncomfortable? Was he like that with you, too? I thought it was me. <clears throat> now, he's got his prudish side. And does he still leave wet towels all over the place? Oh, wait a minute. I, I think we're getting off the subject. How'd you like to see him take a walk on the Revo side? Gideon? That's something I'd like to see. Great. Why don't you come with us? We could certainly use you. Of course, with my expertise with explosives, I'm likely to blow you up again. No problem. That's the great thing about being dead. You don't sweat the little things. Great. I have a feeling that with you along, we'll really be able to give the hand a run for their money. Yeah, well, you know my motto. If you can't figure it out, blow it up. By the way, Rachel, I was just kidding earlier. I mean, I knew it was over between Gid and me the first time I heard him mention your name. Really? The first time? Why, Gideon? Judas Priest, is it me or did the road just get longer? Okay, ladies. Beautiful must be behind that door at the rear of the bar. First thing we should do is confront that demon. Once we've done that, we can consider these other leads we've collected. Let's see. Dante told us about Aldous Xenon of the CFF. We should go there soon. There's Nick Cannon at Voice of God near the mall, and Dr. Clean at McPherson Square. 
Jersey tipped us to Mouchois' computer in the transgressions office near Federal Triangle, and he also mentioned a demon hunter named Dean Sterling. Maybe Mouchois got something on Sterling. Of course, if we really get desperate, we can drop in on our old friends Pap Pap and Anime at their comic shop near Gallery Place. Mm, not far from that Xenon fellow. A long road indeed. On to beautiful, ladies. Ever since the previous bartender, owner Swivel O'Leary, was brutally murdered by a scrub team, former Hell's Angel Soar has been nervous and tender as a, well, open sore. What'll it be? Answers to some questions we have. Okay. Beer. I beg your pardon? That's my answer. You only sell beer? We like to keep it simple. We wanted to ask you about Swivel O'Leary. Swivel's dead. We know. You got any idea why the hand would off him? You don't get it. He's dead, as in smeared against the freaking wall. As in no way in hell I'm talking to you about him. Crap. Whatever happened to the friendly neighborhood barkeep that you could tell you troubles to? He's still dead. So are we, if we keep wasting time on clowns like you. Come on, kid. The place still resonates with the shockwaves emanating from the mysterious and brutal murder of the owner, Swivel O'Leary, by a government scrub team. All the normal, talkative patrons keep coming, however. Maybe because now they have something to talk about. He may look like an elf, but he's really a wizard when it comes to jury rigging anything out of nothing. He's even got his appearance rigged to his liking. Due to his size and quiet demeanor, he's easily overlooked, despite the fact that his name has near legendary status. I was wondering when you two would get to me. What are you talking about, fella? We never saw you before. I know, just my footprints. That's only when I got sloppy a couple of times. Who the hell are you? Name's Scub Stevens. Holy cow, Scub Stevens? The man's a legend. You're Scub Stevens? You're kidding me. You expected something taller? Well, yes, frankly. A holograph can dream, can't she? Then, ah, a holograph can have some manners. It's just that we never figured on meeting you. The sign of a good rigger is that he doesn't leave too many fingerprints. You don't leave any. In fact, that's how we know a job is yours. No fingerprints, no marks, vert after images, nothing. From what i see, if anybody could have given me problems, would have been you two. <laughs> too bad for Ark, you're out of the business. Wait a minute, I just remembered something. Didn't a scrub team come after you once? Maybe? No, maybe about it. Don't they teach you arc boneheads about famous disasters amongst your peers? I mean, he took out an entire scrub team. Let's just say you should never try to take a jury rigger at home. I didn't have to lift a finger. All they had to do was open the door. How did you guys escape? Pure luck. They were expecting to take us out one at a time. It's never pure luck when you outdo a scrub team, lady. Now I'm beginning to think our luck has run out. Well, uh, maybe not. You're off the hands map now. That's one good thing. They don't know where you are. They don't know what you know. Oh, there's a bunch of good people that were in your jurisdiction they never heard of. People you laid off of. <laughs> Maybe some of them could help you. People like you? I could be persuaded. Plus, I sort of owe you two. You'd be willing to work with us even though there's a scrub team after us? Yeah, what the hell? It's a slow week. Well, what do you think? 
You need me? Not right now, but that's an offer we're damn sure gonna remember. Fair enough said. You know where to find me. Well, thanks for the offer. You may hear from us again. Uh, what do you think? You need me? Great, but don't you have to, like, get your little black bag or whatever it is riggers carry their tools around in? Nah, I'm a rigger for God's sakes. If you can't make do with stuff on hand, what good are you? Some things never change. A big badass biker. Hey, sweetheart, ditch that loser and run with a real man. I got a full tank of gas in the hog, a six inch wad of hundred dollar bills, and enough adrenal stimulators to party for a week straight. Tempting offer, Chief, but I'll pass. We've got work to do. Come on, babe, what can tall, dark, and depressed do for you that Mind Runner can't? Hanging with me is more than just physical if you get what I'm saying. They don't call me Mind Runner for nothing. Janet Casanova. We're digging for data on Swivel O'Leary. O'Leary. Funny how a man gets more interesting once he's had his intestinal tract splattered all over a walk-in freezer. Swivel played it cool. Kept his mouth shut. Mostly mumbled to himself. Hell, half of that was in Latin. Latin? He spoke Latin? Just a few phrases. Hell only knows where he picked that up. Freaking annoying is what it was. I almost busted his chops plenty of times. Vocabulum S. Crawle. Omnis venere ab genitor. He must have mumbled that a thousand times under his breath. What's with you two? That mean something to you? Vocabulum et grale. Ominous veneri of genitor, huh? The word grale could mean something. Glad I could help, sunshine. Guess you owe me now. I could think of dozens of ways to repay me, depending on how flexible you are. <laughs> This disparate confabulation of decades of urban contrariness in fashion, attitude, and jargon appears to have dressed in the closet of some countercultural royal in the dark. Carries it all off with the haughtiest, most regal bearing, though. The look of royalty, slightly deposed. I shudder to ask. Actually, I thought we'd do the asking. I should have known. Investigators, you have that orderly, methodical look. Seekers of arrangement where there is none. It doesn't exist. And even if it did, I'm not interested. Judas Priest. Honey, you order a drink with that kind of mojo. Joe. Kind of reminds me of the time I tried to get you to talk about commitment, Gideon. Yeah, well, you blew your chance at that one, didn't you? In more ways than one, I'd say. Blew my chance? Did it ever occur to you that maybe some women feel that they don't have to beg a man to commit to something? Maybe I was secure enough. Are you saying that I'm insecure, you tin-plated bimbo? Will you two knock it off? All right, all right. So anyway, lady, what you're saying is you're a fan of disorder. Queen of chaos, actually. Deck in, baby. Say c'est moi. Queen. Is it me, or is this conversation just a tad over my head? It's shooting around you, my dear. Like subatomic particles ricocheting for no discernible reason. And yet I repeat, even disinformation includes information. Do you know how we can get a hold of Mr. Beautiful? Everyone knows that. You just have to say the magic word. Good. There's nothing random about that. It takes a certain particular word to summon him up. And yet not without the possibility of chance occurrence. Much like what happens in happenstance. A cyber duality 
betrothing a current of his appearance with you standing there. Much like if a drink were suddenly to appear at my elbow, for example. Much like the fat with enchants. You want a drink from us? You've got to give us some news we can use. I'm sorry. You're like aliens to me. I see him all around me. It seems easy. You must merely look at the creature to see his essence. But we can't look at him if we can't summon him up. If you could, you would see no more than some petty hood. Not unlike thousands of others. Fate has condemned him. So he is the essence of condemnation. And that lies his essence. Within his essence, you will find him. My head hurts. Mine too. I give up. Thanks for your time, Queenie. A woman of striking warmth and grace is out of place in this seedy speakeasy. You don't look like the type who drinks in a place like this. Not by choice. I'm desperate to earn some money. Know anybody who needs the services of a good forger? Damn right you don't look the part. Why put yourself at risk? That's my business, isn't it? Not if you're pushing your services to us. I told you, it's the money. I need cash to get my daughter out of the city. She lives with a gang of kids that call themselves the Clean Machine. They live near McPherson Square in a tenement across the street from their opposite numbers, the Deadly Seven. That's odd. What caused the division? Was it a result of their deck mutation? Not much we can do about getting your girl out of the gangs, but we could have use for a forger. I always carry my tools. If you want me to work with you, I'm ready. But my condition is this. You two help me convince Chastity to leave the cleans. Do something to show her how empty a life it is, and I'll serve as your forger. Agreed? Keep my offer in mind. It's really a bargain. I'm good at what I do. Decided you need a forger after all, huh? Remember our deal now. You have to help me with chastity while I forge for you. Time goes by and I think you're welching on our deal. I'll leave you high and dry. A regulation but souped up customized pool cue that has a kind of sticky feel to it. It belongs to Mr. Beautiful. Besides the fact that the room is papered with the kind of wallpaper you don't want to stray too close to, there's the pentagram on the floor and all the other etc. as you'd expect in the office of a major league demon. The jukebox, though, is a puzzling inclusion. A blast from the past a jukebox loaded with Mr. Beautiful's favorite hits. Now is not the time to dance! You business in the city dark! On my cue, you get your chance! The cue is not yours to take! While my master lives, he'll use your head to break! A small demon in spats feigns servility. He is the demonic epitome of the plotting servant, carrying out his master's agenda whenever it coincides with his own agenda. What's this? What trouble have I bought? Have I copped a fate? Naughty and full? Are you heat or scrubs who want me shots? I plead you see, I'm only dutiful. I didn't make the game I play. The one you want is Mr. Beautiful. 
You got that right, Shorty. We need to see your master. Now. See him? Not everyone may. Those who do are select. Make your bones. You dues to pay. I will summon him if I elect. But for me to chant and call him hence, from you the code I must detect. Incorrect, you stupid slob! You have no hope! Go get a job! Damn, these underworld types are secretive. Vials of silence, passwords, secret handshakes. Now we need a code word to summon this demon. Maybe there was something in that gibberish Queen Chaos was spouting. It seemed like she was trying to tell us something. If we can just remember what she said. Your brow is twisted. You look tense. You desire still to see my master. You must give the code to fetch him hence. You're impatient. You want him faster. To summon him you lack the stuff. Give the code or court disaster. The underworld will part and rend, a fissure up from hell to surface, and beauty rise at the word condemn! smoke and brimstone and shit when I'm in my human form. Ah. <laughs> this stuff goes right into my friggin' throat, man. You find it even harsher as of late, with human heart and human lung. Perhaps you are not one so great, but I speak with too sharp a tongue as your servant I stoop and crawl. Here are two with stories unsung. <laughs> You're not fooling anybody with the false modesty. Fire up the espresso machine, I want a pot of double stuff ready for me when I'm done with Gideon and Rachel here. Now I'm gonna tell you two, I am not happy. I'm not freaking happy at all when two of my people are making this much noise. Kicking the crap out of scrub teams in your underwear? How do you think that's gonna play with the dagos and the spicks and those damn Indians downtown? I got every mob in this town handing me money because I've got Mephesto's patronage and a sweetheart deal with the hand. You two start blowing their people's brains out and you know what I'll have? I'll have freaking squat, man. And every scrub gun in the metro area will be after me. What is this? We don't work for you. We've never even seen you before. Don't play games with me, girly. That's the problem with the rackets these days. Nobody's got any loyalty left. Hey, I'm fighting a war here. I got enemies on every front and on two different planes of existence. I don't need mutiny by my own friggin' people. We're not your people, beautiful. We're wise to what your sweetheart deal with the Hand is all about. We know that you implicate people in crimes that they didn't commit, so that the Hand is a cover story for arresting them. Well, it didn't work, pal. We slipped that noose, and we figured you know the real reason the Hand wants us killed. We've come for answers, beautiful. Don't push it, Ashanti. Ask Abonidas what happens <laughs> when he pushes me too far. <laughs> he pushes and pushes and pushes, man. And then I have to push back. And it ain't pretty, man. <laughs> it ain't pretty. We know what your game is. We know that you helped set us up for the scrub hit. We're here to learn the reasons why. And don't try to intimidate us because we're not afraid of demons. You're making demands on me. You 
got rocks as big as church bells, boy. But I'm gonna make them ring if you don't watch your step. A couple of ham and egg grifters think they can walk into my office in my speakeasy and give me the business. And don't hand me this fearless rat. You've had the late night kick on your door. The scrub team showed you how vulnerable you are. This planet's brimming with fear, man. I sense it everywhere, in everything. It's in the sweat of anxious transglobe grunts, in lonely beds at 4 a.m., and skinny chicks with ugly scars taking wicked backhands from husbands. Don't think you're special. You got buckets of fear in you, boy, and I'll rip it out and show it to you if I didn't need both of you. This is useless. Let's get out of here, Gideon. You're not going anywhere. You're still in shock from the scrub attack. It happens to everyone the first time someone tries to shoot them in their bedroom. <laughs> Trust me, you'll get over it. The best thing to do is plunge yourself into your work. Now, here's what you gotta do for me. You gotta help me with Sanguinarius. That son of a bitch. He's been a stone in my shoe for centuries, and today, we settle all accounts. Does he think I've got my head in the sand? That I don't know what he's doing with all that ordinance he's stockpiling? That megalomaniac sees himself straddling the horse of death. Man, and he's leading his army of demons armed with bazookas, machine guns, and cluster bombs. He's even invented his own weapons. Guns that fire poisonous serpents and machine guns spraying hellfire. And see, he's got this vision of himself on this horse, man, with my head impaled on his sword, and he's kicking ass all over hell in the name of his master, Belial, who will reward him with chests of gems and chariots of overflowing with food and chambers full of plump naked boys or some shit like that. Oh, your tiny little minds can't conceive the desperate grandeur of a demon's dreams. He wants it all, and that includes my head, but I'll be bum buggered from this to Dorchester if that gun crazy Diablo's getting the drop on me. Let's play along a little, Rachel. Something wild's happening here, and we might be able to turn it to our advantage. I, uh, never quite understood the conflict between you and Sanguinarius. What's to understand? There's nothing to it. It's a vendetta. It's hate. We're demons. Hate's our thing, our shtick, our raison d'etre. It's, uh, it's what we do. Sanguinarius serves that ignorant, hulking Belial, see? And I do the job for Mephistopheles. We've been tearing it up over the same turf for thousands of years, and now I got the upper hand. I had the vision, the brilliance, to get connected with humankind's most potent sinners. I had the genius to take human form and become a player in the rackets. I built what I got with class and negotiation. Every mob boss has a weakness and I played them off one another like a freaking maestro. They all depend on me for something. Sanguinarius thinks he can just buy up weapons and blast his way to victory. That's so typical of Belial's cadre, man. So now it's time to go to the mattress. We're gonna hit him before he figures out how to use his new toys. You two proved yourself by kicking that scrub team's ass. And I think you're ready for the big time. He's ranting, Gideon. He's completely evil and insane. Well, let's hear him out. He's coming to the point. You bet your ass I'm coming to the point. You're going to hell to see what Sanguinarius has got. I want to put a job on that monkey. I'm going to know what he's packing. He thinks he's the only demon who can score from the military. Meanwhile, I got dozens of buyers working the streets, M50 tanks with uranium-coated shells, automatic weapons with armor-piercing bullets, capillary-bursting sonic devices. 
arms race with me, Willie. I'm gonna shut him down. See, you two are gonna help me take away his edge. I know he's whipping on a trio of high brass that used to belong to those saps in the CFF. If we can snatch them out of there, one of them might be loyal enough to steer some Pentagon hardware my way. And if they tell you to stuff it? Then I'll freaking stuff them with broken beer bottles and cherry bombs. <laughs> and the same for you if you don't get your blank minds linked up with my psycho pump. I want you to bring back as many of those tin soldiers as you can. But look out for Sanguinarius. If he catches you, you're gonna have to duke it out with that helmet head. So you got your marching orders. You gonna just stare at me? Or are you ready to go to hell? Exit stage left, Gideon. There's nothing in hell that's gonna save our necks. I don't know, Rach. It's a dangerous hunch, but I think Beautiful's an important part of this mess. We don't have any leads on Earth about why the Hand wants us dead. Maybe we have to go to hell to get the truth. Here's the drill, kids. I use my psycho pump to open a portal between here and hell. You need to get out, just think about leaving, and you'll be back. Unless you try to job me, and then I'll leave you there to burn. Are you all clear on that? You're busting them with a hammer, kids. You think I need this? You think I can't spit out the window and hit muscle as good as you? You two don't hook to this psycho right now. They'll be finding pieces of you all over the Warrens for years. You ready? news of Brock and Ashanti. They are dead, my lord. Dead? You are certain of this? You have seen the bodies? With my own eyes, my lord, it is confirmed. Your enemies are dead. At last! Then the re-entombment is completed. 
I would have preferred to have dealt with Ashanti and Brock personally, but perhaps it is better this way. This nightmare is at last ended. The hand's grip remains firm. God bless America. <laughs> The main storage facility for Sanguinarius's vast arsenal. Big enough to include not only weapons but aircraft and other vehicles, he spends a lot of time here just soaking up the atmosphere. This cartridge contains a deadly, fast-acting, wide-area nerve gas. These plastic charges are set for detonation when the pin is pulled. This unique weapon actually consists of the upper body of an android carrying a machine gun. Worn like a backpack, the wearer merely has to face an enemy to elicit a deadly round of fire over his head from the buddy. This sinister weapon is sharp enough to split hairs and heavy enough to require two hands. Modern weaponry has not improved significantly on the World War II era bazooka, except that the explosive charges are a good bit more powerful. 2095's version of an assault rifle holds a bigger clip and fires higher caliber bullets at a significantly faster rate. A standard army issue laser rifle. One of Sanguinarius's improvements on earthly weapons, this rifle fires a shell that on explosion releases a swarm of hellspawn serpents that slither over an opponent, inflicting countless lethal bites. Admiral Pike, one of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, writhes in pain. Where's Sanguinarius? He's gone! No, he's not gone. He's over there, going over the latest loot that greedy traitor Mangini let him have. The once rugged, now bruised and battered, and nearly fried Marine Chief of Staff, General Tantlinger, eyes you up. Don't worry, General. We're here to save you. We're with the front. I don't care if you're with the foreign freaking legion. Get out of here. You came here of your own accord? How stupid can you be? Evac! Oh, ass! Retreat! Sangrenarius is nearby, and he's spoiling for a fight. You'll end up in worse shape than me! The wreck of the former U.S. Army Chief of Staff. Hold on, General. We'll get you out of here as soon as we can deal with Sanguinarius. Don't worry about me. This bastard hasn't gotten diddly out of me. I wouldn't even give him my name, rank, and serial number. The crucified torture victims lining the horizon, backlit by firelight, seem apropos in this perpetual battle zone. This is the place where Sanguinarius likes to try out his new weapons, and his old for that matter. Like you and catch you and feed 
your bowels to the hellhounds and reckon to it. Stuff it, gruesome. We don't scare that easy. No, but I'll bet you die real good. We did your dirty work for you, beautiful. And you can pay us back by clearing our names. Payback? You ought to pay me back, girlie, after all I've done for you two. You think Sanguinaris is the only one who wants me dead? I keep my standings in the mob because they're too afraid to try for me. I show one sign of weakness, one sign I can be had, and they'll be on me like dogs, man. Like rabid freaking hellhounds. I need you two to be good Germans and wait for your orders. You keep your asses out of trouble, and you keep checking with me. I'll have your next mission. Neither one of you was slaughtered lamb. It is Sanguinarius who tastes defeats. I salute your strength. Let's down a dram. Now is not the time to dance. You business in the city dark. News reporters of the future have become more plugged into technology than ever before. They are literally plugged into their desks with headsets that can spool information coming in from field reporters around the country via telelinks and vidgraphs. Nick Cannon is jacked into a news gathering system, a complex telecommunications console that allows Cannon to monitor global information services. Data flows directly into his suit's computer, is sorted and indexed, and then is displayed across a holographic interface before his eyes. Hey, Cannon, the world can wait. You got company. No, wait a second. Is that you, Gideon Ashanti? Well, then Rachel Brack must be there also. The news waits for no one. I'll be with you. Now, I'm assigning stories. Let's see. Uh, French authorities probe latest report of a hell portal opening. What else? A minor demon named Morax is elected to the Georgia State Assembly. That's it. Download and assign. Hold the rest. Sorry to make you wait. There's too much news streaming over the lines. Too much happening. Hey, speaking of news, what's the buzz with you two? Transgressions put out a wire a few nights ago that had you two scrubbed. They don't usually make mistakes about who's died. Are you two a couple of ghosts? No mistake, Nick. They wanted us. They just didn't get us this time. Wire said you two were running virtual pornography with a demon called Mr. Beautiful. 
I got two reporters on it right now, getting details from transgressions. Planning to run a sidebar on Beautiful. We got lucky and got the drop on the scrubs that came to do us, but luck won't keep us alive. Whoa! Something coming over the wire that would have interested you when you were with Ark. A gang of kids in Judiciary Square calling themselves the Freak Beats. Now they're a bunch of fourth generation deck babies with a serious hate for anyone associated with artificial realities. Warrens around the square are rife with outlaw techs. They've picked their hunting grounds well. Yeah, we've been covering their activities. Han likes to report on techs getting scrubbed. Censors pass that stuff through almost without comment. Freak's current rant is that they're drawing a bead on the whereabouts of an Actodec pioneer. He's got to be a thousand years old by now. I thought they were all dead. Freaks think he's there. Who cares? The only reason I'm telling you this is because you're going to need a hiding place and the Warrens are a good place to disappear into. The Freaks will like that you were Ark. They might put you up. They sound kind of crazy, but you can't be too picky right now. The remains of a holovid and various sim-stim games stand in various states of collapse around the hall of this derelict arcade. As old as the place is, though, a lot of the damage seems recently inflicted. Venom seems to leak out of the pores of this kid's acne-ridden face. He's got a buzz cut that makes it look like his hair is standing up out of fear of the noggin below. The only thing betraying the outward sang-froid of this attractive teenager is the fact that her hair appears lifted with a static charge, and the fact that she seems to eat nails for breakfast, her own, which are bitten to the quick. You friggin' machine! I'm like jacking out of this bitch! You aren't jacked into it, dirtbag. You're in an arcade, not surfing the net. Rich, this place may not be the ideal hideout we heard it was. I mean, you think these punks could outwit a scrub team? I'll say. If these kids had dynamite for brains, they wouldn't be able to blow their nose. They're with Ark! They're with Ark! Will you disconnect? They're not Ark. If they were Ark, we'd be cranked by now. Wait a minute. That was pretty good, kid. You must have read my mind. You psionic? I'm a lot of things. You better watch your friggin' step. Even if you are with Ark. We're with Ark. You're good, kid, but you're not perfect. We're on the lam, trying to avoid Ark, just like all of you generation experimental kids. I guess that part didn't get through to your receptors. Get cranked, asshole! Sounds appetizing. Probably a good thing I don't know what that means, punk. You don't know about friggin' crank hour? Well, kid, here's a novel opportunity for you. Enlighten us. Julius Crankour. He invented the friggin' Actodec. Is he here? He's totally dead, man. Crankour got cranked by freaks just like us. Happened years ago. If he'd known the Actodec was gonna lead to kids like you, he probably would have killed himself. <laughs> Wait till we get his little employee. His blood's gonna be all over the place. What are you freaks talking about? Man, these Gen X kids give me such a headache. We're gonna kill him! That's what! Who? Drexler! Oscar friggin' Drexler! Wicked man, you are really starting to drool! These two morons don't know anything. Drexler used to work for Crank Hour at Vesuvius Labs back in the 30s, back in the friggin' Dark Ages. They were making games. Now we're gonna play a little game with Oscar. Wham! Bam! 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 Oh man, it's gonna be beautiful! We're gonna crank it up! We found out he lives over by Union Station? We got it all planned out! Just a few more hours, we'll be taking him out! You're gonna murder this guy in cold blood? Yeah. And if the freaks kicking in the door miss him, two more are gonna be outside his window, flying with low-grab jet boots. You won't even see it coming, damn freak maker. 
Did you want to watch? Deal's going down soon. Wait a minute. You two and the rest of your gang are gonna kill an old man for something he did 60 years ago? What's that supposed to friggin' mean? You think we can't do it? You think we shouldn't? His damn invention made us freaks. Oh man, I should be the one to kill the old bastard. I wouldn't even need a friggin' weapon. He's killed people with his friggin' brain. Come on, kid, let's get out of here. I'd rather take my chances on the street. They don't call these kids freaks for nothing. Small and cramped as it is, the occupant of this attic apartment seems to be pretty relentless about stuffing it with homemade toys and inventive projects. A nervous old man surveys his cluttered apartment that serves as both living space and workshop. So, there really is an old man here. Maybe the freaks are on to something. Who's in? I don't know any stick boy, wicked or otherwise. And don't mention history to me. Can't barge in here talking about history. I'm just an old man down on his luck. Whatever. Maybe you are just some guy, but there's a gang of deck mutants called the Freak Beats who are convinced that you were Julius Crankhour's right arm, and they're on their way here to get revenge for all their genetic misfortune by killing you. Damn it! Damn it to hell all over the place! I, I was just a punk. A kid. I never even met Julius Crankauer. Or even made it inside of Vesuvius' main lab. I didn't design the stuff. It's not my fault the damn machine corrupted the gene pool. We can talk later. The freak beats are on the way and they're taking no prisoners. Come on, we'll take you someplace safe. You know, I'm not budging anywhere. You don't know how many times I've outwitted punks like this. Maybe it's time I was caught. Listen, we've talked to these freaks and they're whacked. This wicked stick kid's got them wilded on getting you. I'm certain they'll try again. You really should go someplace safer, at least temporarily. I'm gonna write down an address. A friend of ours named Dante lives there. He'll fill you in on what we're involved in and put you up for a while. You'll be safe there. We'll hook up with you later. You got a deal. Besides, it'd be nice to have someone to talk to for a while. something? We're investigating a murder victim named Brian Avery. We also want to ask you some questions about Chastity Bene. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about a Brian Avery. And Chastity, well, she's been out a lot lately. Sorry. What about here? You in charge? Well, you might say that. The others seem to... Well, I guess they've appointed me leader. Well, how exciting for you. What's going on with you and Chastity? Well, I don't know if anything's really going on, but I think she's got kind of a crush on Dolph Van Itty, the Deadly's leader. The thing is, Chastity's so sweet and naive, she doesn't know what he's really like. What's your problem with Van Itty? There's no problem. He runs his gang and I try to lead the cleans, that's all. If he wants to corrupt young people who don't know any better, that's his business. If he wants to befoul them and lead them into perversion, there's nothing I can- We get you, kid. You don't give a damn. I'm sorry, it's not that I don't care, it's just that 
It's not my place to do anything about it. I just try to lead by example. I mean, for instance, if I knew that Dolph Van Itty had some terrible secret in his closet, something that might make the Deadlies disown him, well, it just wouldn't be my place to uncover it. I'm just not talented enough to investigate it. Not like, say, some hard noses you might come across who are investigating a murder. Um, uh, right. I mean, I'm really sorry that I'm not able to because I suspect Dolph's hiding the kind of information that might bring him down, even break up the deadlies. Can it, kid? I'm beginning to understand how a wimp like you got to run this outfit. But look, what's in it for us? I mean, if we dig up some dirt on Vanity, that's great for a power-mad little dweeb like you. And it'll probably make Chastity wise up too. Then if she's dumb enough to fall for your act, that's her business. But there's gotta be something in it for us, if we're gonna mess with those psychos across the alley. What? What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I don't understand you. You understand him, kid. He's saying we'll dig up whatever it is Van Itty's hiding if you give us the scoop on Brian Avery. We know you know more about his murder than you're letting on. I'm sorry. What was his name again? Brian... Amory? I'm gonna have to hit him. Let me hit him, Rach. Get online, killer. Last chance, kid. Avery. The name's Brian Avery. Oh, Brian! I'm sorry. I must have misunderstood you. Yes, I knew Brian, but I'm not sure I have what you need. I mean, I'd have to think about it, but I'd have time to do that for you while you're, um, doing what you said you were going to do about Dolph. Sounds like we already got a deal. Come on, Rachel, let's get started before I have to give this kid a real reason to say sorry all the time. Some sort of demilitarized zone has been established in this alley between the headquarters of the Cleans and the Deadlies. That doesn't prevent them from hurling dirty looks and epithets across the space, however, and air is charged enough here to make the hair stand up on the back of your neck, as if just before an electrical storm. Some sort of demilitarized zone... A young man wearing a modest outfit, apparently from the Salvation Army store, although it's color-coordinated and has fresh, meticulously sewn patches. A young woman uneasily eyes the youths on the other side of the alley. She is a collection of nervous tics and gestures as she chain-smokes cigarettes. What are you looking at? Stop staring at me like that! We aren't staring at you. Yeah, right. Like this guy's not just staring at my breasts. That's not really why we're... It's not like I don't have a sex drive, or that I'm not attracted to men. Well, Christopher here tells us that you and the fellow across the street had a thing going. That would seem like a thing to him. He blushes just shaking a girl's hand. Yeah, Dolph and I went out a few times. Pissed everybody off on both sides of the alley. <laughs> Guess it didn't work out. Same old story for me. Things were about to get hot and heavy, and I couldn't go through with it. Maybe I was lucky. I don't know how any woman could put up with that arrogant SOB. Look at him, with his chest thrust out and his nose up in the air. God, but he is good looking. Dolph's the leader of the Deadly Seven. They think they're above the law. They think they're too good to obey the hand. That's Blood McGrath mixed to Dolph. Be careful with Blood. Most of the Deadly Seven are poofs. But he's a killer. He's the only one that scares me. Well, listen, Gideon. If you want to go out later, I'm a safe date. A boffo musclehead reigns supreme over the Deadly Seven Street hangout. He is adept at sneaking frequent glimpses of himself in windows and finding the excuse to gesture with rippled arms. Simply an arrogant son of a bitch. 
Well, look what squeaky clean tours just dropped off. On a little vacation to Sin World, folks. Mr. and Ms. America visit the dark side of our urban nation. You guys bring cameras or what? Dolph would make a hell of a slideshow back home to show at the next card club. I guess you put an air hose up somebody's rear end, Gideon, and eventually a bubble's gonna make its way to their brain. That is some mouth on that one, mister. Hope she puts it to good use. What could she possibly see in this guy, Gid? Don't know. There's always the possibility that she's just not real bright. Hey, who's not real bright? Who are you talking about? I think you know. And you wouldn't like us to spell it out for you right here, would you? Yeah, I know who you mean. But keep it down. Any chick that I got something going with, well, that ain't for all my people to know. These guys aren't all about love and shit. They're the edge, man. I come across looking soft in front of the Deadly Seven. My rep will go to hell along with my soul. His veins strain even in repose, although repose is most decidedly not his natural state, or even a place he's visited very often. Don't even come close to me, man. Don't even think about it. I hate it when people get too friggin' close to me. I wanna just take them out, just like I'm gonna do with the friggin' clean machine. I mean, I wanna blow them to kingdom friggin' gum. Easy, kid. This guy's like nitroglycerin. You don't want to rattle him. Uh, I don't know how to break this to you, Rach, but the guy appears to be rattled already. That's another thing I friggin' hate whispering. The only friggin' quiet I like is the moment of silence right before ignition. I think he's a little hard of hearing. There's nothing wrong with my friggin' hearing, you dumb shits. We'd like to ask you a few questions. I knew it, I friggin' knew it. You two have that look. That look that says friggin' enforcement, man, or Vert Rebo Squad, or some shit like that, man. I hate that when I see it on somebody. You know, it's guys like this that give us professional, hard-working bombers a bad name. You two go ahead and let me stay behind and give this guy a little personalized lesson. I mean, he's gonna blow himself up someday. I just know this kind of guy. He's gonna want to taste it. I know it. So why make him wait? I could do it all for him now. No, Senna. We don't operate that way. Yes, we do. I mean, we could. Believe me, I'd like to. But like you say, he'll buy it someday. Let's just hope he's by himself. Come on, we've got to keep moving. Look, kid. Just tell us what you know about Brian Avery. And leave all this sick, evil shit out. Watch it, asshole. I could stick a flyweight filter demo on you and you'd never know it. Delayed motion timer. You'd blow up just walking down the street. Nobody's innocent, man. Including Avery? Hell no! Okay, okay, okay. You wanna know about Avery, man? I'll tell you about Avery. He was playing both sides of the fence, supplying me, my enemies, even the cleans with whatever they wanted. He supplied the cleans with explosives? Fireworks for a party, that and some other stuff that didn't go boom. Petty, petty stuff, man, all of it. I mean, man, I had to give the cleans a taste of what he really had. I'm thinking about it too, man. Some of them like that friggin' chastity think she's so holy. But she's no better than anybody else. But things are coming, man. Great things are coming. I had to take you out now. Do the world a favor. Try it, man. Just try it. I got this space wired. I could incinerate you before you got anywhere near me. Back off, Gid. Yeah, back off, Gid. Looking like some college lounge that's gone through a half-hearted effort to be turned into a reception office, this is where the cleans hold their organizational meetings. Meetings that invariably turn into little more than pep rallies to get out there and do good. Believe it or not, it's been said that people like Drip are going to inherit the earth.
Excuse me. Ah! Sorry. Didn't mean to scare you. Oh, uh, no, it's all right. I've been a little jumpy lately. Understandable, what with the murder and all. The murder? Oh, right. I'd forgotten that. I was thinking more about this woman with the sevens. She's a kind of been after me. So what's so bad about that? Gideon, I think I'll do the asking here. Who is it, kid? It's electric sex. Christ, you kids give yourselves kind of hopeful names, don't you? Well, in any case, kid, you're on your own with that little problem. We wanted to ask you if you happen to know anything about that murder we mentioned. Uh, no. I haven't really been around here much. Get a grip, kid. Gideon, let's go. Coming, dear. Good luck, kid. This pleasant young woman is a welcome sight after the company you've been keeping lately. The hand of God and the hand of friendship are always extended here, friends. Do you need a meal? A place to wash up? A bed to rest in? You two look as though you've spent too much time on these dirty streets. Thanks for the offer, but we're not so bad off that we need a missionary. I know I'll be sorry for asking, but what's up with her and the other cleans? She acts like she's the leader around here, and she treats the rest of us like we were soldiers in her army. Anyone gets out of line, and wham, she's down hard on them. Take poor Drip, for instance. He's as kind and self-effacing as can be. He wouldn't hurt a living soul, and he doesn't ask anything for himself. You'd think that just this one time, the temperance would allow him a rare indulgence. But no, she has to ruin it. Again, I know I'll be sorry, but what's she doing to the poor guy? Well, Drip is so quiet and shy. He has an awful time with women. Somehow, and really, it's just the most unlikely match, but he and Electric Sex of the Deadly Sevens have become something of, well, I think item is too strong a word, but, well, you know. But Temperance has threatened to reveal their affair if they try anything. Oh, you don't know, Drip. He'd just shrivel up and die if anybody knew about him and Electric Sex. She's so flamboyant, so indecent, so... He'd be so ashamed that he'd lock himself away. Oh no, oh no, no one must know. But at the same time, I hate to see... If only there was some place else for them to go. A room that wasn't in the cleaner deadly brownstone. If some place else was accessible to them, then it would be easier on Drip and less likely that anyone would discover what they were doing. That might work, but Temperance could still find them out. I've thought about that, too, and though it pains me to hurt anyone, we might be able to block Temperance from being so mean to Drip. And I've no doubt that we fit into your plan somehow. Well, yes, you do, actually. You see, I know her one weakness. There's a line of, well, smutty comic books published by a company named Erotics. I once accidentally discovered a cache of these comics in Temperance's room. If you bring her more comics, then I'll have some leverage over her, and she'll leave Drip and Electric Sex to go about their business. That sounds like blackmail. Not a very clean thing to do, is it? Sometimes love demands we get a little dirty. Comics may have been outlawed, but with a wink and a nod, a few places like this have been allowed to operate as long as they restrict their inventory. Things are quiet now, but normally the place is full of kids hanging out and trying to read comics for free.
A disheveled middle-aged man in baggy Army Navy garb, just a tad too mod for his age. His hair is standing up, and he looks like he can't remember where he left his glasses. Except he doesn't wear glasses. You look like you've been reading too many scary comics lately, Pap. I wish. Hardly have the time. We sell them as soon as they come in, which isn't too often lately. The hand has really been clamping down. A middle-aged woman who looks like she's at the end of her rope. She's trim and dressed in hip, counterculture duds, but she looks exhausted. Gideon! Rachel! You two look like I feel! What is it? What's happened? Probably best if we don't give you all the details. Let's just say we're suddenly unemployed, and our former boss has a funny idea about what a severance check is. Ah, oh, you've said enough. If you need a place to hide, you're welcome. Lord knows you've done enough for us. That's the truth. The way the hand hates comics, you could have turned us in a long time ago and probably gotten a big commendation. And all those kid hackers who hang out here, some of them real cowboys already. We could have been closed down for that alone. Not that it matters. We're practically shut down now, after all. What you two do here is harmless. Who cares if kids read comic books? I never understood why Ark went after places like this anyhow. What do you mean you're shut down now? Haven't you heard? Locusts! It's a plague! Like in the Bible! What are you talking about? Computer locusts! It's like a virus! It comes up fast, then it starts shredding memory the way locust shreds vegetation. And all of a sudden, you got no programming under you. Just a bottomless pit of negative info. You're in a free fall being sucked down into this black hole. You think the locusts are something planted by the hand? It would be just like them to try and lock up everybody's computer. And if this was their doing, it's been successful. Our computers, hell everybody's computers, are shut down now. But I'll tell you, these locusts are something. It seems like a natural cyber phenomenon, a microburst wind shear. Locusts swirl up and surround you, eating everything you summon up to try and get them out of there. Then it creates an info vacuum below you that sucks you down into the pit. If you stay in cyberspace an instant too long, you're a flatliner for good. At any rate, we're shut down now. We've been sitting around all day with nothing to do except stare at a screen full of jumbled commands. We're afraid to jack in, surf the net, and see if we can get a look at things. You may not have to jack in. You say you're getting a screen full of jumbled words? That's it. Just letters. If they're words, it's in no language I've ever seen. That may be your answer. It's shuffling through those letters for some reason, and the way it's arranging them may be a clue. One organization may have some bearing on the next. It's obviously eating every other memory but its own. All it has to remember is its own failsafe. Probably a single word. You can bet whoever implemented this must have had a way to shut it down so it wouldn't eat up their own system. If you can find that code word, you may be able to shut down the locusts. Why didn't I think of that? Because you're senile, that's why. But listen, containment of artificial realities is your business. Think you can help us lick these virtual bugs? Look, we're really pressed for time, but we'll try to help you with the locusts. But in return, there's something we need from you. Anything. Just name it. Well, it's not from me, see, but I... we need... well, we need some... We need some porno comics. We never said anything to you two about it, but we know you handle that sort of thing. Business is business. I'll give you the comics, no problem. Great, and don't worry, they're going to help a good cause. First, let's go swat some locusts. Look, I know you got other things on your mind, like staying alive, but you're safe here. Ark doesn't even know we exist, thanks to you. Can't you give us a hand? We're desperate. Without our computer, we're sunk.
But Comic's computer is essential to the daily operations of the shop. A lot of Mom and Pap Pap's business comes to them over the net. Eureka! I knew if anyone could stop the locusts, it would be you two. Here's a stack of those Pono comics you wanted. Thanks, guys. Believe me, the person who's getting these comics really needs them. The inner sanctum of the cleans. This is where they spend most of their time together, listening to music and holding all night heart to hearts about how to change the world and uphold the dictums of the Imperator. She's that person in the office who's there when you come in, there when you go, yet always seems rested, relaxed, and on top of things. In clean clothes, too. Something I can help you with? I'm pretty involved in something here, I... Funny you put it that way. We wanted to ask you about something else you were pretty involved in. A guy named Brian Avery. Brian and I are a thing of the past. Our romance... Well, it just wasn't an efficient use of my time. With all the attention, maybe he killed himself. Can it, Cinna? Not everyone is responsible for their own death. You're a riot, Rachel. I hope you're taking notes. Put too much pressure on a man, and you could lose him. Come on, you two. Look, was there anything else about Brian? Did any of his gun running ever bring him into direct contact with the hand? Honest, I really wouldn't know. Why don't you go bribe some transgression officials or something? That might be a better use of your time. Let's see, that would take some money, I believe. And we lost our jobs recently. Well, why didn't you say so? I could help you with that. As part of our battle against evil, I've been figuring out some ways to deplete the coffers of our enemies, the deadlies. I think I've found a way to jack into Dick Covet's bank account. He's somebody who could really learn a lot from impoverishment. I'd just have to run a rap on his bank account. Run a rap? Yes. Don't you know what rap means? Oh yeah, sure, it was some kind of poetry about oh, a thousand years ago or so. Not exactly. In this case, it means Rapid Assessment Program. Yeah, right, whatever. So, you interested? Yep. We're having trouble getting anything done without some green to paint the way. Okay then, let's give Covet's bank account a spank and see if it hollers. Holy cow! You did it! Well, I couldn't quite get it all. Only about a hundred thousand dollars. Some of it seems to have been seized by the bank's computers when they realized the account was being emptied. They've got a vigilance program that's practically an AI. He must have had some loans or something they were afraid he was skipping out on. Either way, though, he's cleaned out, that's for sure. Thanks, Fracky. And don't worry, somebody better than Brian will come along someday. Somebody who will appreciate your hard work. Looks like an off-duty priest from the barrio, but acts more like he's an on-duty minister in a suburb of well-adjusted rich folks. A beatific demeanor with a beatnik exterior. You look a little, well, aghast at things here. I understand. Situation must seem odd to you. 
the way we live in such close proximity to our rivals, it's very zen, really. See, the deadlies and the cleans need each other. It's like yin and yang. Jeez, Rage, I guess that guy was what you'd call a liberal, huh? None of these people bother him. A young, impeccably neat and well-mannered woman examines a group of pamphlets and flyers espousing the hand's edicts. The hand's message is one of discipline and self-correction. We must purify ourselves of weakness and sin and resist the seduction of technology, the urge to elevate the mechanical over the human. Only then can we serve the state and God. Ram it, sister. We played by the hands rules long enough. Try evangelizing us and I'll bust you one in the jaw. I shall not be baited by an unbeliever. Solene Solex's divine power is evident in his mastery over the gates of hell. I need look no further than across the street to witness the wages of sin. The deadly seven flaunt their irrestraint and think they can sin with impunity. But they will pay for their iniquity. What is the meaning of... of these vile publications? No meaning. Call it a gift. They're yours if you agree to ease up on electric sex and drip. I see. Will I... I certainly do not have any interest in these awful things, but I, I, uh, I will keep these in my possession to uh, prevent them from falling into less disciplined hands. Removing these from the market will be a small victory in the war against sin, but a victory nevertheless. And you'll leave sex and drip alone? Yes, yes! Damn them both to an eternity's burning! I don't care! Leave me to enjoy... Uh... Dispose of these comics. What now? You wouldn't have any more of those lusty, sinful, violent comics to dispose of, would you? This pleasant year. We delivered the comics. He certainly had her pegged. She tried to play it cool, but her face went red and her hair practically stood on end when we handed them to her. Excellent. Let her try something now. I know I shouldn't be happy to have something on temperance, and I try so hard to love her as much as the next person. But she's so hard and unforgiving. And maybe this will teach her a lesson. Tough love, I think it used to be called. Now Drip and Electric Sex will be free to express their love. Boy, I don't know if love's exactly the right thing to call it, but they're certainly free to do it. The front room of the Deadly's clubhouse, where they attempt to impress upon visitors that they don't give a damn. Maybe it's the foot table, or the furniture covered with skins from endangered species. The ultimate statement seems to be as glaring as the neon sign. The Deadly's consider themselves the garish light of the world. A smooth-talking, risk-taking, hacker-finagler, wheeler-dealer who sleeps with one eye open and one ear cocked for the sound of change. She's street smart. It's just that the street is Wall Street. Well, hello, hello, hello. Don't you two look like a pile of money? Or rather like two people who made a pile of money in a disreputable manner? Like maybe from a little friend of mine named Dickie Covet? I can see you're feeling real bad about that though, so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you a way you can convert your sudden and mysterious amount of revenues into some cash resembling a major mountain of money, which would allow you to pay back Dickie Bird and revive his spirits while also establishing yourselves as mini-moguls. You hip?
What's your plan? Uh-uh, brother. You want to play, you got to pay. Five thousand simoleons, sucker. I don't think so. Sounds too shaky to me. Shaky? Shaky? How you think Earth Shakers got to be what they are? Get out of my face! In clothes that are stylishly funky, this well-coiffed young man has beady eyes that never seem to quit flicking around the room. It seems like he's checking out people's shoes, their watches, their jewelry, even though the stuff he's wearing is obviously top of the line. Those are pretty wicked-looking kick boots you've got on. Oh, cripes, it's the fashion monger. Get lost. Electric Sex is gazing out the window into the alley. Her look suggests that she's done it all and is looking for something more. I see you've been making friends fast around here. Mm -hmm. Come, let me get a good look at you. You're really taking a chance, you know. Promiscuity is a one-way ticket to a dark afterlife these days. Oh, open your minds! What are you holding on to that old righteousness for? What'll it get you? Listen, we're all in for it. And this is our one chance to catch a little bit of heaven while we still can. We still got a few more things to finish up in this plane before we're ready to face the consequences. Suit yourself. Where the real business of the Deadlies is conducted. Drinking, lounging, listening to death rock at levels guaranteed to make your ears bleed, and watching illegal porno vids. A plump, boozy young woman avoids the glares of the young man lounging on the sofa. The smell of gin surrounds her. You wouldn't be packing something I can hit on, would you? What are you talking about? Hit what? A little drink, a dust buster, a flam cutter, I've got the vermouth, the bitters, a dozen fruit juices, everything but the gin. Not our problem, girly. Do your own shopping. I've learned that lesson. That lazy bastard Languo volunteered to get me a bottle when he saw me about to exhaust my last fifth. Except he's hardly moved from that sofa to get it. He's got the hots for you? If you can call it hot, what's he think any woman would see in him? He says he wants me, but he don't try too hard to get me. Help us out, and we'll enroll you in the beers of the World Club. Ooh, I'm crazy for Angor Steam. Just the right mix of pale and bitter. Damn straight there could be violence. Blood McGrath could do the psycho at any moment. 
Dick Covet would die if somebody were wearing nicer shoes than he was, and I might throttle Lecter if she recommends one more diet course or sends the cops over here again looking for my Jews. Why stay so close to each other? Why not move away? Let them win? This is our home too. And don't think we haven't tried to make peace. A few months ago we had a sit down. Idea was to eat a big meal together and work out our problems. We were at each other's throats. Whole thing ended with us throwing food at each other and Blood McGrath threatening to burn the cleanies house down. How terrible. At least I stole Stefan Benevolus's smokes. A cleanie smokes? Seems out of character. He doesn't. They were a peace offering from Prophet, and Stefan was too polite not to smoke them. You sure you don't have a shot of something on you? Reclining on an old couch. From the looks of things, the couch was new when he first sat down. Hey, how's it hanging? What are you, on guard duty or something? Huh? Oh, I get it. Right, man, right. I'm keeping an eye on things. Used to be a holovision here, man. Right where you're standing. So, you see a lot of what goes on around here then. Maybe you could answer a few questions. Go ahead, man. Fire away. It's cool. I wasn't doing nothing anyhow, just sitting around trying to think where I could get a still for Barbara. A still? Yeah, man, she likes to juice it a little bit, but I don't care. Makes her look kind of sexy, you know? So like I thought, if she had her own still, man, she'd look like even more so, man. So that's what I want to do, man, is get her a still. Put her right here next to the couch, we could talk. Simmer down there a minute, Speedo. You gotta answer some questions. The way you're planted on that couch, I figure you know something about the comings and goings of this place. I figure you could tell us something about Brian Avery. Huh? Oh, yeah, Brian. I know Brian. Wow, I mean, like, I know some things about Brian, but I can't talk to you about him right now, man. I, I, I gotta scope out the still situation. What? Look, do you even have any idea where to get a still? No, man, that's the problem. I mean, I'd have to get up and, and go do some hunting or something, I guess. Look, if we get you a still, will you tell us about Brian? You'll find me a still? If you'll talk. We're talking assembled, right? I mean, you know, ready to go. Yes, yes! Tripes, we better go find this thing before he asks us to throw in a sandwich machine. The full-body surge seat next to the toolbox on wheels reveals both what goes on in this room and the fact that it can be moved at a moment's notice. It's a cramped, back-alley location, but the technologies for cyber limb and ocular enhancements, although outlawed, have been in use for so long they've become fairly miniaturized. A fairly long length of copper tubing. The woman, known only to you as Dr. Clean, surveys the mess that was once her illegal pawn shop and surgery. What happened here, Doc? You never were much of a housekeeper, but man, this is ridiculous. Technology assessment finally caught up with me. Sent a goon squad over here to do this. What now? You're not crazy enough to restock, are you? What's with the questions? You two looking to set me up a second time? What's that mean? You think we caused this? Somebody sure as hell punched my ticket. Not us. We struck a deal with you and we stick by it. Damn it, we came here to see what you were stalking. We thought maybe you have something that could help us. The hands come down on us too. 
Look, I... I apologize. I know you wouldn't sell me out. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Head west? Maybe get my face reconstructed again. New identity and start over. Not that I have much left to start with. Look at that pile of junk there. This Preston Tensile picklock's about the only thing I'm certain will work, and that's because I was carrying it on me. Listen, I can use the cash. I'll sell this to you and install it for $6,000. That's a steal, guys. No cutting involved. Simple skin craft. The lockpick folds on itself when not operating. The whole mechanism only weighs half a pound, and you can have the graft removed any time. Nobody'd know you ever had it. What do you say? That's more like it. I can start getting myself clean again with this. Stay close now and I'll attach the graft. Hold it right there. Don't move. Okay. You can come in now. What was that all about? He was scanning us. The scanner had a motion stabilizer on it too. Move and it stabilizes you. Stabilizes you as in poof. Very good. How did you know? You couldn't find those scanners if you reduced this place to toothpicks. I don't know. To tell you the truth, it just came to me. Weird. I guess it's just something I picked up somewhere. Anyway, I take it Dante told you we were coming? Yes. You'll have to forgive the scanner check. Standard precautions. Anyway, actually, when Dante mentioned you, I asked him to send you. I thought a couple of renegade arc agents could prove... useful. Arc agent, arc agent. You ever notice how much that sounds like, Archangel? Can't say that I have. Dante seemed to think you could help us. Oh, well, there's no doubt we could help you. The question is, are you going to help us? You said yourself a couple former Arc agents would come in handy. We can help out. Some. 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 Some's not enough, my dear. You think the resistance is staffed by part-timers working their way through school? Don't tell me you can help some. Take it easy, pal. Rachel just has a little trouble with the concept of total war against somebody we just quit working for. Somebody we gave heart and soul to. Well, there's more to it than Solix, but cutting off the leader of a rotten system should help considerably. Snakes rarely regrow heads. What are you talking about? You still want in? It's got to be more than shelter in a storm. You've got to help us. I've got an assignment that only someone with a background like yours could pull off. It would involve swooping down and leveling a mortal blow against your former employer. The hand of God itself. All right, I'm in. I guess I just can't find any more excuses for Solux. That's because there are none. Which is why your assignment is to kill the Imperator. What are you, out of your friggin' mind? Solix has so much security around it, suicide even think about it. Shit, they probably could kill you for thinking about it. Solix probably has psionic bodyguards. Three of them, to be precise. A reconnaissance that cost us the lives of two freedom fighters. We've even heard they've developed something called a Resonator Shield. Supposedly, Solix wears a device that is programmed to recognize the vibrations of various grades of bullets. In flight. The rifling of the bullets apparently slices through the air with a detectable resonance. The device emits an aura that matches the vibrations, thereby disrupting the flight, slowing up the bullets so much they literally bounce off the wearer. In any case, true or not, 
That kind of personal security is why we're not going after Solix. Wait a minute. I thought you said... We're going after Solix's car. The Selena Zine? Come on, it's got to have security every bit as tight as the protection around Solix. And even if you got through to it, wouldn't they scan it for every type of demo device imaginable? They've put most of their effort into guarding the building the car is in. They figure if the compound is secure, the contents are secure. But there's a lot of business in and out of that building. Getting past the initial security shouldn't be impossible. From there, you've just got a team of 24-hour mechanics to outwit. As for the device, take a look. It's a homing mechanism, not a bomb. The bomb comes later, when the car is in motion and occupied. Still, they'll detect it right away, even if it is a tiny little thing. They'll find it long before Solux gets anywhere near. Look again. This thing has an anti-scanning shield on it that cost us dearly. The final mechanism contains no demolitions and it emits no radio waves. It's virtually undetectable. So, how does it work? It simply hums in response to engine vibration. That means we can use a resonance impactor, a smart bomb that homes in on the particular frequency of this little hummer. Wow, what a great deal. All we have to do is go out and get ourselves killed for the resistance. Actually, probably tortured, then killed. And in return, you'll, you'll what? What'd you expect? You think you could just sit around our various safe houses and twiddle your thumbs? You want to be safe and secure, you've got to help us topple the androgyne. No one will ever really be safe as long as the hand rules America. He's right, Rach. Besides, we owe the old girl, uh, guy, whatever. Hell, you know, we kill Solix, they might finally find out what sex that character is. Oh, there's a good reason to do it. For whatever it's worth, you survive, and I'll bring you to Senator Burr, the leader of the resistance. Killing Solix has been my main orientation for years. It won't be the end of the struggle, but it will be the beginning of the end. It'll bring us that much closer to freedom, and it will rejuvenate the entire movement. Good luck, Archangels. Give me the device, Xenon. It's right over there. And you know where the Selena Zine is. The garage at the Pentagon. Good luck. Known as a Hummer, this small handheld homing device is made especially for use on automobiles. It looks like a typical garage office, if you overlook the fact that the occupants aren't mechanics, but security people. The garage dispatcher, a surly slob, is on the paging system, dispatching government vehicles to locations throughout the capital. Yeah? You from the Polo Sausage Place down the street? Think you guys take long enough to deliver a couple of lousy sandwiches? We're starving down here. Garage 16, we need an XF5700 limo down at the Watergate. Pronto. Over. No, we're here on official business. I see you've already been snooping around the place. Sector 7, do you have a hover van service and ready? Over. Listen, what's your business here? If you're busted, that's your problem. <laughs> this ain't payday, and it ain't no charity ward, so don't be looking for handouts.
Sorry, this crew only works on vehicles. Listen, I've dealt with you guys before. I don't have time for all your bureaucratic bullshit. If you know who you're looking for, I'll page him for you. We got no one here with that name. See for yourself. Uh, listen, if you're gonna come in here and bust my balls, at least know what you're after. Uh, yeah. We've got some parts out in the truck. We're with Shank Tools. Sorry, ain't nothing from Shank's schedule. You'll need to file bills of transit, receipt, and lading, and triplicate and initial customs, decontamination, and tariff affidavits, in addition to submitting the shipment and vehicle to molecular scans. <laughs> the real pain in the prostate. Why don't you come back on someone else's ship? A large guard seems more interested in the bucket of barbecued ribs he holds than in performing his duty. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, be with you in a second. Hmm. Oh, these ribs. I love these ribs. They rip up my stomach, but I love them. Let me just wipe my hands here. Uh, don't want to get sauce all over your papers. Now then, what can I do for you? Uh, parts delivery. Got a truck idling on front with a load of axles and exhaust systems. Where do you want them? Parts? What? Axles? I don't know no axles. You gotta have a level 4 patch to get in here. And I don't care if you're bringing me axles or 30 pounds of ribs. <laughs> Let me see your patch if you got one. this? Am I speaking in tongues or something? A pass. I need a level four pass. That was easy enough. You gave me a pass, and now you can pass. <laughs> It's an awfully spacious garage for just three cars. The Solinazine and two of Solux's weekend sports cars. A mechanic is at work under the hood of the Imperator's parade vehicle. Yeah, what's up? I got my hands full of vacuum tubes here. We're artificial reality containment. Got a report on someone down here using a VR emissions unit. Are you kidding? What do I look like? Someone who's looking to get set up with the Prince of Darkness or what? Listen, I don't mess with nothing that's not regulation. I'm strictly by the book here. I got my hands full just keeping this thing running. Well, we just want to take a look. It'll just take a second, really. Listen, I've taken this thing apart and rebuilt it more times than I care to remember. What would I need with unauthorized tech to cut corners? I know what I'm doing. The Solinozine, Soline Solux's official limo. So what are you here for? Just to wander around the joint? Listen, I've dealt with you guys before.
Let's check the roster here. Name doesn't ring a bell. Check again, old man. You know, a blot on your record for uncooperative behavior with the Bureau doesn't fare well when, say, you're in need of a government service. So I'm dealing with a couple of ball busters here. Fine. Joe Boyle, get your ass to the dispatcher's office. Over. Now, if you don't mind, I work for a living. Okay, the homing device is planted. Let's get the hell out of here. Job, man. We'll have to wait and see if the device works, but you've gotten it hidden on the selenazine. In the meantime, it's time for you to meet Senator Burr. You're one of us now. Go to the British Embassy. It's in DuPont Circle. It seems ironic that this charming, refined, old-world parlor is the waiting room for the revolution, the outer office of the head of the CFF's so-called shadow government, Aaron Burr. You tentatively approach the Charles multi-server unit. Wrinkled skin and sagging muscles reveal the unit's age, but it is powerfully built. His flesh is so real, so human. But then there are those machines in his abdomen. It's monstrous. Yeah, Charles, your specs, please. I am a Charles-class multi-server unit. My hardware is powered by 400 megahertz of processing power and a 12 terabyte drive. Gibtex Free Association modules and Pandar Lab creative memory cells serve respectively as primary operating system and source storage. My wetware was spawned from New Corporeal's Genesis genome and grown in a hothouse near Federal Center. Wetware incubation occurred over seven month period. Quality assurance tests completed. Current diagnostics. Major organs. 73% efficacy. Rating reflects minor heart blockage. Development of possibly precancerous polyps along the wall of large intestine. Organelles. 89% efficacy. Rating reflects deteriorations in lymphatic system. Skeletal system. 100% efficacy. Circulatory system. That's enough, Charles. Thanks. Don't think so, Charles. Go ahead, Charles. I'm curious. Selected services catalog for Charles Series Multi-Server Unit. Last upgrade, December 2048. Selected list, areas of specialty. Auto mechanics, cosmetology, epistemology, heating and refrigeration, palmistry, and wok cookery. I am a licensed EMT. 
language proficiency, major European, African, and Asian tongues, dialect upgrades available, both Mandarin and Cantonese, with assimilator modules for adaptation to local variants. My lexicon processors are fashioned from a mech cortical tissue matrix for rapid adaptability. I am a skilled raconteur, programmed with fictional superstructures, symbols, imagery, and themes particular to dozens of cultures. Some other time, Charles. We've just met, you know. A young Asian woman is near a flesh and steel monstrosity. You've got to be kidding me. That can't be what it looks like. Can be and is. What's the matter? Never seen a meat before? I've never been this close to a living one before. Their skin's real, and yet the machines... Look! The control panel rises and falls as he respirates. Doesn't he spook you? Not me. But maybe that's cause we're sort of family. Did my fetal time in a Fecan 5085. You look fine. Any negative side effects? What do you remember about your mother's womb? Do you recall how that affected you? Hell, I've got time-elapsed film of my gestation. Yeah, I remember reading about it. Science makes war on motherhood. That was the feeling, I think. Take some adapting. But he's got his uses once you're onto him. Knows what he's doing in the embassy commissary. Great omelets. Charles is over 68 years old. His hardware hasn't been upgraded in 50 years, so it's clunky and his organic tissue is aged. But you're not so bad, are you, Charles? Uh, system memory and processing speed functioning at 89.4% capacity. White blood count is normal. No infections or serious illness to report. Freaks the hell out of me. Solix may be evil, but I can't be sorry he put the meats on cold storage. I mean, just look at this hideous thing. A dangerous-looking man casts a withering, unforgiving glare at you, making it clear that not everyone in the front welcomes your presence. So you're Ashante and Brock, the rogue arc agents who've got the five fingers shaken like palsied old women. You got it, Chief. Doing your job for you. Maybe you are. Did they check these two vivid? Stripped them and scanned them. Any weapons were stripped of ammo. Senator Burr wants to see them. You make one false move near the Senator, and I'll kill you. We're on the same side, hard guy. I don't know that. I just see a couple of ARC agents standing in CFF headquarters, and I get suspicious about how a couple of narcs took out a scrub team. I thought we passed our initiation when we helped Xenon set up Solux. I want him dead. Now, how do we know you haven't tipped Solux about that homing device you put on his vehicle? Xenon's too trusted. So Senator Burr, for that matter. I'll be watching. You should remember that. Senator's through the door on the left. Lucky for you, your fate is in her hands and not mine. Where CFF revolutionaries get to watch the Revo as it unfolds on holovids and internets like the rest of the country. It's also where they develop illegal computer soci that they'll need to implement when and if they ever overthrow Solux. A woman works a keypad like a concert pianist. She seems determined to make her dated machine work magic. This looks like a command center, is that right? Good eye, Chief. You're working on a Lex 6000? Little dated, isn't it? Casings from a Lex. I got the insides cranked. It could probably handle a deck if there were anywhere in cyberspace worth going. This kind of hardware isn't easy to come by. The Brits pony up what they can, but the hand limits tech transfers even in here. Just a matter of time before the hand stops respecting diplomatic immunity altogether.
Aaron Burr has left the elegant trappings of an embassy conference room relatively untouched, as if to remind herself that while it's meant to serve as her office, it's only temporary, and to savor its plushness would be to overlook the fact that there's a turgid revolution brewing outside. A formidable Aaron Burr sizes you up with the perceptive eye of a politician. Mr. Ashanti, Ms. Brock, Aldo Zenon has briefed me about your midnight visitors. Never trust animals that eat their young or a government that shoots its own people. Right now, we don't have a lot of trust left for anybody, Senator. You've proved to me that you have your uses. For now, at least. I'm going to risk trusting you. You won't regret it. Desperate people can make loyal allies. There is something you can help me with. Something that has divided the Front's leadership for years. It involves missing comrades. The current effort to strike at Solux are by no means our first. Our most ambitious and perhaps reckless attempt occurred a few years ago when 15 of our finest agents undertook a guerrilla raid on the Pentagon. Acting on intelligence from agents we have on the inside, the attack force was to infiltrate the Pentagon, make its way along air ducts and secured hallways to the Imperator's Sanctum, and kill it. But something happened. They never made it to Solux. In their final transmission, Marcus Vanders, the attack leader, reported they discovered something so significant, so disturbing in its implications that they didn't trust explaining it over wireless transmission. Whatever it was, caused Vanders to immediately abort the mission and order a return here to the embassy. The last we heard, they were engaged in a running firefight with the Imperator's troops. Eight members of the attack team were confirmed dead by Vanders before we lost contact with him. You figure the Hand is holding them prisoner? Maybe in hell? It's possible. I'm among those who think we should not give up hope of rescuing them until we know they are dead. Corpus Delecti, eh? You're the boss. Why not lay down the law? Because my staff is divided over the issue. Because I haven't people to spare on what is probably a futile effort. But now you've got us. Surplus labor, eh? A little gravy. You get the picture. As you fight to save yourselves, I'd like for you to search for evidence, on Earth or in Hell, of the attack team's fate. In addition to Vanders, the unaccounted for commandos are Harold Balk, Lena Gordon, Vic Tavaleo, Mick Malone, Claudette Simeone, Francis Robinson, and Czech Vilsov. We'll do what we can. Report to me whenever you learn anything about the attack team, or about anything else that might aid in the struggle against Solux and against Hell. You can usually find me in the command room. So what are you here for? Just to wander around the joint? Yeah, yeah, I see ya. Go ahead. Ever since the Joint Chiefs of Staff were sent to hell, the Pentagon lobby hasn't been quite the bustling place it used to be. And a lot of the traffic it does get is dragged through, across the floor and on through the airlock doors. Traffic has been further lessened by the fact that these people rarely come back out. Without a side view, you'd never guess that the person sitting behind the reception desk is actually part of the reception desk. Usually they're genderless, but this one is apparently a custom model.
say, I like the cut of your jib. What say you ditch the dame and you and I go ashore? I don't believe this. The last one to program her must have been a sailor. Admiral. He must have been at sea a long time. Let me adjust her. Idiom change. Receptionist. Mature professional. Non-military. How may I direct you? How may I direct you? Wait a minute. We nuked you. I saw you. We were... What the hell's going on? Ah, I was playing with you. Why, you were in hell, man. How do you think you get to hell? You got to be dead in the first place. Something's fishy here. Of course it is. But you are barking up the wrong tree. The Zuzu's the one you ought to be watching out for. He sent you to me, didn't he? He sent you to find out where I get my weaponry. And how did Pazuzu get you to approach me? Well, simple. He has something you want. But do you actually think he's going to give it to you just because he said he would? So I tell you again, you are on the wrong side. No, the long and the short of it is this. If you want to get something out of Pazuzu, you're going to have to have something on him. I suppose you're going to make us fight you again before you give us something on him. Much as I like to, lady, it's unnecessary. How strong are your allegiances to him? They're non-existent. I thought as much. You two are talented, but you're no more than mercenaries. In any case, what you probably don't know about Pazuzu is that he likes to play monster. His biggest service to the mob is that he maintains a hell pit where the mob can hide hostages and stolen goods. Hostages? That's when warring mobs agree to parlay and each give a hostage to Pazuzu to ensure good faith negotiations. He's got a couple right now, as a matter of fact. He's also got a kidnap victim the mob's holding for ransom. Crystal Getty, heir to the limitless Getty fortune. <laughs> If anything were to happen to her, like if she were to, uh, escape, Pazuzu would be in hot water with the mob. Useful information, if we know where this hell pit is. Well, son, I've been thinking of sending you two back to hell in return for you freeing that disgrace to the uniform, Mangini. Uh, only thing is, this time you'll be prepared. Can we meet on the battlefield once more? <laughs> Are you ready to go to hell? What are you waiting for, soldiers? The enemy is before us, and our mission clear. Are you ready to go to hell? Now then, are you ready to do your duty? Are you ready to go to hell? To Hades, then! A turret!
What do you want from me? I got a card game here. Beautiful's not around, is he? Yeah, he's over there taking an acid bath. <laughs> Who are you guys supposed to be? This is a hell of a place to be taking a stroll. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> the jokes you practice mark you funny. But I tire of wit and want your money. Do your deed and make the plot less scanty. Shut your mouth and up the ante. Alright, there you go. We're all in. I recognize this guy, Gid. That's Delmonico Ferlinghetti. He's a capo in the Ciccio family. Yeah, you're right. And the other guy's Carlos Portillo with the Colombians. Italians, Colombians, and the Apache Sioux Fusion have been shooting holes in each other for years. Savage turf wars over empathics trading. I take it these two are willing visitors to this charming pit. I go 50. I'll see. That's right. My good friend Del Monaco and I are voluntary hostages. Our two organizations are trying to work out our differences. Live in peace. Ah, bold openings. Your cards must be nifty. But talk is cheap. I'll raise your 50. I stare right through your poker faces. <laughs> Up my sleeve, I'm 50 aces. <laughs> Yeah, peaceful coexistence. There's your 50, here's another, you scaly little bastard. Madre Dios, no offense, Archemo, but it's too hot for me. I'm out. I can't figure these empathics. Men paying to cry like little girls or to be frightened out of their wits. What happened to simpler pleasures? But quiet, Chamo. I'm trying to think about my cards here. Quiet your pleas or make me nasty. I'll rip your heart with angioplasty. My cigar burns bright you've left the pace. Brighter still, jammed in your face. As for you, my wagering Italiano, hold your seat, hit the Italiano. I see your bet, and what's more, stand tall. The plot's afoot, I beck, I call. Three jacks, Chamo. Well, a worthy hand. The table is harsh. But three jacks don't beat my royal flush. <laughs> don't a flush. Do I lie and sell? Don't check the deal. The deck's from hell. <laughs> Lousy cheating demon. This waiting around wouldn't be so bad if you let us win a few hands. Although most of the hostages of this hell pit are temporary, the various accoutrements of the room, the cauldrons of scalding liquid, the compression tower with limbs sticking out, suggest tortures beyond the imagination. A rough, older Italian man, stripped to his undershirt, plays cards with a second man and a small demon. Other than heavy sweats, he seems comfortable. Come on, deal the cards! A young woman's eyes bulge in pain as the garret stretches the vertebrae in her neck to the breaking point. Mm. Ah! Don't worry, we'll get you out. You uh, don't understand. My neck will break and then heal again over and over. If anyone gets their neck broken, it'll be beautiful. I thought hell was supposed to punish sinners. What did she do wrong? I can't believe the hand knows what Beautiful's doing. We can't get them back, but we can damn well stop them from sending anybody else here. Hmm. I can't give this thing away. Getty is freed! What perfidy is this? I'll have her bound in the dungeon of this. Ten coats, you don't work for the boss. Surrender the girl, or your lives are your loss. You come over here and try to put me back in that thing. I'll dunk you in one of those acid baths, you little shit. 
Remember where you are, Crystal. Cut your losses and run. It's just a locked door, but nobody knows how to lock a door like a government security agent. That worked. The hush of privacy clings to this room, as if the dedicated occupant has worked there, sweated there, worried there for a long time. There's the couch, the worn leather chair. Even the computer seems to have taken on his personality. A standard number two pencil. Trio, Belial, Beelzebub, and Mephistopheles. The demons continue to trouble me, especially then Holy Triumvirate, Belial, Beelzebub, and Mephistopheles. I realize, of course, that the hand cannot eradicate supernatural immortal beings. They are all a part of God's plan. The plan that Solox enact here on Earth. So according to the Imperator's direction, we condemn people to serve under these Hell Laws. We send them to their lairs to serve their sentence. The Holy Trio. Pazuzu and Asmodeus. I made a run with a squad of rookies today and we caught a blatant sinner, a man who has been haunting the Ford Theater area, exhibiting himself. We had to let him go. Seems he works for Asmodeus. We are never supposed to prosecute people involved with the Hell Syndicate. Asmodeus, the demon filmmaker. Or Pazuzu, AKA Mr. Beautiful, gambler, Drug dealer, wise guy. Don't know why we can't persecute these guys. Besides the fact that they are actually demons and we probably can't catch them if we wanted to. They must fit into the plan somehow. Mr. Beautiful. Captain Thorne decided to use Beautiful to complete the case we were building against the Smoke Cowboys. A gang of technology outlaws. I had a scrub team arrest the cowboys. We charged them with violating the artificial realities ban. And Beautiful supplied the judge with all the evidence we needed to send the cowboys to Belial's pits. <laughs> Dean Sterling. Some of the men are suspicious about a freelance demon hunter we are monitoring. His name is Dean Sterling. He has been having some real success. 
he eliminated a score of minor and mid-level demons. And now, we hear he's after the big ones. Asmodeus, beautiful, any of them that are brazen enough to walk the earth. It is understood in the department that some of the demons are untouchable, but Sterling has the freedom to choose his target at will. As for me, I will neither hinder or assist Mr. Sterling. He has made his presence felt, and the demons are nervous about him. As far as I am concerned, he is a genuine good guy. Senator Aaron Burr. <laughs> I just received this month's collection of Senator Burr's sighting from our agents in the field. Amazing woman. <laughs> Amazing woman, this Burr. She's seemingly several places at once. Of course we know she's inside the British Embassy here in Washington, where she has been granted political refuge. But we have discovered that there are ways in and out of the embassy. And on several occasions, Burr has escaped the embassy, thus feeding the paranoia among ARC agents that she is everywhere. <laughs> the Citizens' Freedom Front the recent sweep of the CFF shadow government leaves the so-called Freedom Front effectively crippled. The CFF has been fanatically dedicated to their cause. Our best estimate of their membership is in the thousands, although the leadership proper is small and cohesive. CFF History what we know about the CFF is extensive, but not particularly useful. They were founded after the Imperator's ascension by a quartet consisting of a Methodist minister, a Catholic priest, a rabbi, and a Muslim imam. They quickly moved into political activity when they were joined by former government figures, including Irwin Burr, who had resigned rather than serve under the hand. Night of the Titans. Transgressions recently launched dozens of scrub teams on a coordinated sweep of the CFF shadow cabinet. A strike against the resistance that has been over a year in the making. Codename Night of the Titans. It's a truly historical occasion. Randall Singh. Probably the most interesting figure we have nailed to our sweep operation from a front operative we have been keeping under close observation for a while now. A man named Randall Singh. I'm not certain of his status with the CFF, but we suspected him of being fairly important. Townston Ellers. The sweep of the CFF shadow cabinet also netted Townston Ellers, a former British ambassador. We believe he has been helping Burr to establish a diplomatic corps in waiting and has been consulting her on world economic matters as well. We suspect he has been a regular conduit between Burr and foreign governments concerning efforts to apply international pressure on the hand. Brett Carew, perhaps the only dissident whose apprehension I regretted was Brett Carew's. Carew is one of the three or four writers Solox has banned, and she has been apprehended in the recent CFF sweep. The charges against her are weak, just rumors that she writes some of Senator Burr's pirate broadcasts. Eddie Commerce. 
I confess I do not get the joke. Melissa and I saw Commerce perform years ago when he was legal. I do not find this man to be funny, much less someone capable of being a subversive figure. The filthy language of personal attack against the Imperator, the monologues about free expression. I thought it a mistake to include him in the recent crackdown. Arrests like these only risk making martyrs of people who pose no threat to the hand. Massimo Eddy. Last night there was another Massimo Eddy broadcast, another vision of hell. Massimo is the first man who was damned to hell and lived to tell of his experience. There was Eddy, paint splashed on his face, ranting about his trip to hell, bursting into sudden screams of the color, the colors. Then, oh, fire! All is a flame! All is a flame! Ooh. He would speak and the demons that possesses him would taunt him from within. Ooh, from within a terribly frightening exhibit that reminds viewers what there is to fear about hell. Periodically, the hand drags him out to broadcast his bizarre visions to the nation. He has developed a cult following of people expecting wisdom from the Mad Massimo. I fear those people will be disappointed. I doubt this lost soul has anything to teach. ARC Reality containment was outraged after two of its agents were targeted in the latest scrub team action. I don't know what the executives in the Five Fingers had in mind when they include Gideon Ashanti and Rachel Brack on the scrub list. There were ways of making them disappear without setting ARC and transgressions at odds with one another. The question remains, why? What were Ashanti and Brack involved in that demanded that they be eliminated in such a high-profile fashion? Rumors are that the order to kill them came directly from the Imperator. Massimo Eddy Last night, the Rachel Brack and Gideon Ashanti. Looking through the back files today, I found one I had on Brack and Ashanti. I had forgotten, but I had seen I tried to recruit them myself a couple of years ago when I heard about the great job they were doing at ARC. But to outduel the scrub team, they were obviously more talented than any of us realized. Their work at ARC was top notch even though they had a reputation of going easy on minor criminals. Still, their character was somewhat questionable. In ancient times, the Gnostics were heretical sects whose beliefs were at odds with early Christianity. They believed that human transcendence were directly achievable 
the nearest may be just one more group of cyberspace outlaws with designs on founding virtual colonies in the global net. If the latter is true, transgression will scrub them. We may do that in any event if the need for a high profile buzz arises. Psionic League Of the dozens of illegal operations we monitor, the Psionic League is the most dangerous threat to stability, especially if the leader, Columbus Prestola, should ever decide to politicize his organization. The League has been tolerated at this point because it is the inspiration for similar groups. No one better knows the danger of unrestrained psionic ability than Spatola. He's one of the most powerful psionics on the planet. His life is a case study of the hardships that psionics endure when forced to master their abilities alone. His early hardships led to the founding of the League and his near fanatical belief in the benevolent use of the power. Estratology Incorporated Recent intelligence reveals that Hercule Rudecker and his researchers are no closer to learning any of Hell's essential secrets. Decker serves his purpose. His obsession with hell, his attempt to map it and to catalogue its horror help to maintain the public sphere. Meets Data from Reality Container shows an increase in illegal attempts to reproduce the human tissue lab of new corporeal biologics. Officially named Service Units, new corps and famous products are widely referred to as MEATS. MEATS epitomize the relentless perversion of God's creations of human hands. As so with many nightmares, it all started with good intentions. The goal of providing silver machines for the masses was lofty and laudable. But when the meats were introduced into the market, the public was outraged. The meats were twisted parodies of humanity, flesh without souls. Within six months, the meats were a moral scandal. When several developed cancer, it was more cost-effective for new corporeal to discard the entire tissue casing than it was to perform surgery. One hate group began to burn meats in public. The meats were withdrawn from the market and new corporeals closed. Now outlaw entrepreneurs seek to revive the technology for use in foreign markets. Such criminal efforts are precisely what transgressions and ARC were formed to combat. We had an inter-office holder conference call from the Imperator today. The Imperator discussed the recent actions against the CFF. Solux pointed out that the CFF was still operating, the sweep had failed to net Aaron Burr, and that an even greater effort must be made. The entire performance was classic Solux. It reminded me of the Imperator's ascension to power, when Solux would inspire tens of thousands of people at mass rallies, saying things that would make the crowd leap to its feet and roar its devotion. When Solux finally ascended to power, it was as if Earth had become a new planet. People were sick of how society had crumbled into a crime-ridden, godless, free fire zone. The hand of God proved an apt name because that was the way Solar promised to administrate justice. As if an acted by the Lord himself, and it has come to pass. When Parallax Entertainment's breakthrough decking technologies permitted the company to create a home entertainment system that provided a direct interface between the user's nervous system and the machine's software, 
The result was the AccuDeck. AccuDeck programs plunge the users into virtual reality worlds for a price. Anything was possible, but the price proved to be steep. The Parallax ad campaign had claimed that the direct interface between nervous system and circuitry allowed the player to change the machine. What they didn't know or weren't telling was that the machine was changing us. When the taste of the parallax effect broke, the public outrage was intense. The issue dovetailed perfectly with the hand of God's plan for seizing power and was a significant tool in their campaign against technology. Parallax Code The Parallax Code is a highly secret series of computer code modules that made cyberspace a reality. To my knowledge, the source code for Parallax has never been discovered. The attempt to study spiritual truths has not yet transcended matter. The Gnostics of 2095 need a lot of stuff to pursue their studies. The former church that serves as their headquarters is crammed with scanning equipment, computers, and various other instruments of intellectual pursuit. You see an intense, exotic man, whom you recognize as Professor Zaxton Coronary. And there they are, Gideon Ashanti and Rachel Brock, fugitives from a system they served with faith and ardor, once pure and righteous, now expelled and hunted. What the hell? How'd this guy make us? His write-up doesn't have him a looker. Mystery to me, hon. Give it, Professor. How do you know who we are? I could ask the same question, you know. If the transgressor's office knows of this location, Feel free to panic, they know about it. They're just waiting till it's your turn to be the scrub of the month. Don't kid yourself. You're like everybody else, living at the whim of the hand. We track what happens in places like reality containment. When the hand orders two arc investigators scrubbed, that's news in the underground. So you know us, that just makes things easier. You know we're not working for arc. Quite so. Very well, I am listening then. Ms. O'Connor was killed the same night the scrub team came for us. I know that, Miss Brock. She was murdered while she slept, killed by the people you used to work for. Believe it or not, we're trying to find out why Deirdre O'Connor and five other people were scrubbed on the night we were attacked. If we can establish some connection between the victims, it might help us to clear ourselves. There's no mystery here. Deirdre, along with another scholar, Wickersham Dodge, worked European and Asian black markets for virtual realities. She was good, too. She just picked up a dozen dreamscape realities in Istanbul. But at the same time, the Istanbul foray was reckless. She was reckless. We knew the hand was watching, that virtual media dealing in part with a legitimate religion could risk bringing the authorities down on us. She didn't care. It was as though she thought she couldn't die. She was an unusually physical woman. I suppose she thought she could fight her way out of any problem. She was combat trained? Not that I know of. But if she was, she would have been fearsome. She was, as I said, quite uh, physical. Over six feet tall, quite athletic. But I know little about her past. You should speak with David. He's a novice here who worked as her assistant. Yes, I speak Latin and several other languages fluently. We could have a use for that. The hand indulges in Latinate phrasing for much of its encryption. 
I know, yes. Yes, I know. And you need a translator. But my services are not without fee. I have a job that requires someone with your skills. What skills, Professor? Skills that allowed you to evade a scrub team. Don't ask us for a replay, Professor. Adrenaline kicked in. Reflexes took over and we got really lucky. We're not mercs if that's your angle. What I have in mind is much safer. A simple breaking and entering. There's an antiquities collector named Glystock who lives in a penthouse near L'Enfant Plaza. He has an 18th century manuscript, the Blaise Parchment, that we must examine. I see what you're thinking. The Gnostics don't usually resort to thievery, but Blystock obtained the parchment illegally. It was supposed to have been included in a secret auction in an exurban slum outside Jakarta. I was there to bid on it, but it never came up for sale. I learned later that Blystock had stolen the parchment en route to Jakarta. Blaze Parchment? This is familiar. We've come across this before. Blaze was a scientist and philosopher, much at odds with the Enlightenment world in which he lived. Blaze's visionary work is said to have presupposed the essential structures of cyberspace. Unfortunately, his work was never published. Only this original copy remains. We must examine it. If you want my service as a translator, I'll have your service as a thief. Bring me the blaze parchment and I'll help you. A bookish woman nervously sneaks glances at you. Excuse me, not, not to intrude, but did I hear Professor Coronary say you were going to retrieve the blaze parchment from Blystock's clutches? Oh, I hope that's true. It would be a start to your redeeming yourselves for your ARC service. You can shove redemption, Bookworm. We'll settle for survival. Relax, Bookworm. We spoke to Coronary. I wouldn't say we're welcome guests, but he knows we're not here to trash the place. We're trying to discover why O'Connor was scrubbed. Any ideas? D was, uh, uh, what you'd, uh, well, <laughs> she was a trode head. She could jack into cyberspace. Oh, she had a deck uh, that she claimed to have jury rigged. She was very good, too. Knew her way around. She uh, used to work for the Sustenance Authority until she, well, as she put it, edge surfed out of transglobe culture. That computes, Gid. I suppose so. In a limited sense, it does. O'Connor was a natural target, so was an eschatologist like Schoenbrunn, and O'Leary owned a speak with Sinn Féin affiliations, but I still don't see the link between us and these subverts. It seems fitting that where the altar used to stand in this former church, the Gnostics have mounted their main computer bank. Amidst the hush, heads bowed to their computers, this is where the core of their efforts are focused. A square-jawed, decidedly unscholarly-looking man, who nevertheless has the demeanor of one committed to work and study. A solemn boy in threadbare clothes stands near Deirdre O'Connor's desk. If you're with transgressions or ARC, you've come to the wrong place. I won't sing to the people who killed my friend. You can kill me before I do that. Strong claim to be making to strangers, pal. If we were from transgressions, we'd take you up on that. But we're not the heat. Right now, I'm not doing a whole hell of a lot because my partner was killed. I'm just going through some of the data she was working with. Dee and I maintained and monitored covert hookups with international networks and bulletin boards. Not an easy job with ARC programmers raiding the boards looking for unauthorized hooks they can trace to their source. Yeah, we're familiar with their ops. They trace the origin of the link and then they send the stormtroopers in. What were you searching for? We were pushing the edge. Dee insisted we not play it safe. We were trying to score cyberspace decks in the European black market. Not easy since Europe's well within the hand's grasp. No wonder O'Connor got whacked. Ark's got knuckles all over the continent. 
Only hope of scoring a deck is to launder it through a third party in the Mideast or Russia. Why not ask her for that information? What are you talking about? She's dead. Yes, but she lives on, courtesy of her own handiwork. She spent months on this. Wouldn't tell me how she did it. And I haven't been able to crack the source code yet. How she did this with current technology is a mystery to me. So what is it? She programmed a source code that simulates her own personality, which is impressive enough. But then, she also digitized her own voice, enunciating English language phonemes, and wrote programming routines that composed the phonemes into words on the fly. Amazing stuff! I don't know where she learned how to do this. You're saying we can talk to her? There's no visual output yet, but listen here. Hey, Wick, what's booting your system? There's some people here asking about you and about our work. I assume they're legit. You gotta watch who you face with, Wix. You're too trusting. This is strange. We're talking to a dead person. Yeah, freaking scrub teams wasted my proto. But the essential Deidre is powered up and online. This has the potential to blow away an anti-deck interface. So now what? We just asked this computer why O'Connor was killed? Why not? Deirdre, can you shed any light on why the Hand chose now to kill you? Hand need a reason to whack a techno-anarchist, post-humanist, entrepreneurial, free spirit obsessed with actuating the transhuman? Is this where O'Connor worked? You can tell us, boy. We're on the same side. Sort of. There's nothing to search for now. Nothing to learn here. She was going to teach me so many things. How to fly in cyberspace, and how to explore the virtual in search of the real. Now she's dead. It's too late. Maybe not, son. There might be something. Her decking unit, for instance? Your goons got that when they killed her. It's probably tagged and collecting dust in some Pentagon sub-basement. Forget about it. You can't search her desk until Professor Coronary tells me I have to let you. Let's just knock this runt over. I'm inclined to agree, Rach, but we're already wanted. Any violence and Coronary could turn us in. Hell, he may do that anyway. Giving us to the hand would certainly buy him a lot of goodwill with transgressions. You'd think the psionics could just phone it in, but no, they maintain this general storefront reception area at their headquarters in order to interface with the public. And the posters, especially the one over the door, are a reminder to members and recruitables alike that psionic powers can be as dangerous to the individual as to society. A member of the Psionic League eyes you suspiciously. Hey folks, zero in on Kate. She's had that ball moving for close to half an hour. Spatola's put her on an endurance circuit. She's to keep the ball going for as long as she can. Well, what about you? You're a telepath as well? I'm not a mover or a looker. I'm a rare one, a synesthete. My perception of sensory data blends so that I perceive one sense in terms of another. Colors taste, sounds are tactile, smells prompt visions, and I can never predict how the senses will sort themselves. Fascinating. That must be difficult to live with. Damn straight. I couldn't hold a job. 
Tried working in a restaurant, but I couldn't take customers' orders. They would ask for burgers and fries, and I would register it visually as big yellow splotches dripping with grease. Tried driving a cab once, but I kept experiencing the road as a taste, and it gagged me so bad I, could, I couldn't drive. You were experiencing the road as a taste? And it was awful. Tasted like rotted flesh and motor oil. Took days to get that out of my mouth. Well, that was the end of my career as a driver. I was fast-tracking to derelict status before Columbus took me in and taught me mastery over my powers. A young woman focuses her telekinetic energies as she hones her skills. Looks like you're working hard. Columbus pushes us past our endurance and then some, but it's the only way to develop our powers. Talk to him yourself. You'll see. He's in the next room with Susie Toast, who's an ideal example of the work Columbus does here. Columbus had a big effect on her. She's become one of his most trusted assistants. It's almost like a father-daughter relationship between them now. I'm sorry, but speaking with you is distracting me. I'm afraid I'll drop the ball, and I'm working on a new personal endurance record. The Thinker's Think Tank, the strategic planning room for the Psionic League's brain trust. The need for a vid screen shows, perhaps, the limits of their power. The globe sticking out of the conference table like an exposed brain, their desired sphere of influence. A young, pleasant-looking woman practices her tele telekinetic skills. Have you come to join the League? Not quite. We're hoping that the League can join us. We've got some serious problems that need psionic attention. You'd better talk to Columbus. He's the founder of the League. We take our lead from him. A formidable man keeps several balls afloat telekinetically. Can I help you with something? Are you psionic seeking help using your gifts? We aren't psionic, and actually... We've come to help you. I'm not aware that I need any help. You won't know either until it's too late. The hand scrub teams don't usually call ahead to check if it's convenient for them to stop by. You say the hand wants to kill me. You've got my interest. Keep talking. No orders have been issued yet. But your activities are giving some high-ups in the transgressor's office the shakes. The hand of God has nothing to fear from us. We aren't political, and we're sworn to never use our powers for gain. I thank you for the warning, however. A young pleasant... I heard what you and Columbus were talking about. You need psionic help? Looks that way, but from what Columbus was talking about, it doesn't look like we're going to find it here. Don't be too sure about that. I owe Columbus a great deal. But not all of us are as strict as he is about non-intervention. So you're volunteering to help us out of this mess with a hand? What's in it for you? I'm not the one who's going to help you. That would violate my principles as well and cost me Columbus's trust and friendship. Now there's someone else who might help you. Someone who has already fallen from grace. Someone I still might redeem. His name is Splits Magnola. He was a member of the League once. But Splits... Splits was a free spirit. He was jazzed on mind-serving, couldn't resist the touch of another's mind, and he couldn't submit to Columbus's authority. He read a few minds, big deal. I'd probably do the same thing if I were psionic. It's not as simple as that. The power is seductive. The split started out innocently enough. Skim a woman's mind to see if she was interested. Project a scan during a card game to see if anyone was cheating. But it's a small step from there planting an urge in a woman's mind or looking at somebody's cards through their eyes. Or playing all the hands at the table. Making people throw away cards they should have kept. Things like that. Once you're inside, 
You flash on the brain's unending possibilities. You can't resist exploring. And Splits was careless, lacked the mastery to be gentle. He would make mistakes. Mistakes that left permanent brain damage. All right, so Splits is a Rudy and he got blackballed from your club. Why should we want to hook with a disrep like him? And what's your share in this? Splits isn't the lost cause Columbus thinks he is. I know him. He isn't evil, just weak. Know him? You mean you two were lovers? <laughs> Sorry, girl, we don't have time to run love errands. You want your boyfriend back, you go get him. Oh, you're a tough one, aren't you? I wouldn't have him back if he wanted me. Sex is different between psionics. We share countless connections. Body entwined with body. Mind pressed hard against mind. I've been inside his head. And I'd never trust him enough to love him. But I know that I can't let him destroy himself. The last we heard of him, he was involved with a gang of psionic psychotics, calling themselves the Menials. They worked the black market for empathic resonances in order to fund their drug habits. If you can get him away from the Menials and bring him here, we might be able to save him from himself and gain you a psionic ally. Maybe we're interested. Where do we find the Menials? They have a dive near the Capital South Station. And they're dealing in empathics, right? What's their source? They aren't just randomly panning the malls, are they? All I know is that they're strip mining pure emotion from the patients in a mental hospital. I don't know which hospital. For that matter, it might be a no-name CRISPR. Just keeping the patients alive and scared so the emotions keep coming. The menials have to be stopped. And you can help me. Why should we? Because that's my price for helping you with splits. You bring him here, and I'll see that he helps you. The menials aren't empaths. They don't care about anything, so they have to employ collector units. They call them diggers. They help them harvest emotional energy. If you can bring me one of the diggers, I'm sure I can add a cyber fry to it that will stop them. Help me stop the menials and bring splits to me and I'll make certain he helps you. As you might expect of an organization dedicated to the study of death and the end of things, they haven't spent a lot on decorating. But from the founder's wheelchair, to the holographic demon apery chamber, to the Nike 12,000 computer, the equipment is state-of-the-art. A young woman exudes corporate professionalism and competence. A paraplegic is fused to the circuitry of a high-tech chair. Mechanical arms move in a swirl of activity. A paraple... So then, uh, you arrive unannounced. Uh, you have business, I'm certain. Uh, you may state it, uh, but uh, be brief. My partner and I are private investigators. We're looking into the death of one of your employees, Adam Schoenbrun. He was murdered by the scrub teams. He was in this very office before the dawn. That's when he liked the work. And uh, a government death squad killed him. What was a purported crime? The scrub teams are not burdened by justification. Christie has lodged petitions on my behalf with the transgressor's office uh, demanding as his employer to know the charges. But uh, nothing. They tell me nothing. Chandran was a strange one. <laughs> but uh, then I, I guess anyone obsessed with the ultimate fate uh, usually does appear, uh, well, shall we say, uh, intense. Or oh, hard work, although cross-disciplinary research, blending extra noumenal vision research. With Dante mapping. Would that get him killed? It might, uh, I suppose. If the government knew of it. 
But until Adam's death, only the people working on it knew it existed. Something else then? Something not related to his work here? Well, then I would be unable to help. You see, I know very little about him. He was quiet, um, but about his past, I, I don't uh, believe he had a family. He and Roach used to drink at a speak called the Interface. That's all I know about him. It doesn't pay to have debases of personal information that the Hand can appropriate. You see that uh, we can be of uh, little help. Uh, as with all my employees, there is a uh, template of his nervous system on fire with Resurrections Unlimited. I believe... Oh, is his body in preservation there, Christy? It is. We have him on a six-year retainer. The damage to his heart is more or less reparable. The mortal wound was to his brain, and Resurrections believes it's at least six years from treatment. What is this? You're telling us that this Resurrections outfit brings people back from the dead? <laughs> well, not yet. But they are working on it, huh? Important work. Or illegal work. They are a chemical company as a... Oh, what is the word? Um, as a front for the real business. They are located in Arlington, not far from here. Hell is my business. Should you learn anything of interest about the underworld, I should like to hear it. A young woman exudes... I've reservations about cooperating with these two, Hercule. We don't know them from a blood gang. They could knock us and then we'd have a first-hand look at hell. I refuse to live in fear of being shot by the Hens' death squads. And I don't believe any more than you do that the government controls the underworld. We're going to end up in prison, no doubt about it. We have some questions about Adam Schoenbrunn. All I know about Adam is what's in his file. I make it a point not to enter into personal relationships with the research staff. The peculiar thing about him was that Hercule had never heard of him. A number of people said that they knew him, but no one had actually met him or spoken with him. You weren't suspicious? Of course we were suspicious, but we're in illegal operation. We have enough of our own secrets. If an employee has something to hide, that's his business. And like I said, people vouched for his work. And we could see he knew what he was doing. He was especially gifted at extracting topographic data from psychologic subtexts of narrative events. You mean that he was rendering a map of hell based on books and movies with hell as a subject matter? Subject matter doesn't need to be hell, per se. Any story that reveals human understanding of evil, lust, death, hate, or venal sin reveals something about people's subconscious conceptions of hell. Any idea why the Hand would want him dead? Yes. Dante mapping the capital offense. What do you think we do here, tell ghost stories? If the Hand knew he was a mapper, they'd eliminate him. That stuff about permits was just a cover in case you were with the heat. Which is why I was hostile to you earlier. We could be next on their list. You'd never know such grand things were being attempted at Resurrections Unlimited by this nondescript anteroom, which seems to serve as both a box storage area, utilities room, and guard room for the entrance to the company. A lone staffer eyes you indifferently. About time you two showed up. It's been one long nightmare maintaining the stock with the backup computers. We have to get the main system up, or I can't guarantee that some of our clients' essence files won't be corrupted. Wanna come again with that? Aren't you two here to install the new motherboard on the DIL 3000? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, what else would we be here for? 
Well, then get to it. The data storage chamber is through that door. Be careful. You have to deactivate the security system. But they would have told you how to do that when they ordered the motherboard. Sure, we'll be glad to have that system up and running. You are under arrest in the name of the hand. You will atone for your transgressions. Goodbye, Gideon Ashanti. I take your youth and your sanity from you and lock it away. I leave your body to rot and stink and sweat. Your mind to suffer in the grip of my power. Oh, I will see to it that you live a long life. A life spent mourning for what might have been. Peace. Gideon, and may the hand of God comfort you. <laughs> You are immediately... For all the techno advancements of 2095, they still haven't found a better way to get at the underbelly of a motor vehicle than a platform on four little wheels. Hmm, that doesn't work. For all the You are immediately confronted by a bank of laser beams, clearly meant to trigger alarms, or worse. You're going to have to negotiate it somehow, but there's nothing else in the room that can help you. They've let the decorating of this room slide. Hmm, that doesn't work. Hmm, that... You are under arrest in an... You are immediately...
Also known as the meat locker, this is where the flesh, blood, nerves, and muscle tissue was grown for the meat's synthetic multi-servers and birthing units. Although these techs have long been outlawed for decades, the fact that there is some fresh growth on the framing units indicates that someone has tried to start things back up. A five-gallon can of kerosene. This powerful handheld electromagnet could yank the fillings out of the androgyne at 50 feet. A small version of the basic measuring cup for scientists. A basic scientific beaker, unchanged for centuries. A meat birthing unit patiently waits. You eye the gestational chamber with suspicion. This is even creepier than Charles. I'm surprised at your revulsion, Rachel. Birthing units like this would have liberated women from childbearing. I am programmed to respond to doubts you may have about the moral dilemmas some find inherent in my existence. That won't be necessary, 5088. I don't think your pre-programmed arguments will persuade us. I am a feckin' 5088 birthing unit. I am designed to be a superior gestational unit. The fetal chamber is lined with a biocircuitry interweave to constantly monitor fetal respiration, heartbeat, and important growth factors. Options. Available sensory throughputs to fetus, soothing sounds and music, comforting visual displays, direct projection of parents' voices into fetal chamber, DAT recordings playable to assist in subliminal environmental orientation. Enough! Oh, God, this is making me sick. I merely recite relevant facts pertaining to childbirth. Simulating the reproductive experience. Not everything can be fabricated in a lab. The existence of this unit proves otherwise. The essentials of the human reproductive event can and have been substantially improved by... That's enough, 5088. I'm afraid my partner will pull your plug if you keep it up. My self-diagnostic indicates intensive, decades-long neglect to primary mechanical units. You can say that again. The hand put your creators out of business. I'll give them that much. Meats or the hand's rule? Which one's the greater evil? Perverse mockeries of motherhood or tyrants ruling in the name of God? Some choice. A man works feverishly amidst the desolation of the long-abandoned factory. Oh, shit! You're the heat! I knew it! I'm gonna fry! Oh, shit! Look, I'm just a businessman, really. I don't know from morality or ethics. I'm just looking to turn a buck here. Don't wet your pants, pal. 
We're ducking the big heater ourselves. Help us out, and we'll pretend we never saw this place. All right, all right. What do you want to know? He's the reason I'm so jumpy. What happened to him? I figured the hands onto us. They got him while he was sitting in the barber's chair. Apparently his wife shrugged it off as God's will. She actually took comfort that he died as part of something big like a scrub cleanup. No mystery why they wiped him. If he was poking through this tissue shop with you, he must have been up to his eyebrows in illegal tech. So you came here. Figured this would be the last place anyone would look for me. I was just trying to score enough to make it overseas. I hooked with Jimmy because he knew the city, and because I liked his resume. He'd seen it all, hit it rich, and then lost everything when Mephisto revenged his losses in the commodities market by burning down the Chicago Exchange. Wiped out three quarters of their records and a lot of fortunes that day. Yeah, we heard about it. Jimmy was always vague about his private life. He never wanted to talk about anything that happened more than five or six years ago. It was almost like those parts of his life didn't matter anymore. One time he opened up, told me about a brother of his who was a fighter for the Citizens' Freedom Front. Where do we find him? You don't. Apparently he was killed in a CFF action a couple of years ago. That's all Jimmy ever said about it. I could tell. He, he took it hard. He said it was like part of him died when he lost his brother. You say he died two years ago. You're certain he's dead. <laughs> His brother was pretty damn sure about it. Anything else you can tell us about Henley? Anything peculiar? Nothing, other than the fact that he was an outlaw. He did have a strange fixation on a Latin phrase. Uh, vocabulum est tabula. Ominous uh, venere ab genitor. Wore a chain around his neck with that phrase on it. I never figured that out. Might seem like nothing now, but it could be important later. So what's the scam? Black market for synthetic tissues is booming. All we need are some genetic data on the meat genome. Some salvage from this place. And we can begin production of a commercial biomass. You pig. Didn't the meat fiasco mean anything to you? You want to bring that back? No, no, no. We aren't looking to grow meats. Too hard to smuggle on shore. We're looking to fabricate organs for the black market. Artificial skin grafts, that kind of stuff. Mass-produced flesh for an illegal market. Makes flesh and blood just one more commodity. One more item for sale. One more replaceable product. She's a beauty, huh? I'm gonna smuggle her to Europe. There are collectors there that pay me a fortune for her. That's an near mint condition fecund 8088 birthing unit. A little old, but the tissue's in great shape. They had food stocks and concentrated vitamin compounds stored here. She was able to stay fed through all these years. That turns my stomach. Well, her value is entirely as a museum piece at this point. The gestational chamber, amniotic fluid recycler, fetal perceptual stimulator. You, you can't get parts for this stuff anymore. You're not turning me in, right? You gave me your word you wouldn't turn me in. We gave you nothing. When we've taken care of our own business, we just might be back for you. Hey, cut me a break, guys. I'm just trying to make an almost honest living. The Menials World Headquarters seems like a crash pad for college boys drummed out of their frat house for being too rowdy and slovenly. And of course, there's nothing in the fridge but beer. A menial slumps in his chair, all bad attitude and unfocused anger. Was a... Uh, who are you? You're lucky I've been partying all day or I'd scan all your secrets. If I even think I feel your drunken presence stumbling through my mind, I'll shoot you full of holes. Got yourself a killer, Charlie. 
She must rough eat her ass up good. You're disgusting. Listen, here's the pitch. We're out of Chicago, jobbing for a Yakuza family that's branching out from designer drugs to experiential imprints. Supplies reliable. Got a pair of surgeons in the central clinic giving us access to anesthetized patients. Menials got wallet enough, Jack. We're stripping empathics from the loonies in Arioch Asylum over in Foggy Bottom. The nations are paying serious coin and there's no detente between the Japs and the Redskins. Circuits overloading and his braves would have our scalps for dealing with Yakuza. <laughs> That's that, Jack. You two can leave me to my beer now. The Menial's refrigerator is always well stocked with Ausgezeichnet Altbrau, their beer of choice. Mick routinely levitates bottles from the refrigerator to ease his seemingly unquenchable thirst. Hmm, that doesn't work. Hmm, that doesn't... Here's the still, kid. Now, you better give us something on Brian Avery and it better be good. Oh man, this is perfect, man. Barbara's gonna love this, man. As soon as she comes to... Now talk. Sure, man. No problem. What am I talking about? Brian Avery. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, Brian Avery. Yeah, he got killed. We know that already. What was he doing around here? He got stuff. In fact, he was supposed to get us a new Holovision. I was all set, man. Put my feet up, had a bag of chips, was just hanging out, getting prepped, resting up. And then I woke up and somebody said he was a goner. A real drag, you know. He was even getting us a set I could use the old remote on and everything. Is that all? Well, I don't know. It might work on other things, but it's really made just for holovisions, man. No, I mean, I mean, do you have any other info? Not really, man. Come on, Rach. I can tell by the smoke coming out of your ears that it's time to go. Hey, thanks for the still, man. Feel free to look around or whatever, wherever you want, man. The meticulous condition of the place might make you think that Vanity is a neat fellow. The canopy bed might make you think he's somewhat prissy. Go with the canopy bed.
I heard what went on next door. You two are pretty resourceful. When we want to be, when there's something in it for us. How about now? I could use somebody like you two. I've had my eye on someone for some time. Someone from the other side. <laughs> it's better than anything I could get around here. Better than, say, Dolph? You got it. <laughs> He's mostly all talk. Anytime I want talk, I'll get an interactive computer game. No, I've had my eye on Drip. Maybe you met him? He sounds like a real catch. Don't let the name fool you. Besides, I can smell virgins a mile away. Of course, since he's fresh, he lacks the nerve. What I need is a place away from here where I can make him loosen up. Some place private. And if we did help, what could you do for us? Well, maybe you've noticed Dolph's private little hideaway back there. He's got some things on that system of his that uh, may surprise you. What kind of things? Well, if I told you, then I wouldn't be a very good deal maker, now would I? And I don't do anything unless I'm very good at it. Why don't you get me what I'll need and then we'll talk. Got something for me, I see. We found a place. We got a key to a friend's apartment. It's relatively safe. Thanks, sugar. Just what the doctor ordered. Now, for your present. As you may have known, Dolph and I have spent quite a bit of time together. Anyway, old Dolph not only thinks a lot of himself, he thinks a lot of it in his sleep. Out loud! <gasps> And one thing that always comes up is this word, blood net. What good is that? The name of some archaic parlor game? Listen, we went to a lot of trouble getting this key. What the hell does blood net mean to us? It means plenty. I'm not risking my own skin just to do in that waste of human tissue. But you too just might be able to take care of this. Use it.
A young man wearing a modest outfit, apparently from the Salvation Army store. Looks like you got your wish, Modesta. Van Itty's down. And out, beyond your wildest dreams. The skeleton he was hiding was so big, it needed a walk-in closet. He was a snitch for the hand. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but I don't think you understand. I'm saddened about it all. I mean, there was still hope for Dolph. He's young, he still could have redeemed himself. But now, well, who would have suspected? It's so sad, but none of us expected something of this seriousness, this magnitude. This kind of terrible, colossal secret that's going to ruin him forever. That's going to destroy him so thoroughly, leave him powerless and alone and... Oh, can I hit him now, Rach, please? One more minute. He's got to tell us about Brian Avery. Try and get through it without saying sorry and I won't let him hit you. Now, start with a physical description. Okay. He was about my height, about my weight, but a little younger. Wait a minute. Brian Avery was younger than you? Oh, yes. He was only 17. Shit. I should have known. He's way too young to have been on that list with the others. He's a friggin' red herring. I'm sorry. You didn't know he was so young? I guess I should have told you. Sorry. He said it twice, Rach. All right, all right, but just this once. I promise. You hit me. Some sort of demilitarized... The word spreading like wildfire about Dolph. Yeah, hard to believe he was working for the hand. Who cares about that? He cheated on me. I heard that electric sex let the password on his computer slip out. We were supposed to be dating, and he's got something going with electric sex. Is that all guys want? Isn't pleasant company in a trusting relationship worth anything? Hey babe, you're not gonna let this get in the way of loving the Dolphinator, are you? Gang life's not all it's cracked up to be, huh? I hope the Deadlies kick you out of the city, you conceited creep. Maybe my mother was right. Maybe I should give up gang life. I gotta leave here for a while and sort things out. It's too strange here. We have the digger you wanted, and we've learned that the menials are working Arioch Asylum. You've decided to help me then. I'm so relieved. This is a psionic distorter, a cyberfry. It creates a distortion effect in a radius of 200 yards, causing intense psionic feedback along any external cerebral circuit. Cut to the chase, girlie. It will fry the menials' brains like a large order of fries. They won't be able to harm the inmates at Arioch anymore. And I'll have done it without using my powers against anyone. What good does that do? It's only one gang, one hospital. There are others. It's just a start, Rachel. But it's a good start. What looks like a holding pen for cattle is actually the former dining area of this once prestigious sanitarium.
The modern addition of a barbed wire topped fence reveals that patients are often herded here while waiting to be taken off to patient areas for treatment. At other times, it's where the ghost dancer, Phyllis Dancing Till Daybreak, holds office and issues instructions to her staff of menials. A large woman with eyes like burning coal supervises the havoc being wreaked upon the unfortunate in the next room of the asylum. Dressed in Indian clothes, she looks like some smug, demented earth mama. Well, looky here. My people used to say that evil spirits walk the earth at night. Well then, your ancestors must be real proud of you. Those your henchmen out there, sucking these people dry. You're Phyllis dancing till daybreak, right? Looks like you're the evil spirit now, lady. It's something to see, isn't it? My people, hard at work. Mine and the white men for natural resources. The great spirit has brought us full circle. Yeah, either that or you're a common, run-of-the-mill sociopath. And what do you mean, your people? The menials look like a bunch of white trash to me, not Indians. I know exactly how to use this scum. They are an evil I completely control. Besides, I am a ghost dancer. We are impervious. Bullets bounce off you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Something like that. And you have no qualms about messing with people's souls the way you're doing here? None. Perhaps you prefer that I simply slit their pale throats? I've done that too. But I find it more satisfying to leave them wandering, soulless. The same way your people left my ancestors wandering the sparse confinement of the reservation. That's the thing about whites. You feel no responsibility towards your ancestors. I honor mine and take pleasure in revenge. Not to mention a healthy profit. You think I care for the white man's money? My warm palm comes to me in the currency of bloody, soul-shattering retribution. I plan to devour them. I'm going to take their money from them. Their feelings, their emotions, their souls. That must be how you got your name, huh? Phyllis dancing till daybreak because you're such a happy sort? Do not mock me, demon, or it will be your blood dripping from my chin. That would be chins. And don't kid yourself, Tubby. People like you are only tough enough when it comes to beating up wrecked people they find in asylums. You mess with us, it's going to be your own blood you're tasting. My, my, my. All this talk of blood has my taste buds tingling. Are you really feeling all that lucky? A nasty-looking Brit in leather smokes and scowls. Pity the asylum patient left to this fellow's mercy. Ah, visitors to our humble institution. Make yourselves at home. How might we help you? A parent or relative you wish to have committed? Can the sales pitch clap? We're facing for a megacorp in Manhattan that needs a few hundred terabytes of pure existential fear and sex drive. Can you harvest something like that from this dump? Pump up the boys on runners and work them for a few days straight. They can fill any order, especially fear. There's plenty of fear here. Who the hell did you say you're working for, anyhow? Megacorp in Manhattan. Take a look in the next room, and you tell me if your bugger appy paymasters in New York can drill brain shafts like a menial. You know how to queer a deal, Yank. Splits wasn't really a menial. Although he partied with us and went psionic wilding a few times. He lost his nerve, though. 
when we showed him this mining gig, he took a powder on us and made off with a multi-terabyte D-base of empathic data that's worth millions. Don't know where he thinks he's going with it or who the hell he's selling it to. He'll just walk into a pawn shop with six terabytes of illegal emotions. So you're after this Splits guy? I don't care if Splits washes up in a trash heap along the Potomac. But I want that D-base back. And I've hired a gun from the Midwest, calls himself Milwaukee Jack, to track Splits until he's stupid enough to flash that D-base, and then the Jack is going to do him. Splits must be pretty paranoid if he's running from you. How's Jack gonna evade Splits' mind scans? The Mill Jack psionic is well. Better than Splits, too. He won't even see it coming. Splits thinks his powers make him safe, so he drinks in the same bar every night a speak called Fitzgerald's. Fitzgerald's? I know that place. It's over near L'Enfant Plaza. How do you mine the empathics? That's right. Pump me for information so you can rip off our tech. Not that you'd be able to dupe it or have size ace enough to pull it off. Didn't ask you for a how-to. Just checking that your action backs up your talk. Right. If we can do it better than New York, we must be lying. The secret's in the power of the menials and the efficiency of the diggers. A mind link isn't simple, right? A brain's not just some freaking computer. Takes countless parallel neural transfers to create the simplest images or concepts. So it's a complex job. Yeah, it's a complex job. No two brain structures are alike, either. Mining the empathics would take too bloody long for Sire to prep each dig. Luckily, the nations had some genius tech come up with the diggers. You program them for specific neural energies, and the diggers channel the size power to where you can start mining. Go on, look about. You think those wankers in New York can match our act? Not bloody likely. Do not mock me, demon. Few people are ever given the chance to sleep in the beds lining this musty, rat-infested room, where the walls seem pockmarked from the searing agonies of the residents, past and present, and the weird thing that looks like an electric chair seems permanently galvanized from those sounds, too. The demeanor of housewives hasn't changed much over the years, except this one has a frazzled, exhausted, terrified look that comes from something other than watching the kids. Geez, Gid, I don't know who's more zoned out. This poor woman or the friggin' vampire Mino. Should we take a chance and try to talk with her? It's worth a try. Hey, lady, can you talk while you're, uh... Talk, listen, answer, do as told, ignore, lies, don't believe, talk back nice, don't tell, don't tell, don't tell. It's okay. It's okay. We're just looking for someone. Friends. No friends. Not since hell. Just... husband. No lover. Just husband. No lover. Ask her, Gid. She's breaking my heart. Magnola, lady. Splits Magnola. Splits. Splitsville. Split up. Won't let me go. It's hopeless, Rage. It's like she's been condemned to hell forever. A menial uses a collector unit, a digger, to extract empathic resonances from a patient. Don't fight it now, girl. Don't fight it. Give me something pleasant. Love. Mother. Father. Warm. Wet. Carry. Womb. Die for you. Red. Mommy. Daddy. Oh. That's it, girl. Slight change now. A menial is draining the empathic resonances from a patient. 
It's evident that this cold, heartless bastard is in this for the pure pleasure of it, as well as for the money he'll undoubtedly make on the black market. Hey, get a load of this. These old bitches are a mother load, man. The guilt, sex, vague dissatisfaction, hormonal roller coaster. Looks like you're in this for more than the money. Better than any halibid, man. It's real, man. Real pathetic. Hey, you gonna let me suck this basket case dry, or you gonna be my next drain? Go right ahead. You say you make out pretty good on these? You kidding? Some accountant somewhere will pay enough for a smut bit to keep me living like a freaking hand legislator for a month. And the best thing is, once they stop getting a taste, they crave the hottest stuff. Yeah, yeah, I heard that already, baby. Open up. Listen, I'm gonna have to work this one harder than I expected. Get lost! A woman is having her empathic resonances ripped from her psyche by a sadistic menial. A manic depressive, her mind wrestles with the infidelity crime for which she was institutionalized. You gotta watch me drain this one's brain. It's like soft serve, man. Find a place. Must be secret. Get away. Spill it, bitch. Yes. Yes. Naughty, naughty. Tuesdays and Thursdays, too. Sneaky, dirty. Damnation be damned! The hell with it! That's it! This one's spent! Hmm. I can't give this thing away. Hmm. That doesn't work. Huh. They won't take it. What the hell are we doing in this tunnel? It, it, it hurts my eyes! What the hell? Ah! The pain! My brain's coming out through my ears! Help me! Oh God, help me! Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you. It's hopeless, Rage. It's like she's been condemned. The checkerboard floor comprises a virtual sobriety test for the patrons of this upper middle class speak. They rarely notice it, though, as they are too busy slumming by watching professional wrestling on the hollow vid, which sometimes gets them so excited it's a good thing the rifle on the wall is safely out of reach. A rough-looking woman strokes the hair of the man sitting next to her. Both intently watch the fights on the vid. Don't block the view, Rudy. My man Whip crushed him with Spike Bronze, a puncher out of Mexico City. Big fight, huh? Got me and my man Jed in the lather. Whip's the best metal thrower, but Spike's never been down. They're both so even is what it is. Both are recons with Fenner Walters torso architecture. Mex and the torso, juicing up every punch. Spike's undefeated in Mexico, but Whip's no Aztec. He come fighting up from Louisiana. Dominated the Dallas Hub Battle Royals. He's gonna drive Spike into the canvas. A bar patron and his date watch the fight. You two fight fans, huh? Here to watch the fights. You two ever see the cross-species slugfest in Natchez, Mississippi? Woo-wee! I'm talking cyber ant bears taking on rabid wolf packs. Rams with explosive charged horns. Humans fighting mammals of all shapes and sizes. 
A lean man with a sociopathic stare pretends to relax in the speakeasy. A man who looks as though he were born guilty slumps in a chair, contemplating a drink. A woman in brick-textured tights attends the bar with great calm. I can make a pair of disc reps from 40 paces. You two got predator's eyes. Fitz don't abide hunting in his place. People here just looking for a safe place to watch the fights. You got bad business with someone? Take it outside. What do you know about those two guys? The jack with the beard and the punk with the shifty eyes. See? You're starting something. I knew you were here to start something. The kid is Splits Magnola. Been in and out for a few years, but lately he's been a real regular. Don't trust anybody, even though he is a psi and can probably tell who's gonna rat him out. Big spender these days. Like he did a big job or something. What about the scary guy? Been coming in steady for a few weeks. I thought he was trouble at first. I'm certain he's packing. But he's been steady. Guess there's no crime in looking like a killer, huh? Your split. Hold it, Daddy. I'm glimpsing your short-term memory, and I'm glomming on Suzanne P. Toast, who's only the most psycho bitch I've ever met, except for maybe my morphine-crazed mother. Whatever you're pushing, if it's got Susie involved, I ain't interested. Stay out of my head, you damn psy. Susie and Columbus said you got your kicks from screwing with people's heads. Yeah, like Saint Susie would never do something like that. Don't speak. Think. Just think it and I'll hear it. But nobody else will. I gotta be a little careful these days. What are you saying, Splits? Just saying that toaster pastry's got her dark spots like everyone else. What do you want? You can't really be here just cause of Susie. Actually, we're here to warn you about a gun your old pals from the menials have contracted to kill you. He's sitting over there goes by the name of Milwaukee Jack. Damn, I'm not packing. You two are gonna have to help me. There's a shotgun hanging over the bar. I don't have to move to levitate and fire it, but he might get hot to my play. Throwing up a shield around your thoughts is one thing, but cloaking a telepathy is something else. I might manage it, but I might not. And then the Jack there will blow my head off. If you two can create a diversion, I'll be able to get a jump on him. Diversion? Like what? Who cares? Anything, so long as it's something big. Make it something that'll involve the losers in this place. Something that will create an emotional response. What we call a psychic event. Hopefully, that'll confuse him long enough for me to cash his chips. Unless you want to end up like your friend Splits, you'll just walk out of here and forget you ever saw that. You two better make vapor! I don't want to see you around here. Leave me with the damn janitor work. Damn, what a mess. Wind up in hell for sure this time. How stupid are you? A guy got whacked here, and I'm barely keeping the lid on. Swear to God, I'll turn you over to the hand boys the first time they ask me. I ain't burning for something I didn't do. Good game, eh? We're not sports fans. Something on your mind, folks? I'm trying to relax. I'm kinda tense. Your split. 
Hold it, Daddy. I'm glimpsing your short-term memory. Stay out of my head, you... Yeah, like... What do you say? Just say... Actually, we're... Damn. I'm not... Diversion, like... Who cares? The excellent old beer, first brewed by the Nazis in Berlin. This is the label of the upper crust in the days of the Solux regime. Nice work. Maybe this will back the menials off for a while. Man, Fitzgerald's gonna want to kill me when he sees what you did to the vid. Okay, Splits. We helped you wipe out the Jack. You owe us. Don't get pushy, sweetie. I sincerely appreciate the save, but don't think I couldn't have handled Milwaukee here without your help. I'll come with you, as long as you take me to Susie Toast. I can't have that frail sending people after me. What is it with you two? Susie seemed disgusted with you. Disgusted because she doesn't have her hooks in me. You could do worse than Susie Toast Splits. Just take my word for it. She's bad news. I'll go with you, but only if you agree to take me to the League so that I can case close that woman. Then we'll see about my helping you. You ready to shoot? Let's do it. Game's up, Susie. I scanned these two once they mentioned your name. They think you don't want me back, but I know better. Rachel here thinks you're pathetic. I agree with her, by the way. And old Gideon likes the look of your legs. I agree with him, too, although your ankles look a little heavier. While I was in their heads, I noticed massive cortex scarring and memory overlays. They're holding something out on you. You should scan them, but then... You don't pierce the skull. I forgot. Sorry. Doing a nice job blocking my scans, though. My thoughts are my own. I got involved because I want to help you. When I learned you were running with the menials... How low can you fall, Splits? Every Jack strikes a bad bargain in his life. I bolted the menials when I flashed on their op and Ariok. Managed to finger a D-base that should stake me for years. Interested in a vacation? Thailand's indoor beaches sound good to me. You owe us your life, Magnola. Now we need your help. I didn't ask you kids to get involved. I had Milwaukee Jack pegged and scanned. I knew his motives, his moves, his mother's maiden name. I'd have made Susie toast out of him and I'd have done it without blowing Fitzgerald's vid. Sorry guys, but I don't do pro bono joints. I've had enough. Huh? Susie? I'm more powerful than before, Splits. Get out of my head. I'll show you the errors. You want to fight, girl? Of your way. Cause I'll singe your synapses. You can't stop me. Fry you as soon as I find you. I've been preparing this for months. Hey, get out of there. Preparing to introduce new young banks into your- Christ, that hurts. Identic studio. Stop it, Susie. I sense what you're doing, child, and I will not let it stand. And stop me in your own flow access. You make me a cripple. Image bundles integrating only need a few seconds. Can't stop you, child. Absorb your force. Make you love me. Gonna kill somebody. Mine's colliding. colliding. Look, look out. out. 
Susie, no! Make you over. You will love me. You will love me. You will love me. You will love me. Oh, shit. There's nothing. I've always loved you, Susie. Gideon, what just happened? Why do I have a headache and... What's with these three? Excess psychic discharge. Their minds just came together. Hard. Nothing. Nothing there. My whole life, just a nothing that smells like whiskey. Columbus, do you... what I felt? There are no secrets when minds collide, Rachel. Apparently Susie has more feelings for splits than she was admitting to. You're out of the league, Susie. You were attempting to cripple splits, to force false memories and images into his mind to make him love you. After all of our work, all of this time, only to have you seduced by the power. But you... You said that you loved... me. False projection. I... I was... alarmed. Concerned that both of you would be killed. You've ruined what we had here, Susie. You have two hours to vacate your chambers. Crazy bitch. Almost... Killed me. You two still want a psionic? I'm yours. Maybe it's time I use these powers for something worthwhile. So long, Susie. Try not to blow your circuits. All wrong. This is all wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I'm sorry for that scene with Susie. I feel very protective of her. And you've obviously got a problem with this Splits fellow. Splits is a potent psionic, but he's morally weak and lacks discipline. He abused his gift and chose those demons and the menials over the league, and he did his best to drag Susie into ruin with him. I don't know what that girl sees in him. What could make her love someone like that? Gadzooks, but from the moment you enter this room, there's little question that the occupant knows how to hunt. The question is, does he know how to hunt demons? The rumor is, he does. His rugged good looks and a few well-placed scars go well with the Outback outfit. He looks like a demon hunter. Blimey! Didn't hear you come in. I got lost in these old texts here. Fascinating stuff. Are you Ashanti and Brock then? No, you got it, Ace. How'd you know? I've got to keep abreast of everyone on the demon trail. I figured we'd meet up sooner or later. Well, what can I do for you then? We thought maybe you could give us a hand. We're trying to track down why the hand wants us dead. The trail seems to keep leading back to demons. Like Mr. Beautiful, for instance. Blimey, now there's a bugger I'd like to bag. I've been working on him for years. I got dreams of mounting his head on my wall. We know what you mean. Are they all like that? Essentially, yeah. It's a question of degrees, though. Some are a bit more approachable. A guy I'm working on now, for instance. Fella name of Asmodeus. You can walk right into his hell front and chat up a storm with him. Sleazy bugger, though. Tell us about this Asmodeus. You think we could get into hell through him? Lord, I imagine he'd take you there in an instant. He's always recruiting people for his film projects. Bugger makes snuff films involving humans and demons. Even a few beasties thrown in for good measure. Ghastly creature. How bad is any of them? Well, maybe not quite as bright as beautiful, though. Well, in fact... It... Well, now, uh, 
I can't ask you to do that. Try us. Well, it just occurred to me that you two would have the perfect din. See, now the way to get to him is was to have him recruit you for a film. See, now he knows me. Now, now don't think my scarred old frame is exactly his cup of tea anyway. But you two, well, it just might work. What's your plan? Well, the first step is to trek him. Moves his operation around a lot, he does. But I'm following some leads to his whereabouts. Once I find him, I've got a device guaranteed to take him out. And his hell pit with him. Only thing is, you'd have to get there first. And then, of course, well, there's the little trick of getting out again. We're willing to try. He's operating out of some abandoned storefront near Union Station. All right, then. Once you get to hell, you've got to hide this device and get out quick. Now, it's on a timer. Activated the minute you engage the suction device. You'll have about ten minutes. Standard palm heat activation of the suction device? That's right. Well, you're familiar with these little gizmos? No, I mean, I mean, yes, I guess. To tell you the truth, I never saw one before. I don't think. Git, how did you know? I, I don't know. No bother. You're aware that's the main thing. Well, that's all there is to it. Then you activate your fannies out of there. I'll station myself across the way where I can see into his shop. I'll bring along my blaster in case things get dicey while you're still on Earth. Won't be much help if you run into trouble while you're, uh, down under, so to speak. Now, good luck to you, then. With its props and various sets, it looks like any normal film studio lot. And yet there's something different about it all when you realize porno snuff films are made here. A hell porn queen is lounging about the studio. She is conscious that she is displaying her wares at all times. Her slutty splendor is swathed in southern charm. A troll-like servant of Asmodeus and his actors obviously loves his work. A lean, mean, keen-tongued demon filmmaker. He can't be still even long enough to view one of his own snuff films. Hi there, gorgeous. Want to be in pictures? Haven't chosen my co-star yet. Well, as a matter of fact, I am looking for... I wasn't talking to you, Beefcake. I'm addressing this lovely young lady here. Well, listen, it comes down to this. We're looking to make some good money fast. Can you use both of us? At the same time, in fact. You send abuse. You folks look pretty hard up. That comes in handy around here. But you also got to be versatile. That's the name of the game here, sugar. And what does that entail? Exactly. Tails, hooves, horns, you name it. Wait a minute. I thought this was just straight smut. Oh, relax, darling. They're just like us, except they don't go hiding what they're all about. They are lust, sugar. The real thing. Drooling, snarling, cloven, hopped up flesh hounds. Hey, Rach, do we really know what we're getting into here? Oh, it's not that bad. Asimodius pays great money. But on the other hand, none of these fiends has ever even seen bathwater. Then there's the pot bellies, the molt, and the belching. Come on, sugar. Take a walk with me on the dark side. Hello there. I'm Ruderkind. You're new. What's your name? Rachel, and this is Gideon. Hello, Mistress Rachel. Master Gideon, may I serve you?
No thanks. We can't talk. We're here to do a little business. I'm in the business. Ten years, yet my days were never happier than these last three in which I've had the pleasure of serving Mistress Corinda. How nice for you. Oh, I've had an illustrious career. Would you like to hear the highlights? I started at the very bottom. It was nothing like the level of prestige I've achieved now. I started just fetching towels for the lead in Noroman Servant. Now I'm strictly in the service of Mistress Gorinda, but I'm sure that something could be arranged now that you're with us. I'll check on it. Well, that's really not what... No, no, I'll ask, and I'll put in a good word for you. Don't be nervous. I'm sure you'll be just fine. Well, 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 look what the cat dragged in, and dressed so fashionably. You gotta love that about young people. What do you, what do you, what do you, you wanna be stars? You wanna see yourselves up on the big screen? Is that it? Speak to me, baby, I'm wanted on the set. Well, my friend here and I... Whoa, baby, slow down. This side of beef is part of your package? Give it to me straight. What's the deal? What's the skinny? Where's your representation? Who you with? What do you, what do you, what do you? We're looking for work. Whoa! No shit, Sherlock. Everybody comes in here is looking for work. Everybody wants to be a star. Asmodeus, they say to me. Asmo, baby, I'm hot. But really, they all know hot. You know what I mean? <laughs> Little industry humor there. No, seriously, what kind of experience you got? Well... That's okay, baby. Don't worry about it. I can just tell by looking at you that you're good. You got good bone structure, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> of course. I'm gonna have to audition you. Why don't you just have a seat on the couch here with me for a while while your boyfriend hits the pavement? Both of us, or no deal. You two are killing me. All right, all right, don't worry about it. The effects department can take care of it. Let's go down to the set and see what you're made of. I got a plot going I could use you two in. Standard contract, don't worry about it. We'll work out the fine print later, no problem. You game? Uh, we need to consult with our uh, agent. You're what? <laughs> you got your first role and you gotta talk it over with your agent? Forget about it. There's a million more where you two came from. Go on, scram. Come crawling back, have you? They all come back to Asmo. I'm willing to give you one more chance. You gonna take it this time? Fabulous! Let's get onto the set and see how you emote. That's an acting term, huh? <laughs> Barely recognizable as a film office, it's even less recognizable as a porn film headquarters. All right, all right. Don't touch anything on the set, and don't let any of this spook you. These people are all professional actors, huh? Oh, my God. Hey, take it easy, baby. It's all effects. Trust me, they don't feel a thing. It's like falling off a log. Uh, let me just go talk to this one actor over here. <laughs> He's hamming it up, doesn't want to do his part the way it's written. You know, some performers you just gotta stroke all the time. Pamper, stroke, pamper, stroke. That's all I do around here. <laughs> Be right back, baby. You got the device? Where should we put it? I don't know. Is that his director's chair? Let's put it under there. Hurry, he's coming back. Hey, you're looking beautiful, baby. Hey, beefcake, I told you, don't touch nothing on the set. <laughs> now, let me set the scene for you. Being this is your first part, I'm going to give you something easy. I just want you to show me some pain. Got it? 
We'll work our way up to agony and misery later. For now, just give me pain, okay? Play around with it, see what you come up with. Then, get a little drunk and you land in jail. Gaffer, get a grip. You gotta look for the union label. All's well that ends well. Swell, swell, lights, camera, interaction. What's going on? He's talking to us like we're not here. It's like he's shorting out or something. Did you play the device? No, he came back too quick, but... Hey, where are we? <sighs> Looks like nowhere. Maybe it's purgatory. <laughs> Man, where the hell are we? Well, I found you two in here hooked up to these bloody machines. Asmodeus watching over you. I saw him hook you up through the window and I didn't like the look of things. I got a good shot off and down he went. Fell over like a bull elephant hit with a trank shot. Yeah, he was acting weird in hell. He just started jerking and stuttering. Now it makes sense. Look at him, he's an android. Was an android? Whatever he was, you sure took him out, Sterling. Man, I hope I never get on your wrong side. What kind of a gun are you using, a bazooka? You only get one shot with a demon. Better make it a good one. But what did you do to disrupt his system? And how come that made the whole place go kaflooey? Got some weird news for you, mates. I don't think you were in hell. I mean, I mean, I found you unconscious hooked up to these little gizmos here. What? Hooked up to these decks? Impossible. Wait a minute, Gid. This is beginning to make sense. The android, the whole place shaken up, the message just appearing in mid-air like that. Blimey. You mean hell was virtual? No. Wow. Oh, it's too incredible. You said yourself Asmodeus was already short-circuiting when you got here. Somebody got into the system and planted a bug so it would crash. That same person sent us that message. You know, I think you might be onto something, Rach. Unbelievable. All these years. Hell. Virtual. What a scam. But who else knew? Who sent us that message? I think we better get to Dante's and find out. Absolutely incredible. A bloody government. Look, now let me know what you find out. I've got to get back to my place. Now this changes everything. Except how dangerous the bloody hand is. We'd better take one of these decks with us. Dante can help us figure this whole thing out, and whoever this mystery person is. Yeah, well watch your backs, mates. You now know what may be the most dangerous information you could possibly know. You do too. But at least, now we know who our real enemies are. The Hand. The Hand it is. I'm gonna to have to get myself a bigger gun. Go carefully, mates. The means by which you can travel to hell. Oscar Drexler glances over Dante's shoulder. What'd you say? 
Oh, time to eat. Oh, good. And them refried beans and pan-fried quails went right to my toes. Dante, we've had a break. No kidding. I'm networking with a deep throat who claims he's hacking from within the Pentagon. He says he's been in contact with you. What's the story? Something big could change everything we know about hell. It locked up. We were in a hell pit run by a demon called Asmodeus. The whole thing, everything except for us, locked up. And this deep throat contacted us in flaming letters. What? A lock up? Get quality assurance on the line. Bug free, they said it was. Locked up? What's that? You're babbling. Because it's extraordinary. An unprecedented violation of physical laws. What did Deep Throat tell you? We must contact him. He said the psycho pumps are really wireless decking units that you can access hell at will. He left an address. Garage? What does that mean? What is this? Decks? Addresses? Uh, I wouldn't know anything about decks. I'm just an old man with sore joints and bad eyesight. I've got some guesses, but only Deep Throat can tell us what really happened. Oh, shit. I think I get it. Oh, man. What are you thinking, Gid? I'm thinking that hell may not be real at all, that it's an enormous, complex virtual reality, that all these years of terror and suffering were founded on a lie. Well, that's my past, damn it. Can't an old man be left to die in peace? Oh, man. They didn't. Don't tell me. They outlawed the stuff and kept it all to themselves. They could be even more powerful than we thought. More vulnerable, too. Damn, they made fools of us, Rachel. Reality containment's a colossal joke if Deep Throat tells us what I think he will. For some odd reason, Deep Throat chooses to appear in a cyber location designed to look like an old-fashioned subterranean parking garage. You are face to face with Deep Throat. At least you assume it's his face, since appearances are deceiving in this virtual environment. You came. I was counting on you being desperate enough to chance it. Oh, we're here, all right. When a hell pit locks up like a fracker shanty, we get real curious. Speaking of jury-rigged environments, what's the story with this place? Forgive the incomplete nature of the area. It betrays my haste in fashioning it. I devoted most of my efforts to cloaking this well from hand detection. Doesn't matter. We're obviously not here to talk about the place, no matter how weird it is. I've been following your activities as best I can by monitoring the ARC online chatter. I only meant to contact you. Causing Asmodeus' hell pit to lock up was an unexpected side effect. I know that you've been framed, but I don't know why. I also know that you've taken up with the Citizens' Freedom Front. Yeah, we know what we've been doing. What about hell? It is the greatest lie in human history, Rachel. Your boyfriend's got it right. It's all computer-generated. You see, from the beginning, the Hand knew that fear was its greatest weapon. They spent billions of dollars tapping into centuries of fear and superstition, humankind's tribal horrors and primal fears. The military and the CIA had already stockpiled immense research on the subject, and trans-global CEOs and ambitious secular politicians willingly backed the Hand. They were confident they could share in the hand's rule of the country. But once the gates of hell opened, Solux swept all non-believers from power. Those were the first nights of the scrub teams. The first nights of many. 
So hell is a computer program. No one is damned then? Oh no no! Oh no! People are damned. They're hurt. The burning is in the mind, but that makes it no less real. Oh no no no! The only thing not virtual here is the pain and the death. But this changes everything. There's so much we have to ask you. Not now. I'll contact you again. I will be your deep throat. Keep in touch with Dante. I'll contact him when I need to speak with you. I've been panning for gold on the nets, but nothing's turned up on you two yet. Keep trying. We appreciate it. How's Drexler? He's an interesting old coot, but I gotta eyeball him long hours, cause he keeps rigging my hardware. I can't damn a man to Tartars for trying to stay current. We take jacks in the Warrens, fetch a high price. I've been making do for years, with insufficient amperes and sluggish clock speeds. I'd pay a fortune for a multi-spectival polyrobust graphics system. Hey, I'm hip to all that. But let me know the next time you plan on tapping the heating unit's power supply to run an arc welder. The coating on the wires melted into the floor. For burglars, the entire room's contents seemed desirable. But even inferior burglars would recognize that the room's most desirous articles are clearly booby-trapped. The crackling old parchment of this ancient text is rolled around a metallic spool. The attempt to study spiritual truths has not yet transcended matter. Ah, the blaze parchment. Well done, well done. I assure you that when we have finished with it, we will see it placed somewhere where it will be appreciated. Hey, live it up, Prof. And don't forget your side of the bargain. I stand by my word. You see before you a translator. We're hoping you can translate this Latin phrase for us. We've written it down for you. Of course. Let me see. Uh, vocabulum est queer. Ominous venire abgenitor. Well, the Latin is poor, but it roughly translates to something like the word is get and all comes from the father. Aquaria means to get, you know. A verb meaning to acquire. The word get. Not much of a clue. You're the brainy puzzle solver in this relationship. Getting any ideas? Not yet, but I will. We're hoping you can translate this Latin phrase for us. We've written it down for you. Of course. The words... Still, it's a clue, my brainy bow. It's something to go on. I didn't say it was nothing. Just that it wasn't much. We're hoping you can translate this Latin phrase for us. Of course. Let me see it. Vocabulum est grale, ominus venere abgenitor. The Latin is poor, but it reads, 
The word is grale, and all comes from the father. The key word here seems to be grale, which translates to stilts. A rather unlikely message. The word stilts? Not much of a clue. Really? Gee, it seems obvious to me. Mm Mm-hmm. The answer will be obvious when we're done with it. The two of us have been repeatedly sharing the same nightmares, and after every one of them, we wake up screaming and with the same Latin sentence on our lips. Vocabulum est cirrus. Ominous venere ob genitor. Can you translate that for us? Of course. Quite easy. The Latin is poor, but it translates to the word is late and all comes from the father. The key word here seems to be late. Does this mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Not yet, at least. But it could be the start of something. I hope you're learning the truth about your former masters. A solemn boy. The only reason I'm letting you search this desk is because Professor Coronary allows it. Don't think I'm forgiving you for what happened to D. Someday your kind will pay for what they did. Yes, I speak Latin and several other languages fluently. We're hoping you can translate this Latin phrase for us. We've written it down for you. Of course. Let me see it. The Latin is poor, but it reads vocabulum est janua, uh, ominous venere ab genitor. The word is gate and all comes from the father. The key word here is janua, which is Latin for gate. The word gate. Not much of a clue. But enough? You've done more with less. Oh, I'll figure it out. Give me time, and I'll figure it out. I just hope we have enough time. So, after all of this, we're left with a big goose egg. Each of the murder victims, and Rach and I, had a preoccupation with basically the same Latin sentence, the only differences being individual words that are next to meaningless and don't seem to fit together. You're saying we've... Flatlined? Run a dead end? Ah, ah, ah! Hope is not lost. I've been giving this matter with a Latin word some thought, and I may have the answer. These words mean something to you, Coronary? Something about the presentation suggests a code I'm familiar with. Keep in mind, a large part of a Gnostic's work is deciphering obscure texts and breaking ice systems. Now follow me on this. The first part of the statement introduces a word. That's plain enough. But what about the second? Why the mention of all things coming from the father? What things? Whose father? Who cares? Words don't have fathers. But sometimes they just might. They just might. As I said, I'm familiar with this manner of encryption. Each of the words I translated for you can all be made from a single seminal word with the letters from the derivative words occurring in the same order as they appeared in the seminal word. For example, the words fort, mist, rune, sore, and stun can all be found moving from left to right in the word misfortune. In our case, the words get, gate, slate, stilts, and late can all be found only in one word, and that unlikely word is gesticulate. Gesticulate? What are we supposed to do with that? You can be certain that if the hand bothered to devise the encryption, it has some great use. 
What that might be is for you to discover. I believe I've upheld my part of our bargain. Senator Burr presides over the cramped room. What's wrong? Something bad's happened, hasn't it? The assassination attempt on Solux? The attempt on Solux has failed. The homing device apparently was discovered and reprogrammed. The missile meant for Solux struck a tenement building. Fortunately, most of the residents were on the street watching Solux pass by. So no one was killed. Thank God. I knew it was a mistake to attempt such extreme measures. Question is how they found the homing transmitter. We spent over a year devising ways to cloak its signal, spent a small fortune on stealth materials for the casing. People risked their lives to obtain paint samples from Solix's car. Xenon was a fool to use these two to do his dirty work. Watch who you're accusing, Katarina. Your plan was dicey from the start. I don't care how mondo your homing device was. You think the hand techs aren't three steps ahead of you? Judas Priest, it's the Imperator's parade car. You think they don't scan almost every molecule of that thing? There is no time for this. There is no time for recriminations. As you see, Gideon and Rachel, some of my staff do not trust you. Yeah, we noticed that with Literati. He's got a big problem with us. Marcus Vanders and Claudette Simeone of the attack squad were his closest friends. He hasn't been the same since their death. When they disappeared, something inside him disappeared as well. We've discovered Solix's secret. We've discovered the secrets of hell. Hell secrets. I've no time for idle boasts. Tell me what you know. The Imperator doesn't have the keys to hell. But Solix does have a team of ace hackers, and hardware at least three generations ahead of anything you've ever seen. Hell isn't real. They're computer generating the whole thing. Computer generating? But... but how? The Hand has ruled like Luddites, outlawing most cutting-edge tech. But that hasn't stopped the government itself from moving ahead full bore. They've been developing cyberspace and decking technologies to a sophisticated degree. When they damn people, they don't physically send them anywhere. The victim's nervous system is linked to a computer network that's generating an enormously complex virtual environment. And that's hell. My God! You're certain of this? We've got a deep throat inside the Pentagon. He's a programmer who spends his days backing up data generated by the HELL program. They've got everyone's nightmares on tape. And he's spilling everything he knows. Everything he's said so far is consistent with our experiences in the underworld. All right. All right. 
This changes everything. Can you get to this person, this deep throat? We must speak with him. We must have him here with Katerina working on some way to destroy hell. If it's a computer program, we can crash. We can devise a bug or virus and reduce the gates of hell to virtual ruins. Correct, Katerina? Maybe. I mean, in theory, any program, any data can be corrupted. It's a matter of understanding their code, and it'll depend on hardware. I'll need information. Lots of it. You heard her, Gideon. Rachel. Bring me this deep throat. We must have him on our team. The Front has a number of important allies. Former government officials who have resigned their posts rather than serve under the hand. And activists who the hand deemed too subversive to remain free. All of them will be crucial to forming a government that can take charge when Solux is defeated. The Imperator, of course, knows this and has apprehended them, consigning all of them to hell. We had never seen a way to rescue them until now. Can you access hell at will? We think so. We have access to a psychopomp, which, as it turns out, is a disguised decking unit. Good. You two must undertake to rescue our people being tortured in hell. If I understand this correctly, they are most likely linked to a computer somewhere in the Pentagon. We have spies inside. Hopefully, one of them will be able to free their bodies while you free their minds. Katerina will brief you on the identities of the prisoners. While you work to free them, we will devise a means of destroying hell. All right, so I have to mission impossible you two on some of the front star power who've taken a ride on Charon's jet ski. Get ready. The list reads like a who's who of establishment figures gone disgrunt. Any theories on how we're going to find these people? We've got a psycho pomp, but what next? We just can't make blind decks. Hands sea space jocks would find us in minutes. We're a little lucky there. The hands given us a head start. You know how they run it. Hell isn't scary if the folks at home don't know something about it. Hands buzzed us the sweaty locales of some of the prisoners. Of course, the hand never figured on their enemies having a psycho pump. If the psychos are anything like the Acti decks, then they've got some cutting edge intentionality engines. The psycho should be able to scan for the hell areas you're aware of and offer them as an option for travel. Let's see if I have this right. We just used the psycho pump in this room, ask it to take us to Charon and we can go to any hell location we're familiar with. And to leave a hell pit, I assume we just return to Charon. That's the theory. Remember, the psychopomps are for the bad guys who run hell. It's supposed to be easy for them to get around. Listen now. Here are the people you have to rescue from hell. There are 12 of them in total. We know that Eddie Commerce is being held by a demon named Mokalis in some manner of hell zoo. Isn't Commerce the underground comic, the really subversive guy? That's right. The hand kept censoring his act. Finally, he got fed up and went full-blown disgrunt. That's one. Who else? Front's top EE -E guy, a shaman with circuitry, a Texan named Dingo Tucker, is being held in one of Beelzebub's pits that apparently is teeming with rats. Former Secretary of State Sheshu is having his gums eternally torn open by a dentist demon named Malbolge. Prudence Alela, Senator Burr's chief of staff, is getting the traditional hellfire treatment. Multi-billionaire Conklin Danforth is encased in a block of ice beside a tributary that leads to hell's frozen sea. Former Secretary of Defense Trenton is on the rack in one of Mephisto's pits. That's all I got on these guys, but it's a good start. That's a good start. Anything else? There's one other thing. Townsend Ellers is the chief tactical planner for the CFF. We can't attack the Pentagon without his expertise. Apparently, he's being tortured by Satan personally. That can't be good, even if Satan is just a computer image. Don't know how to access him yet, but you'll be duking it out with Satan before this is over. One of our people inside the Pentagon reported that they've located where our torture victims' bodies are being held while they're in the hell net. Great. They can just disconnect the psychopomps and save us a lot of sweat.
Life ain't that easy, Rachel. Release of the bodies is apparently blocked until their minds are freed from their torture in hell. Once that happens, our agents in the Pentagon assure us they can move the prisoners out. The ferry isn't what ferries used to be, but then the river isn't what you'd expect either. The proverbial figure of death has become a bit cheerier of late, having put down his scythe to take up a new business. Greetings. Welcome to Charon's boat rides along the scenic sticks. My name is Charon, and I'll be your guide on this red water rafting trip. Passengers are advised not to dip their hands into the river, or they will pull back a charred stump. And beware of the spray, as it will dapple your complexion with searing lesions and, well, outright holes. As there is limited seating, passengers are further advised to cling to each other for dear life. We hope that you regret traveling with us today, and that you suffer mercilessly during your stay, and that you come again. Please, state your destination. Although most of the hostages of this hell pit are temporary, the various accoutrements of the room, the cauldrons of scalding liquid, the compression tower with limbs sticking out, suggest tortures beyond the imagination. A big iron lid made to fit over a smaller vat than those in Beautiful's hell pit. A large metal beer stein. A large vat containing highly potent acids. Noxious poisonous fumes rise from the vats. Welcome to Charon's Boat Rides along the Scenic Sticks. Please state your destination. Things seem to have flip-flopped in Hell's version of a zoo. The only visible beast is the one guarding the caged human. Close inspection reveals that this is no walking staff. It's sharpened at one end, and is more clearly an instrument of torture. Small hand-sized beasts that don't have wings yet somehow seem to levitate and fly. This bucket isn't on fire. It contains water from the river Styx. Uh, 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 
The keys to the zoo resemble the keys to some medieval dungeon, which in a way they are. Hell's answer to pit bulls. A little smaller, maybe, but who's looking at their body? It's hard to see past their teeth. An empty glass jar. This glass jar is full of what looks like rancid gravy, with large chunks of meat. The outside of the jar is caked with a crust of dried slop. Everything about him says, not too smart. A second opinion would grant that he is ugly, too. However, like a stick of dynamite, it doesn't really matter how bright he is. He has a wide killing radius. Go away. Be busy. Torture you later. Oh no, we insist. Torture us now. This one could be tricky, Rach. I'll say. We could laser this guy in the forehead and he probably wouldn't notice. You gotta admire somebody that has that kind of concentration. A wiry, bearded man kneels with his arms tied to a large railroad tie behind his back. Rendered immobile, he still seems to pace with restless energy. An intellect that can't quit racing. The proverbial motor mouth. Hey, it's great to be back in hell again. Although it's a little quiet out there, this could be the sound of that one hand clapping you hear so much about. Solix, baby, you out there? I can't see the audience because of the stage lights. Bet that no audience ever stuck me before. <laughs> oh! Ah! That's where you're wrong, you pinhead! You know how comedians are always saying, you're killing me, you're killing me? What the hell you think they're talking about? I tell you not to worry, that this is all virtual. But you'd probably keep talking anyway. Why is it beautiful women always have the IQ of a fence post? I could use a break here, you morons. I'm running low on material fit for the thinking impaired. Ow! Oh! 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 Of course! Oh! I'm saving all the good stuff for Solix. Oh! Oh! I know you're coming, you asexual asshole. I figure you're late, uh, cause you can't decide what to wear. But seriously folks, what a leader, huh? No chance of corruption or scandal with Celine Solex. No chance they're ever gonna catch old Celine doing to his or her secretary what he she's been doing to the country for years. Oh, bad talk, Solex. Ah! Ah! I wouldn't mind taking down the steroid case with the cattle prod, but I say we leave the twerp tied up. Let's take care of the Keeper and let Funny Boy figure the rest out for himself. Hmm, that doesn't work. Huh, I can't give this thing away. Huh, they won't take it. Huh. Well, it took you long enough. You know, my father never mentioned the possibility of crucifixion, although he did tell me that wise guys end up sideways. Of course, old daddy-o should know. He's been horizontal for ten years now. Welcome to Char-
Between the wall of flame itself and the skulls tossed casually about, this hell pit seems more of a charnel than any of the other hell pits. It's as if all of the demons have tossed their scraps here and forgotten them. Forgotten the victims suspended behind the flame, too. Prudence Alayla suffers hell as it's traditionally known, roaring flames and searing heat. Hang on, Prudence. Senator Burr sent us here to rescue you. Rescue me? What do you have in mind? Just gonna stroll across that moat of flame? My bonds are easily undone. It's getting across that moat that's the problem. The heat's unbearable. Don't know how much longer I can stand it. Hold on. We'll do what we can. Hurry! The pain is terrible! My God, you did it! You made it across the moat! You're safe now. Any moment and you'll feel yourself fading away. I think you'll be surprised when you reach the other end. Anything's got to be better than this. I can't believe I'm saved. That I'll live to see Senator Burr again. And that I'll live to fight Solux one more time. Welcome to charity. Conklin Danforth, wealthy financier to the revolution, is encased in a block of ice near Cocytus, the frozen hell lake. Danforth is encased in a block of ice. We've got to free him. This bucket is... Danforth is in case... Danforth. 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 My lord, I have news of Brock and Ashanti. They are dead, my lord. Dead? You are certain of this? You have seen the bodies? With my own eyes, my lord. Thank you. So, so, so cold. Well, 
isn't this lovely? What heroes they must consider themselves. Two people rescued by our gallant arch renegades. In and out of hell unsinged, and no sign of the Imperator. How special they must feel. <laughs> it's a trap, you dumb little shits. Come into my web. <laughs>
A hideous demon dentist practices his profession. Blood drains through a tube from the patient's mouth as he squirms and thrashes in agony. Malibolge drills and hammers, pulls and tears at healthy teeth and gums. He frequently breathes nitrous oxide from a gas mask to add to his enjoyment. <coughs> Stop squirming! If you hadn't waited so long between checkups, this wouldn't have happened! Besides, it isn't good for you if it doesn't hurt a little! <laughs> Sorry! Did I hit a nerve? <laughs> Whoops! I hit it again! Sorry! <laughs> What's that? No insurance? <laughs> I'm afraid we'll have to bypass the anesthesia and keep that for the doctor! <laughs> Thank you. You can't believe how painful. I kept telling him I just had my teeth capped, but he just kept drilling. We're with the front. You're not really in hell. We haven't got time to explain. In a few seconds, you're going to wake up in a room inside the Pentagon. The front has a woman inside who will get you out. Get ready now. This tank contains nitrous oxide gas, which is not lethal but can knock people out nearly instantaneously. Demons it just makes crazier. This tank contains nitrous oxide gas, which is not lethal but can knock people out. Hell's version of a dentist drill is bigger and nastier than anything on earth. Welcome to Chat. Welcome to The space of this subterrain seems airily vacant until you notice the huge rat traps and then the mysterious tubes. They're clear, but smeared on the inside with some kind of slime. Dingo Tucker's face is frozen in sheer terror as he is suspended in a series of tubes. Husky, hungry rats race through the tubes looking for a way to get at Dingo's flesh. Oh, God! Rats! I hate rats! Tucker, are you hurt? Are you all right? Hell no, I'm not all right! Rats are my worst nightmare! I can practically feel them crawling all over me! 
I hear them scratching and chirping. I feel their weight against me when they throw themselves against the tubes. And they're hungry. They're going to get me. They're going to eat my skin. Just hold on. We'll get you out of there. The rats aren't real. This whole thing, all of it, hell, it's just a computer construct. You crazy girl, can't you feel the heat? Look at the teeth of those buggers. They can flay the tissue off a bone in under a minute's time. Just hold on another second and I'll smash the tubes. No, don't do that, you fool. These rats are wild. They'll chew us up if they get out. You gotta find some other way to free me and hurry. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> There. That should work. Ah, you killed them, compadres. You can't know how this feels. You can just right here, you disease-ridden beast. They're not real, Dingo. We were trying to tell you, but you were too frightened to hear it. All of Hell is a virtual reality construct that the government uses to create fear. Well, they do a damn fine job of it, let me tell you. And how do you mean virtual? Ain't a deck or a system I know of that can generate anything near this complex. Frontex will explain it to you. Your body's currently jacked into a machine at the Pentagon. Burr's got a woman there who will see you out safely. Hold on! She'll pull you out any moment. Uh-oh. Tell us where our people are being held, or you'll get what happened to your boss here. I think there'll be more blood when we shoot you, eh? What the hell's going on? What's with Beautiful? He... he's an android? Was an android. Now, he's a pile of scrap. He's been scamming us for years, and thinking he was untouchable because he was a demon. Losing Crystal Getty, that was the failure. The demonstration of weakness we needed to plug a hole in him. <laughs> now we find out he's a machine. Just one more scam. His last scam. Hey man! You think I'm mad enough to put my hide at risk? I'm Mr. Freakin' A Beautiful. There are dozens of you wise guy psychopathic hard-ons looking to make a rep by plugging someone with position and the freaking stones to back it up. I thought he was dead. I look dead to you, hotcakes? Been close and I'll chew your ears off. He's been talking like that since we blasted him. Shut up! Or I swear to God I'll blow your head to pieces! You're bluffing like a fire hall card shark, you simple spick bastard. You wouldn't finish the job because you're hoping I'll tell you what's on that deck. That's it. I'm going to blast him back to hell. That's enough, Manny. Don't do that yet. He's right. We might need him to get Delmonico and Carlos back. You almost blew it once when you shot him up like this. So he was an android. That explains a lot. I, I guess all the other demons on Earth are synthetic as well.
Pazuzu may have lost his body, but his spirit is still intact and residing in his still-functioning noggin. Brace your Gideon, kill these two! Drill holes in them, plug them, plant them, I want them dead! We'll bury them in Arlington, just like the Dagos, and dump their bodies right next to where the friggin' Kennedys used to be! I can't believe they're all machines! For some reason, I find it easier to believe they were real demons. Not so beautiful now, are you, Pazuzu? Just another noisy head. Screw you! You were only too happy to suck up when I was on top. One little setback, and then you find out who your real friends are. But I knew it would come to this. You work hard to get a little piece of something. You gotta keep kicking everybody else's dirty paws off it. Apparently, his identity chips are stored in the head. Hey, you can't just leave me here. Pick me up. You gotta find me another body. Look, don't be stupid. I can help you out, man. I know everything there is to know about hell. <laughs> You'll pay for this. I got connections. I'm a big man in this town. Satan's blood. The day is tragic. The marks are wise. The rubes are fend. Beauty's not just dead. He's just a gadget. A grim, silver-haired killer stands amidst the circuitry and metal that was Mr. Beautiful. I'll only ask this once. Where is pretty boy keeping Delmonico and Carlos? Look what we did to your boss. We are not in good moods. And we don't work for Beautiful, although no one wants to believe that. And we've had enough of people pointing guns at us. Who cares if Beautiful's destroyed? Thanks, you did us a favor. Whenever I get my head mounted on a body again, I will kick your ass all over Washington. What's on the tape? You are in no position to be asking questions. This dat popped out of your boss's chest when I split it open with my laser. Seems important to him. He threatens my life over it every 15 minutes. We played it, but I can't understand a word of it. Frankly, I don't care either. I want Delmonico and Carlos back. We were trying to beat their location out of this rhyming little freak when you two came in. But all we got out of him was a bunch of useless numbers. Though your fists are hard, your brain is stupid. The meaning is there for you to grasp. Yet you pursue me hard like a murderous Cupid. That which you seek, I now gasp. 11, 23, 14, 26, 25, 9, 10, 6, 25, 13, 13, 10, 17, 17, 23, 26, 9, 20, 14, 17. All the R's are 23. Keep your spirit strong if your men you would set free. With the numbers you can't go wrong, for from the numbers letters come, and with the letters freedom song. See what I'm talking about? What the hell is that? Gideon, it's obviously a code. I strike you to a deal. You find Portillo. And I'll let you have this debt. Your boss obviously wants it back pretty bad. Damn it, he's not our boss. I run their lives, the ungrateful shits. <laughs> they rule the city. They grow drowsy on my food and whiskey and any sexual perversion they can dream up. Fresh fruit in the wintertime. Nothing's too good for my people. What do you work for him or not? The tape's worth something, huh? You find the boys and it's yours. Take that obnoxious head with you.
What is this? Look what he's done to my boys. Don't blow your motherboard, Mardo. If this is what I think it is, your men are fine. A little sweaty and down a few million dollars to a minty fresh demon who deals from the bottom. <laughs> but they're unharmed. You owe us a debt. We had a deal. I just want to get the hell out of here. I swear to God, Manuel, if I ever get involved with demons again, you'll be doing me a favor to blow my brains out. It would be my pleasure to do it, Secondy. Here's your dat for all the good it's gonna do you. Pleasure doing business with you, Mardo. Now we need to give this to someone with the right audio tech to decipher what's on this dat. A secret chamber with two psychopomps which, in their own way, act as the secret passage to another place. Then get over to Wall Street. I hope your money's in cash, Sandra. The Dow Jones is hellbound. Hey, Rachel, Gideon, still breathing? People on scrub lists tend not to play the market. We are in the market for audio expertise, however. I'll do anything I can get away with. The gangster demon that called himself beautiful is dead. Just like hell, he's turned out to be bogus. A very advanced android. You want me to cover this? I'm not sure where I'd start. No, we don't want media coverage. We need your help with this dat that we got from the hard guys who blasted Beautiful. I'll see what I can do. Hmm, look at this. A 100th level scramble laid over whatever's on this tape. Definitely hand routines, so I can do a routine playback. Here she comes. God is dead. <laughs> Well, that was pleasant. Coming from beautiful, I'm surprised it wasn't obscene. Thing I need is a reporter on an ego trip. I know you don't care what Miss Hand of God USA has to say about machine free living. Cannon out. Damn it! Nobody wants to interview beauty queens since they eliminated the swimsuit competitions. Rachel, Gideon, you're still alive, and well, that's news. No, this is news, Nikki. Hell isn't real. The whole fearsome, steamy, torture-filled regions. A computer-generated illusion. Uh-huh. Why don't the two of you take some silo pedal and a nice, long, psychedelic nap? We're on the level, Nick. We've been there and back. We've seen part of the system lock up, but most of all, we have a deep throat. A hand programmer with a heavy conscience who went rogue and is working for the front now. He'll talk to you. He'll explain how the whole thing works, and you can tell the world. It's all a big lie, Nick. You're certain of this? He worked in the Pentagon, backing up hell files. Talk to him, Nick. This is the story of a lifetime. I don't... It's not that simple. It's not that... I just can't hop the net and assign that. What's corrupting your files? You're a reporter. Just do it. Hey, this isn't exactly the free freaking press, Arc Agents. The Decency Council censors the crap out of us. I patch your deep throat into the net, and I'll be sweating in Tartarus with some demon using my tongue for a teletype. If all this is true, you've got the story of the century. But I can't touch it until it's all public. Too much news. Too much news. Even with these machines, it's too much for one person. No word from him yet.
Man, I hope they haven't whacked him. He better get his ass out of the Pentagon. I'll keep scanning for him. No word from him yet. What'd you say? Oh, time to eat. Oh, good. Them refried beans and pan-fried quails went right to my toes. No word from him yet. Man, I hope they haven't whacked him. You look excited, Dante. That must mean Deep Throat's contacted us again. What was that address once more? Yeah, garage. That was it. Now then, let's continue where we left off last time. No, first, how about you telling us who you are? I'm... I'm Deep Throat. That's all it is safe to reveal. They could be listening. If they capture you, they could torture my name from you. What I can tell you is that I work in the Pentagon for the Hand as part of the Hell Maintenance Team. I make backup files of Hell Pits. They don't think I know what's happening in hell, but I know things. All right, for now at least, but I don't go for this mystery man stuff. You need to learn about the hell system if you have any hope of beating the hand. You need programming expertise to devise a crash program. You must start thinking of hell as a software product, not as a real place. And any program, especially one this complex, has vulnerabilities that can be exploited. Are you saying we can just introduce a memory overlay bug or something and trash the whole system? That's it? No, no, of course not. It'll take something extremely special, a singularly ingenious crash bug. I doubt there's a virus extant that could cripple large segments of the system, and damned few programmers alive with the know-how or the hardware to program a crash bug. That's why the hand cracks down so hard on technology. They must always remain several generations ahead of everyone else, so that the hell system remains safe. So what are you saying, that there's no hope? I'm saying that the one advantage we may have is that I know the system. If the Freedom Front has computers and programmers of adequate merit, we might prevail. You know how to make the crash bug then? I fear that I'm not anywhere near that accomplished a programmer. I make backup files all day. I hardly understand the theory behind the code. In practice, I'd be terribly lost. You must find better programmers than me, and then I can help them devise something. 
If that's the case, it's time for you to end this cloak and dagger routine and join us. Join us. Not at the moment. That would be impossible. The Hell Staff works and lives in the Pentagon. My movements are constantly monitored. That's why I can't remain long to speak with you. And what are you getting out of all this? Why turn on your masters? I... I was, a, a believer. God forgive me, I once believed that Solux's measures were severe, but fair and necessary. But working here, seeing what they have done in the name of God, I came to recognize the true enemy, the true evil, and its name is Selene Solux. I must leave now. Stay in touch with Dante. You will hear from me again. We're starting to feel toyed with, Deep Throat. You reveal Hell's secrets. You hint that it can be destroyed, but then doubt that anyone has the skill or computing power to do it. You tell us that you can help us, but that you can't leave the Pentagon. Where's all this leading? Things are changing. Changing very quickly, becoming very dangerous. The Hand knows that there is a leak in the programming team. I've done my best to obscure myself, but I begin to fear for my life. Then you've got to get out of there now. Soon. Soon. As soon as I think it possible. In the meantime, you should attempt to access Massimo Eddy. His location is a highly guarded secret. Any high-ranking hand official would have the location stored in his computer. But the information is encrypted. And only the Bureau of Records knows the secret to the encryption. The Bureau offices are in the Federal Triangle. But if Hell's virtual, what does that make Massimo Eddy? He just a hand con? He can't have any special knowledge of Hell if Hell doesn't really exist. It makes him even more valuable to you. Massimo is a quality assurance technician testing the boundaries of the beta version of the Hell Code. Sections of the system were still buggy, and Massimo suffered severe brain damage that had bizarre effects. It left him mad, prone to intense visions, and possessed by demons whose voices speak through him. He's been exposed to the vast contours of the system. He does have knowledge of hell, hell as it really exists. I just hope he's lucid enough to assist us. If he really does have secret knowledge, why does the hand keep him alive? Eddie is one more fragment of the lie, one more thing for people to believe in and fear. That's all for now. I'll contact you again very soon. I must make a move for my own safety. You two are beginning to make some noise. Boards are texting mad about you. Great. Why don't we just hang targets on our backs? Don't go casters up on me. It's all vagary and e-jabber. Nobody's ratting you. You've got the underground humming. Wireheads think you two are the bugs in the code that can crash the hand. You've got a fan base, kids. I've turned up a half dozen images off the boards that are supposed to be you. None of them real, I hope. Nah, all false sightings. I'm doing my bit to feed the goat. Sending out my own faked photos of you under different e-accounts. Also seeding the rumor garden. Drex has been a big help there. Uh, we've maxed the rumor mill with top-shelf disinfo. We've told them you were running whiskey in the dust belt. <laughs> that you were in deep freeze in a front safe house in Cameroon. <laughs> Sent one out over Anarchy Net saying you had converted and joined a hand mission working the Wyoming communes. <laughs> Believe me, kids, you live on the lamb as long as I have. You can human engineer with the best. Yeah, Drex is an ace maverick. He put out a line that Gideon has gone transvestite and has joined the staff of the J. Edgar Hoover School for Girls.
The Cyber Sweatshop of 2095. A typical records bureau, complete with modern computers, copy machines, and paper, paper, paper. A clerk exudes a fanatic discipline about her work. An officious, tidy man works at his desk. He exudes the professional contempt of a man who has spent a lifetime refusing people's requests. May I help you? We're with Reality Containment. Official business involving Massimo Eddy. You'll have to speak with Mr. Calcutta first. He's responsible for information pertaining to Massimo Eddy. Need a moment of your time, sir. We're with Reality Containment. Congratulations. I'm certain that your family is quite proud of you. We're investigating something big. A full-blown paranormal catastrophe. We need to speak with Massimo Eddy. We have clearance. Oh, goody. And may I see this clearance? Ark sent it ahead of us. Surely you received it. I've received no notification. I assure you that I'm not in the habit of misplacing important items such as security clearances. Only people with transgressions clearance can be informed of Massimo Eddy's location. Until you give me such clearance, you may not see him. See Ms. Stinson if you need to complete the application forms. Calcutta told us to see you about transgressions clearance to see Massimo Eddy. Identity templates and clearances can only be obtained from Transgressions Headquarters. All I can tell you is that to obtain the identity templates, you must know the shape that all transgressions move toward and must come to sooner or later. That's all I can tell you. That worked. Massimo Eddy. Last night, there was another Massimo Identity templates and clearances can only... Ah, what shock and disbelief on my part. I thought you two were con artists. Now I see you were merely incompetent. You finally obtained transgressions clearance. Very good for you. Mr. Eddy resides in the Lee Mansion in Arlington. That's right. The home of the first damn man overlooks the National Cemetery. Quite appropriate, don't you think? When you do find Mr. Eddy, be aware there are other security measures in place. You had best be more prepared for them than you were for me.
As my sainted Irish mother used to say to me, You're up shit creek now, bucko. <laughs> Bet if you dare. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? I've been there before. Hey, remember that time in Bethesda? No bullets! Ha 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 ha! But you know, I noticed that when you start quoting your mother, you're usually bluffing. Well, at least I know who my parents were. Ha 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 Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Just hold your horses, sonny boy. You can't get past us without us saying so, and right now I'm just a wee bit preoccupied. The nerve of these people! What do you think we should do with them when we finish this hand? I arrest them or kill them, of course. It's always a tough decision. Let's play for it! You're on! <laughs> How the hell do we get by these two? They sure like to argue. Too bad we can't control their minds. We could have them shoot each other. The two uniformed guards playing cards seem out of place, but little else about this antique colonial parlor has changed since Robert E. Lee lived here 250 years before. The cherubic face atop this guard's uniformed physique belies his awesome killing capabilities. He is cheerfully engrossed in playing cards. He may be small, and he may have a rakish grin, but this muscular guard has got killer written all over him. The cherubic... Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Just hold your horses, sonny boy. You can't get past us without us saying so, and right now I'm just a wee bit preoccupied. What's it gonna be this hand, you old sod? This time it's gonna be Minnesota Red Dog! Deuces, trays, fives, nines, and one-eyed Jacks Wild! Great mother in heaven, what the hell kind of game is that? Sounds like something the wee ones would play. Well, you ought to know something about wee ones, you old Irish billy goat! Ha! Minnesota Red Dog happens to be a game that requires a little intelligence, a little strategy. That's probably why you never heard of it. Ha 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 ha! Hey, speaking of lack of intelligence, how's that girl you've been seeing? <laughs> uh, excuse me, guys. Hate to break up your little boy bonding session, but... Cool your jets, lady. We'll get to you when we're good and ready. You can't get past here without us saying so, and we ain't saying so. That's telling her what for. As me dear old Di used to say, Shut up, you little twit. So anyway, I've been meaning to ask you, Voidtech me boy, how did you do with that woman in the bar last night? Did you get lucky then? I keep telling you, no luck to it. It's all skill. Just like you're gonna find out in a minute. I love this hand. How the hell do we get by these two? They sure like to argue. Too bad we can't control their minds. We could have them shoot each other. Okay, Magnola. It shouldn't be too hard for you to get into the craniums of these two pinheads. All right, but you better stand back. These two look pretty rough. I have a feeling it could get dangerous around here if they were to... get into an argument. For example, if the smaller guy were to hide a card up his sleeve... Hey, wait just a minute there, you little bastard. Did I see you slipping a card up your sleeve then? Or if the other guy were to suddenly detect a foul smell... What are you talking about, you yeasty breath son of a bitch? You're the one who has to deal from the bottom to win. It's the kind of thing that could leave you speechless. What? Why, you... you... Or worse, it could make you say something absolutely vicious. What's the matter? Run out of quotes from your sainted slut of a mother? Words like that could be the last straw. What? That's it, you little toad. You're a pissant of a human being, you are. I'm sick of having to sit here and smell your breath. And the stories. Oh, God, if I have to hear one more story about the old freaking sod, or your stupid da, who was probably the friggin' milkman. Oh, is that right, then? And I'm sick of hearing about your girlfriends. Or is it boyfriends? Why, it could even make you want to kill a man who used to be your best and only friend. That's it, you Irish lush. Draw!
It's doubtful General Lee would have allowed such an elegant room to be given over to a cat, but this is one of those cats that has a mind of its own. A cybernetically enhanced panther, a sinister and lethal combination of feline ferocity and technologic skill, fixes you with a predator's gleam and blocks entrance to Massimo Eddy's room. Apparently the panther has spilled his water as it stands in a puddle. Mr. Eddy will not be bothered. Meat. Tender meat. Feast soon. Look, Gideon, I've bought into a lot of weirdness working for Ark, but that panther is talking. Panthers don't talk, Gideon. They do now. Check it. It's got a skull jack. Probably a computer interface that interprets the electrical impulses generated by the panther's instincts and translates them into a form the skull computer can process. The computer acts on the instincts and also sends output to a speech synthesizer. The panther talks. Questions are, can it think? And if it can, how smart is it? If we can't outsmart this beast, we better scoop up Dante's suggestion and go under in Africa. A simple bowl of water. Hmm, that doesn't work. Hmm, that. Hmm, hmm, that. Hmm, that. Hmm. 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 Hmm, that doesn't work. A standard floor lamp. It's doubtful. When they first gave this room over to Massimo Eddy, they used to cover the walls with giant canvases in an effort to preserve the historical dignity of the room's surfaces. Massimo ignored such parameters, and in time, his keepers did too. Massimo the Mad, the so-called first damned man, is at work with brush and palette, adding wild strokes to a wall already thick with paint. Uh, Massimo, over here, buddy. We've gone through quite a bit to get here. Maybe you could stop painting for a few minutes. Painting focuses my energy. Power of creation out from inside keeps the voices quiet, keeps me, me. Look, we know the truth about you and about hell. We know that you tested a hell prototype. We know that the government uses you to scare people. We can get you out of here. Take you with us. But, but then how would I finish the painting? There's much more to do. Well, you could start another one. Somewhere where you're not under guard. Somewhere where you'll be free. And where might that be? And where might that be? No one is free from the hell inside. Come see us and take a little home with you. Oh man, Massimo the Mad, he really is possessed. Worse than possessed, there are ways to exorcise a real demon. These demons are seamlessly integrated into his cortex. They're separate bits of computer-generated consciousness following their own logic, and they aren't ever going away. 
They made it real, you morons. It took thousands of years of hate and terror and combined it with centuries of science and made it. They made the nightmares real. The cautionary tales come alive. They made Hades' flames really burn. Made us really burn. I am Naomi, consort to Belial. Fearsome enough I was in old women's stories and young girls' nightmares, but the hand gave me a voice and the force to use it. But if it's a computer program, we can crash it. You know that, and you know how to do it. Tell us what you know. How do we beat it? You can't beat Satan. How arrogant! The two of you defeat Satan? Satan is the greatest warrior in hell! He is destined to win every encounter, triumph in every battle. We can beat him. We know these demons can die. You know so much, so many secrets. They know so many secrets. Very smart they are. Your parents must be very proud. Don't you know the game is rigged? He's programmed to win. He's the king of hell. He'll rip you a new one, kid. How do we beat him? They say you know the secrets of hell. Tell us, why should you protect him? I can't tell you. They won't let me. We won't let him. We'll give him a stroke first. Apparently, he's got a block programmed into his brain that prevents him from revealing forbidden secrets. Fight it, Massimo. Fight it. I'm trying, but I, I tell you... They... Bite your tongue, Massimo, or I'll bite it for you. The pain... Too great. Uh, here, take... This is the best I can do. It's the best he can do. And we're gonna hurt him for it. <laughs> what is it? What did he give you? I don't know. He wrote something on this paper, but it doesn't make any sense. Our people in the field are earning their keep. I've got locales for two more of our people, including the big prize. Whizkid keyboard jockey Jeremy Verdi. If anyone can design a crash program for hell, it's Jeremy. He's prisoner of a demon named Gak, supposedly a disgusting mother. <sighs> Name a demon who isn't. We've also got a fix on Thelma Bay Chesapeake, subvert novelist. She went political when the hand stopped publication of the Faye Weston detective series. Bay Chesapeake's being held in the belly of some hellish leviathan. What's that supposed to mean? All I know is what the text tells me. You'll find out soon enough. One other thing. One of our people inside the Pentagon is located where our torture victims' bodies are being held while they're in the hell net. One of our people inside the Pentagon reported that they've located where our torture victims' bodies are being held while they're in the hell net. Great. They can just disconnect the psychopomps and save us a lot of sweat. Life ain't that easy, Rachel. Release of the bodies is apparently blocked until their minds are freed from their torture in hell. Once that happens, our agents in the Pentagon assure us they can move the prisoners out.
Welcome to chat. The trials of Jonah have been emulated and intensified in this hell torture chamber. The victim is not only trapped in the belly of some great leviathan, but bound, suspended, and awash in the awful, stinking, acidic wash of the beast's ulceric digestive juices. The famous playwright, whose southern gothic works have long turned the stomachs of schoolchildren everywhere, is awash in gastric juices within the belly of the beast. A random femur, the longest and strongest bone of the human body, no doubt the remnant of some previous hell victim. A stone small enough to hold with one hand, evidence of this beast's omnivorous nature. Welcome to Over an abyss that tears through the landscape like a hellacious Grand Canyon, skinny Jeremy Verdi is not skinny enough. If the demon of obesity on the other end of this evil seesaw so much as shifts his weight, it could pitch him off into eternity. A foul demon with an insatiable appetite gulps down maggot sandwiches with a thick coating of sticky tar painted on them. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, this sandwich is great. Mm. Best I've ever had. Mm. Oh, the maggots just burst in your mouth. Oh, like little flavor packets. Mm. Oh, you should try some. Pass. Suit yourself. Oh, this thing needs more tar anyway. You know what would be great, huh? Huh? Oh, a side of child-sized fingers. <laughs> Yeah, Cause kids' knuckles are crunchy, but there's still a little meat on the bone too. Oh, the best! <laughs> Starved to the point of intolerable pain, Jeremy Verdi rests uneasily on his precarious perch. Even Gack's tar-stained sandwich appeals to him. Please, some food, anything, please. I haven't eaten since I've been here, and it's all Gak ever does. Poor kid's in pain. I'd try to tip him to what's really happening to him, but he's so weak he doesn't seem focused on anything. Food! I'm focused on food! Please bring me a crust of bread, a day-old salad. You gotta do something about Gak, but be careful. He's the only thing holding me up. Hmm, that does Hey, thanks for the cold mug of brew. Just what I needed. Hey, 
and there's a maggot. Or oh, 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 something caught in my... Uh, it feels like my... Oh, my throat's closing up. You did it! You put that grotesque freak out of my misery. Now if you can just get me some food... Land of milk and honey coming up, kid. Just hang on. Someone from the front will get you to the embassy. of liquefied tar. A foul That worked. Judas Priest. According to this thing, we were the commandos. What the hell is going on? I mean, this says you're not even Rachel Brock. You're Claudette Simeon, for God's sake. Claudette? Us? The commandos? Ah, there must be something wrong with the computer. I mean, that's ridiculous. I think we might remember a little thing like a former life as a rebel. Yeah, but... Funny, I've never known one of these computers to go wrong. Still, 
damn, you know, it would explain a lot about why those people were being executed one by one. What if the government had captured them and reprogrammed them somehow? Then something went wrong. They'd have to kill them. Sure, it's a great explanation for the others, but what about us? I mean, come on, Gid. They would have had to remake our faces, our bodies, our... Take it easy. I don't like this any more than you do, but... Man, this reminds me of something. Do you remember when we heard about that transgressions operation up in Annapolis? They had some elite infiltration squad up there, planning to send them on some top-secret undercover op. Only the word was they weren't up there to be trained. They were already trained. They were up there to have something done to them. Something that was supposed to make them the ultimate undercover team. You remember? Only vaguely. They were just rumors. Yeah, well, the rumor was transgressions had some new texts on facial remapping. Body sergimorphs, too. I mean... Man, maybe they could create such a radical change of face and body structure for somebody that you'd never recognize them. Faces, sure. Bodies, well, maybe. But what about brains, Gideon? Could they make up totally new thoughts for someone? Judas Priest, could they erase somebody's mind? Come on, Gideon. I mean, I have memories. I have this whole past stored up that makes me sure of who I am. Me too. But I remember the rumors about this infiltration squad, too. They were supposed to be the ultimate undercover team, not just because they would have changed their appearance, but because they weren't going to be aware of their mission or their own true identities. The Hand was going to reprogram them. Wait a minute. You can't just turn thoughts into data. The Actidec did. Maybe the Hand has somehow secretly perfected it. It still doesn't make any sense. Why would they put rebel leaders in charge of an ARC unit? Why would the Hand need to infiltrate itself? I know, Rach, I know. It sounds impossible. Yet, it explains the missing commandos. It explains some of this weird information I seem to know about weapons I've never heard of before. But why, damn it? Why? What would they possibly gain by going through all of this? Why not just kill the captured commandos? I don't know, I don't know. I mean, I really believed in the Hand. I really did. My whole life. Until all this started. But now I... I feel like a rebel. Maybe... maybe something's coming back. Maybe you're right in a way. They could change everything, but... our souls. My God, Gideon. Who... Who are we? I don't know for sure, but look, Gideon or Marcus, the mission's the same now. Stop the hand. That's what we've got to hold on to. Whoever we are, that seems to be what we came to in either personality, so we can't lose sight of it now. We'll just have to figure the rest out when we can. Okay, Rachel? Yes. Yes, it's just... No, no, you're right. The mission's the same, except... If they can do this, if it's true... We'll just have to watch our backs all the more carefully. Who knows who anyone is now? But I do know one thing. I know you, whatever the hell your name is, lady. We'll get through this somehow. Look, hurry up and bust this open so you can do something with Drex. He's eaten me out of house and home. Still stumbling around in the dark, huh? Still... St Still... St
I can see the message on your monitor screen, Dante. Deep Throat wants to talk to us again. Start up that psychopop, Rach. We're heading back to Deep Throat's garage. I'm in great danger. They are close to tracing this well to me. You must get me out of here. I'm in the Pentagon. My real name is Thomas Mayoko. Hurry. You must hurry before they kill me. I must leave. Hurry! How may I direct you? <laughs> Located in the bowels of the building, this room has the look of a lonely sweatshop. But like nerves to a brain, the pneumatic tubes seem to come in from everywhere, connecting the occupant to seemingly every office and activity in the building. How may I direct? Hold. Do not move. Hold what, big boy? Gideon! Rachel! Howdy, Throat. Care to stretch your legs? Be careful. Getting yourselves killed isn't going to do either one of us any good. Cease talking. You will not proceed. Don't you want us to state our business? That is irrelevant. This is a restricted area. Sorry, pal. Sometimes a man's just gotta dance. Do something, quickly! Steel Jack can be deadly. You must eliminate him to save me. Hold. Do not move. Hmm, that doesn't... Hmm, that do Hmm, that doesn't work. Hmm. I can't give this thing away.
Yes, well done. You've eliminated Steel Jack. You must hurry now. Free me from this cage. Well done. Well done. I chose well when I made you two my allies. It won't be safe for all of us to travel together. The CFF is headquartered in the British Embassy. There'll be CFF agents waiting for your arrival. They'll get you inside. You'll be safe and in a position to help defeat the Hand. Your, your, your pardon, my lord. We have suffered a bit of a setback. More failure, attendant? Have I no able servants left to me? Perhaps I should recruit Brock and Ashanti. They are apparently more able than any who serve the Hand. My lord understands that I only report what has transpired. Enough. I detest men who grovel. Look at me. Face me and do not fear. You know my wrath is firm, but just. It's... it's about Thomas Mayakulp, the man we apprehended passing secrets to Ashanti and Brock. He... he has escaped, my lord. He was rescued by Ashanti and Brock. Escaped? He escaped? Why was he left alive to be rescued? Well, we thought to interrogate him before... Was he not guarded? He was imprisoned in the Pentagon. We believed he was secured. Belief is for the weak and frightened. We must act on certainty. Yes, my lord. That's not all the news we have. Believe it or not, it gets even weirder than a virtual hell. What's happened? There's something wrong, isn't there? We've discovered what happened to your attack squad. Looks like our causes were more alike than we thought. Vanders and the others? Are any of them alive? Have you spoken to them? Sort of. You've more or less spoken to Vanders and Simeon. What the hell are you two talking about? Yes. Tell us what you know. All along, we thought we were looking for two groups of people. The members of your attack force and the people who were killed the night the scrub team came for us. Turns out that the two groups are one and the same. What nonsense is this? How could this be? It's disturbing stuff, Senator, and it's not easy to come to grips with. As you suspected, some of the attack force survived. Seven of them were taken prisoner, but Solux didn't damn them to hell or put them to death. No, the Imperator had more ambitious plans for these people, new technologies to try. Solux had them taken apart, Senator. Their bodies and their personalities were changed. They became new people. They would be the perfect agents. Hand planted them in strategic spots and waited. Except that they were sloppy. Not all the programming worked, and when they tried to use some of their new pawns, not all of them responded. The night we were attacked, the scrub teams were gunning down the remade attack squad. They were cleaning up a hand mistake. Then, if you two were attacked that night, you were once... We were Vanders and Simeon, Senator Burr. Part of us still is, I suppose. And that's not the worst of it. Each of the attack squad survivors was programmed with a time-activated imperative. Rachel's imperative will activate in three weeks. At that time, her only goal in life will be to kill you, Senator. She'll stop at nothing, and you know how deadly Claudette Simeon could be. Kill me? You would kill me, Rachel? We don't know. Some of the imperatives never activated. Others did. We won't know about Rachel until the time limit expires. Senator Burr, the choice is clear. You cannot be placed at risk. 
Rachel's condition makes her a casualty already. We have to hold her prisoner. Perhaps even execute her. Watch it, Katarina. You want to see people get hurt? Keep talking like that. The matter is settled, Katarina. The risk and the decision are mine and mine alone. The terms of the game are established. Pray to God we've time enough. You're certain you weren't observed entering? The Hand still respects diplomatic sovereignty of this embassy, but that could change if they knew Mr. Mayakulp was here. Entry was clean. I think we're safe. You have much to discuss with Deep Throat, Senator. Maybe we can bring our national nightmare to an end. I... I... I'm not certain I can be of much more, uh, uh, help than I've already been. I've told Rachel and Gideon almost everything I know. I'm a programmer, you see, but I... I'm not that good. I know the general architecture of the Hell program, and I have ideas about ways of crashing the system, but actually programming something that complex, I'm not certain. I, 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 I don't believe I could do it. Katerina, Jeremy, is it possible? Life is possibility, boss. It's a cinch whatever machines they're running the system on are way ahead of what we're using. I know little about the hardware involved. They're extremely secretive about it. Even the location of the main computer room in the Pentagon is a secret. Anything I can't transmit online, I send over the tubes to the address Miraculum Sepulchrum. The hardware may not be relevant. In fact, incompatibility could be our friend if it helps us disrupt the system. Give us some time. I'm certain we can come up with something. You should resist coming here unless you have something important to report about the attack squad, Solux, or Hell. Just visiting the embassy is reason enough for the hand to pick you up. Really? You'd best take your orders from Senator Burr. I'm just doing what I can to be helpful. Hmm. Huh. I can't give this thing away. Hmm, that doesn't work. Huh. They won't take... Huh. They won't take... Huh. Hmm, that doesn't... Huh. Really? You'd best take your orders from Senator Burr. I'm... We need to get everybody out of there before we can try to crash hell. Really? You'd best take your orders from... You should resist coming here unless... Jeremy, you're looking better than the last time we saw you. Not still hungry, I hope. I feel better. I've eaten. Ah, what a happy sight. Our programming brain trust is complete. Yeah, and we're cooking with nitro here, and we don't need the interrupt. Now, where was I? Yeah. See, if what Deep Throat's saying about Hell's on-the-fly texture generation system is accurate, then they must be compressing data with string space fractals. You lost me with that, slugger. String space fractals. They're only theory in underground e-journals, but the hand must have them. Borrows a notion from physics. The compression program creates an ancillary notional dimension in the memory manager and calls data from there when it needs it. Makes the system's memory potentially limitless. And that rules out any memory overwriting bugs. Keep in mind that the ICE systems are... are... are prohibitively redundant and thorough. Anything you can make here with these machines wouldn't get very far in hell. 
As a practical matter, I'm not certain the system is crashable. Nonsense. We just need inspiration. In a case of Yuhu. Hey, what about a virus that attaches itself to graphics libraries and overwrites images? The system could crash when it can't find an image it needs. The crash would only be localized. That's essentially what happened when I first contacted Rachel and Gideon. They've obviously got a lot to talk about. We'll check back with you guys, but hurry. We haven't much time. What do you make of that note we gave you? We got it from Massimo the Mad. It's tough to read. This guy writes like he has the palsy. It's a computer algorithm of some kind. What's it for? We don't know. Massimo seemed to think it could help us defeat Satan, but damned if we can see how. It is a computer algorithm, and it's definitely C-Space code. Let me see your psychopomp. I'm downloading the algorithm into the psycho. Massimo said this will allow you to defeat Satan. Let's take him at his word. Solux has no doubt rigged every combat so that you can't beat him. Massimo's program just might even the odds. Give you a shot at defeating Satan. Well then, we're ready for the androgyne. I wish I could see Solux's face when the giant discovers it's involved in a fair fight. You folks come up with anything yet? I think we're onto something here. We can devise a program that, when interjected into the Hell system under the correct conditions, will cause it to crash. The programming won't even be that difficult. Well, a little tricky in spots, but the hard part, the dangerous part, your part, Gideon and Rachel, will be ensuring its delivery. I don't get it. Portability's the problem? Yeah, for starters, you'll have to introduce the crash program directly into the main computer generating the Hell system, and we don't even know where that's located. Deep Throat, any clue? As I've mentioned, I've never been there. All of my contact with the main room was through the tube system. I couldn't even email or modem the main system. I had to download everything to disks and send them through the tube system to an address Miraculum Sepulchrum. First things first. Tell us about this crash program and what you need from us. We have to attack the very heart of the Hell system, the spawner program that generates the various pits and lairs in Hell. If we were familiar with the Hell code and had hardware even close to cutting edge, we might be able to program a bug that would find the spawner on its own. But we don't have those things, so here's where you two come in. As the Actidec proved, human minds and computer code can interact freely. A brain with psionic abilities is potentially extremely potent when linked with computer code. The first thing you need to do is find a psionic who's willing to cooperate. We use the psychopomp to scan and download data imprints of his psychic energies and then embed those energies with our crash bug's code. Problem number one solved, then. Okay. The psionic will enable us to make a crash program that will not only be nearly sentient, but will be able to sense and avoid ice systems before it encounters them, thus giving it a chance of making it to its target, the Hell Spawner program. The spawner is the second problem. Right now we're completely ignorant of the code structure. Before we can send in a crash bug, we need to launch a survey program into the code generating an individual hell pit. The survey bug will trace the code back to the spawner. Again, because of our technical shortcomings, the survey bug will need to be escorted through cyberspace by a human presence. You two have more experience with hell sea space than anyone else we have. So, then we need a psionic. Then, either Rachel or I need to deck into sea space and find this spawner program. Once we have the location of the spawner, Rachel and I have to find the hell computer room in the Pentagon, find some way to disable the people working there, and then inject the crash bug into the computer system. Gee, anything else? Look, we're doing the job on this hand crash bug. What else could you want from us? Deep Throat's got data on Satan and what we have to do to get Towns and Ellers away from him. Yes, well, keep in mind that most of the demons you've encountered to this point are entirely computer-generated. However, the major demons, Belial, Mephisto, and Beelzebub, are C-Space representations of real people, Solok's chief torturers. When you fight Belial, or one of the others, you're really fighting a human whose mind is also linked to the Hell system. And once you have rescued all of the prisoners in a major demon's hell pit, you'll have to battle that demon to the death. 
Belial, Beelzebub, Mephisto. You will have to defeat them all before you can reach Satan. Even then, you must penetrate the ice protecting Satan's lair. That ice has the form of Cerberus, a three-headed hellhound. Cerberus will only allow Belial, Beelzebub, and Mephisto to pass. You will have to figure a way around Cerberus. When you reach the gates to Satan's lair, you'll need to enter the proper password to advance. I've no idea what that password is. Once you've done all of that, Satan will be waiting. Really, I must say that the odds of your surviving are not good. It's not like we have any choice. Ellers has to be freed, and if we can off Solix in the bargain, well, that's something worth risking our lives over. Welcome to Char- Don't give up. We're close. We've made real progress on the programming side. Finish getting those people out of hell, and we can take the fight to the Imperator. Don't give up. We're clear. Don't give up. We're close. You should resist coming here. Really? You'd best take your orders from Senator. Look, we're doing the job on this. Don't give up. We're The fairy is in The fa the fairy Don't give up
We've drawn a bead on the rest of them. Brett Carew, the playwright, is chained inside a hellish replica of a steel mill. Former Treasury Secretary Walker Dash is being tormented by the demon Atroxus in a searing desert plain. Randall Singh, one of the CFF's leaders, is being tortured in a hell version of a schoolroom. Finally, and most disturbing, is that Townsend Ellers, the CFF's foremost military tactician, is being held by Satan himself. From what we've been able to dope out about Hell's structures, it's divided into three large territories, each ruled by a major demon. Belial, Mephisto, and Beelzebub, each of whom has a sanctum or lair for their own use. Each lair is surrounded by Hell Pits, like the ones you've been working through. You can only go so deep into the Hell Pits before you have to confront Satan or one of the major demons. It looks like a fairly typical old-fashioned steel mill of the type that used to surround the great American city of Pittsburgh in the heat of the industrial age. The only thing is, even the most despotic of steel magnets never chained someone beneath the overspill of the molten steel. Not on purpose, anyway. Ah! Acclaimed mystery writer turned activist Brett Carew is chained beneath a cauldron of molten steel. The superheated metal periodically pours over her. You're Brett Carey, aren't you? I recognize the photos from the Ark Most Wanted list. This is burning me bad enough to kill. Except the Tiamat, the Lord of Minotaurs, won't let me die. Baphomet? That'd be the demon who rigged this torture. We'll see about setting you free. Hurry it up! Doesn't take a detective to figure that this hurts! Large gears grind and turn and cause the molten steel to pour onto Brett Carew. Welcome to Charity. God knows how these trees ever grew here, but they have paid the price of being part of this charred landscape. Only a demon could enjoy this kind of windswept heat, and even Atroxius has trouble sitting under the burned sky without his handy parasol. A demon reclines in a cabana chair, basking in the unbelievable heat, making a great show over enjoying a cold drink. The once and hopefully future Secretary of the Treasury, Walker Dash, is buried to his neck. His skin is pale and drawn. He is so dehydrated that he cannot sweat. A large skin of water dangles over his head. Beads of condensated water glisten on the skin and occasionally drip. A cord that would release the water hangs within reach of Dash's mouth. By Satan's wings, it's hot. Oof. Even for Hades, this is damn hot. If I had sweat glands and pores in my skin, I'd be dripping by now. You... you scaly bastard. Just let me have one... Drink. Sorry, Dash. You're overheated now. Cold flu is the last thing you need. It'd give you terrible stomach cramps. Goop, goop, 
Uh, I haven't had a drink since I've been here. I don't know how long that is. Listen to us, Mr. Secretary. You're not really thirsty. This is all an illusion, a computer-generated torture. Nice try, Rach, but it won't work. The illusion's too real, his agony too great. In his mind, he really is this thirsty. Please. She taunts me all day. She drinks. And this cord dangles. If I pull it, the water would fill the tank around my head and drown me. I see. All or nothing. You either suffer or you're drowned. You're a strong man, Dash. I'm surprised you haven't pulled the damn cord and drowned yourself. You're not that strong. I, I pulled the cord. Just experienced death by drowning. And then I'm back here thirsty again. so good. It feels so good. Never thought water could taste so good. You two have a shovel or something? You've got to dig me out of here. You made him wet! You let him drink! I'll cut you into a little cube and serve you as appetizer to build the boat next thief! We don't need to do any digging. We, we don't have time to explain, but any second now, you're going to wake up in a room in the Pentagon. A woman there will see you to safety. We're with the front. You can trust us. The front? The Pentagon? What? Uh, hey, hey, I, I feel strange. Something's tugging at me. Master Beelzebub will finish you. A plague of two million flies will descend on you and strip your flesh to the bone. You'll live through the whole thing. Feel every tiny bite as it takes a little flesh with it. Welcome to... The desks and the blackboard and the lecture rostrum all look fairly normal. Maybe it's just the fact that you can never graduate from this class that makes it Hell's schoolroom. A scrawny young man, whose clothes have been reduced to shreds, making him look like some starving beggar off the streets of Calcutta. Not the young, hip English teacher who made the girls swoon. Not the pretty math teacher who made the boys stutter. Not the absent-minded, grandfatherly science teacher everyone adored. Nope, it's the one whose class felt like, well, torture. Hello? Hello? Please, you must help me. You have to get me out of here. I'm begging you. Just sit tight, pal, and we'll... But I cannot sit. That is part of the problem. Please, help me. We'll get you out of here as fast as we can. Try and hold on just a little longer.
I do not know how much longer I can hold on. Every time he asks me a question and I do not know the answer, he pulls on my arm or makes me sit down. And the questions are impossible. Please, help me. We will, we will. Just give us a minute to figure out what to do. No talking! No talking in the classroom unless I call upon you! How dare you stroll in here late, you ragamuffins! I hope you have a late pass! You know, some of you damn demons just take yourselves too friggin' seriously. This is ridiculous. That's enough of that kind of language, young man. One more such outburst and I'll have to send you to the principal's office. Why, he might even have to give you... the paddle. So just bear that in mind. Now then, let's get back to the lesson we were working on before we were so rudely interrupted. I don't know who you are, but please, you've got to get me out of here. This is unreal. Stop talking! Everyone stop talking! Newcomers! You must raise your hand if you wish to speak, or I shall have to place you in a device similar to the one Mr. Singh is in. Oh! I see Mr. Singh has his hand up. Do you know the answer to the question, Mr. Singh? I'm waiting. No, I have been telling you for a million times now. I, I do not know. I do not know. Please phrase your answer in the proper form, Mr. Singh. I... I do not know, sir. That's better. That's it. School's out. Oh, I'm afraid school is never out, Mr. Ashanti. Mr. Singh, why are you standing? Please, take a seat. But... but you know I cannot sit. Then I'm afraid I shall have to force you. Ah! That's it, pal. Recess. No. I'm afraid recess has been cancelled for everyone because Mr. Singh can't seem to obey the rules. It's a shame that I'll have to punish the entire class because of the misdeeds of one student. Now then to our lesson. I believe we were working on state capitals. Now then, class, what is the capital of South Dakota? I wish we could just waste this guy, Rachel. I've got to admit, wasting a teacher is something I've always wanted to do. Wait a minute. I used to be pretty good at geography. It's, um, it's, shoot, I can't remember. Time's up. No reply? I can see no one has done their reading homework. Well, in that case, I'm afraid I'm going to have to hold a pop quiz. Now I want everyone to maintain silence until I announce all pencils down. Anyone not using a number two pencil, by the way, shall die. Wait a minute. What's in it for us? Why, an education, child. And... Well, just this once, I'll declare a recess if you get 100%. I'll even allow Mr. Singh to go out to the playground with you. Although I must say, this test is rather a hard one. It's so good, I give it again and again. No one has ever passed. Now then, where was I? Oh yes, the pop quiz. You'll notice a jumble of letters, each group of which comprise a state capital, if you can decipher the mathematically based code I've devised. Good luck, class. And remember, if I catch anyone cheating, I'll box your ears. Here is question one. I get it, Rach. 
The numbers are encrypted state capitals. We've got to figure out how to make the numbers letters. Yes, that's right. Here is question two. Yes, that's right. And finally, question three. Yes, that's right. Well, the newcomers surprise me. They must be transferring from a superior school district. One where they have standards or some such. Be gone, all of you! Class dismissed! Welcome to Rachel, Rachel Gideon, Gideon, this, this is, is Jeremy. Jeremy. It's, it's risky, risky for me to communicate with you, but I wanted, I wanted to help you in the fight against Belial. Belial. I've detected, detected a weak point in the landscape of Belial's pit. pit. It's, it's near, near the edge of the ravine. ravine. If, if you, you can, can do something to dislodge the earth at that spot and then maneuver Belial to it, the ground might explode from under him. You might be able to defeat him. I've introduced some code that will temporarily, temporarily highlight, highlight the location of the weak point. You come to Belial's lair. You come to wrestle with Belial. Belial will destroy you, break you, rip and tear you. My lord, I have news of Brock and a sh Dead? You are- The plethora of skulls, the rift in the earth, all suggest not hell so much as the place you are sent to if you are bad in hell. There. That should work. You come to Belial's lair. <laughs> This medal, signifying the wearer's obeisance to Satan, is usually found around Belial's neck.
Welcome to... Rachel, Gideon, Gideon this, this is Jeremy. It's, it's risky, risky for me to communicate, to communicate, communicate with you, but I wanted, I wanted to help you in the fight against Beelzebub. Beelzebub. Deep Throat says that Beelzebub is made of flies in the dust of decayed corpses. If you blast him apart, he'll just reform. Unless you can use something on the ground to make it sticky. That way, if you blow him apart, he won't be able to reform. So, you've freed some of the CFF functionaries. You think that you've won something? Look about you. Does this look like victory to you? There. That should work. So, you've... One of Belial's wings, closely resembling the wing of a giant horsefly. Welcome to... Rachel, Gideon, Gideon, this is Jeremy. It's, it's risky, risky for me to communicate with you, with you but, but I wanted to help you in the fight against Mephistopheles. Deep Throat says the key to defeating Mephisto is to pierce his armor. You may have to enhance your blade. Use something on it to help cut through the armor. Welcome. I've been expecting you, Rachel and Gideon. Welcome to my little corner of Hades. Oh, looks like you outwitted my little games. Oh, they gave me so much pleasure. And now you've taken all my fun away. Oh, I'll miss the cries of the tortured. <laughs> now I'm going to have to bring in a whole fresh new batch of the damned. When am I going to have time to throw a little something together for my guests? You don't have to go to any trouble, uh... Say, here's an idea. Oh, how would you two look on a table with apples stuffed in your mouths? <laughs> Pretty good, I'll bet. Glazed a golden brown. <laughs> a good thing I'm already wearing my best suit. Oh, but enough about me. First things first. May I have this dance? Sure, I'll lead. It's showtime! Give me your best shot, kids. Bringing the toy guns around here, I see. Well, then you'd better be ready to play. A butter knife? <laughs> oh, you gotta do better than that. Can't you see? This armor can stop anything.
the lifeless severed hand of Mephistopheles. Welcome to That did it. It's smelling these items from the demons we've killed. Let's move before she changes her mind. Home of Hell's own junkyard dog. He's chained, but the random skull or two shows what happens if you get too close. That did it. It's smelling these items from the demons we've killed. Let's move before she changes her mind. Even overlooking the miniature demon graffito artist at work on the gate, it is still the horrible epitome of every child's Halloween nightmare, the forbidding castle of the Wicked Witch or Warlock. A big bristled brush like the type house painters would use. What should I paint? What should I paint? At last we meet, my children. Welcome to the kingdom of the wicked. My playground. My church. My castle. Yeah, well, we'll see what's left of your kingdom when we're done. Oh, arrogance! The last tension of the inevitably damned! How I love to witness the cocky son of a bitch coming to terms with his own retribution! Believe it or not, we're not here as punishment. We're here of our own accord. Yeah, strictly business. I see. And eliminating the Dark Lord is on today's agenda? How endearing! In my house, utter stupidity will also earn you insufferable torture. I damn the fool as well as the sinner. And you are no strangers to sin, fornicators, blasphemers, lascivious trespassers. I have seen your acts of sin and lust. I have seen what you are made of. You've seen nothing. I have. The night with the confiscated narcotics, the department payroll password and the online call girls. That kind of thing doesn't come cheap, does it? Hey, that was... And you, my dear, with members of the 33rd Regimental Division, the week in the house of virtual meet in Reno, Nevada, you single-handedly kept that place in business. Hey, when were you ever in Reno? Forget it. We got more important things to deal with here. Wait a minute. Reno? That is why I offer you sinners my hand. Let us all three wed in sin and be one in sacred carnal evil. We will consecrate our bond in a bloody orgasmic union of sex and death. Come be one with all things vile and depraved. 
sinners though you are, you are both still virginal in your knowledge of evil. I will be your father, your lover, your master, you. I will take you first as consort, servant to all my needs. I'm not for the taking, so don't... Not you, arrogant one, but your partner in sin here. I will eat his flesh, break his bones, and lap up his marrow. He will be my manservant, and he will make his home in my chamber pot. I think I'm about ready to end this. How about you, Rach? Hey, I've been ready. Ha! Try what you can, children. But as you make your final fall from grace, my mouth will be eagerly awaiting to receive you as you land. For I am more than Satan. My power reaches beyond this plane into every crevice of creation. I rule over every facet of existence. I rule the sins you regret. I rule the thoughts you think, the water you drink, the laws you break. I rule the United States of America! God save the Imperator! Solux. Yes, Hades is my creation. All sin springs from me and is led back to me. Just as all power in the earthly plane rests in my hands. In the hand of God! I am good. I am evil. I am all things and I will destroy you! Come to me, my dark angels! <laughs> Think you're gonna cut me up into little pieces? Nothing. Not a damn thing. Kinda of pisses you off, doesn't it? That was my pleasure. <laughs> Come to daddy, children. The interior of Satan's lair seems as big as all outdoors, and a hellacious outdoors it is. But to the victims imprisoned within the picket fence or chain nearby, even the fiery swirling sky of the horizon must seem better than the hot sand of the foreground. That's a wrap! You got them all! I didn't think you could, but you got them. Hand would have needed a battalion of scrubs to take you two out. It isn't over yet, Katerina.
Yeah, yeah, miles to go before we sleep. I get it, but ease up, man. You're taking on hell and you're winning. So then, all that remains is the most dangerous mission of them all. Senator, we've been linking our brains into a hostile computer system and running missions in an environment designed by our enemy. What's one more dangerous mission? She's right, though. This will be worse. We're not just asking one of you to go to hell. This time we're pushing beyond the illusion, pushing to the space beyond hell. You've had a fighting chance until now because the hell program logic simulates and abides by an approximation of Earth's natural laws. Now we propose to project your consciousness into the completely abstract realm of the hell source code itself. Even Deep Throat doesn't know what that will be like. Can't be worse than hell, can it? Could be. It could be so disorienting that you'll be unable to function. In hell you can see your enemy. Belial's standing there with a sword, so you fight him. In abstract sea space, a few invisible lines of code will be your enemy. They're every bit as lethal as Belial, and you'll never see them coming. The three of us devise a surveyor program that we will copy into the Psychopomp's memory. The code is designed to trace links in another program's code, hopefully tracing a smaller branch, in this case one hell pit, to its source, the hell spawner program, the code that generates each hell pit. In essence, you are surveying the hell computer code, making a map that the hell bug will follow once we've introduced it. Why not send this surveying program in by itself? Hardware limitations. The psychopomp can't process information fast enough to keep up with the data flow you'll be receiving. Even if it was fast enough, it lacks the core memory to store it, even for the few seconds it will take for us to download it. Only a human mind can hold that amount of data transmitted at that speed. That's why Rachel has to deck in and escort the survey program. No, not Rachel. I'm going. The hell you are. You heard the man. It has to be Rachel. We've been analyzing the two of you as you've decked to hell. Rachel's brain is more efficient at processing visual stimuli. There's no question. It has to be Rachel. All is at last prepared. We can move on to Solux. We will begin the mission as soon as you are ready, Rachel. Katerina will monitor the psychopomp. As I understand, you will appear to be traveling on a raft down the river Styx until you break beyond the illusion into abstract cyberspace. Gideon will be able to communicate with you. When you're ready to begin, use the psychopomp and travel to the address Spawner. I'm moving upstream. It's fast. I'm not sure I can hold it. Stay focused on the spawner. It's unbearable. I'm burning up. Agent's heart rate too high. Cardiac arrest imminent. Pull out. Negative, Command. I can hold it. I'm through. It's madness here. I think I'm gonna throw up. Commencing data transmission. You should not have come here, Rachel Brock. You will find no answers, solve no mysteries, discover no salvation here. This is my world, my reality. Here I am God. Flatlined. She's gone. No. No, you can't be dead. You were so close. Solix. Murderer. I don't care how powerful you are, you monster. Your time is coming.
You're certain you're ready for this? I'm fine, Senator. I've never been more ready. This can't be personal. I've no use for someone with vendetta in their blood. You'll only get yourself and a lot of other people killed. I hear you. I'll get Solix, but I'll do it the right way. Nobody else dies except for that bastard. We now have a fix on the Hell Spawner and a decent map of the Hell Code. We have a crash bug that's psionically augmented. All we need to do now is introduce the crash bug into the main computer. That's your job. Deep Throat indicated the location of the main computer room might be linked to the Pentagon Chapel. Be careful, though. The computer room is certain to be heavily guarded, so you'll need to eliminate those guards. Once you've introduced the crash bug, a group of CFF commandos will storm Voice of God communications and I will bring the truth to the nation. Once the Hand's great lie is revealed, it should easily be overthrown. Here is the hell bug. I've asked a great deal of you already. Now I must ask that you make one last mission into the Pentagon. <laughs> Never have I met with such arrogance to attack me here, to risk so much foolish woman as if her resistance was ever anything but futile. My lord, I do not understand. Brock, what has happened to her? The fool sought to attack me in cyberspace. Didn't she realize that this is the one place she is most vulnerable? The one place where I cannot be eluded? I have ripped out her wires, deleted every trace of her data presence. She is at last dead, and Gideon Ashanti is next. We should move more swiftly to destroy him, my lord. In his grief over his lover's death, he will be even more dangerous. His grief will make him all the easier to kill. It will cloud his judgment and make him reckless. This has become quite personal for him now. He will come to kill me, and there will be the final battle and my ultimate victory! <laughs> How may I direct you? The more things change, the more they stay the same. A mailroom's a mailroom, but pneumatic tubes seem to have made a comeback in the high-tech, state-of-the-art Pentagon mailroom of 2095. Another throwback to ancient times, this container is shaped to slide through a vacuum tube to given locations within a network of pneumatic piping. She's busy lifting boxes, so muscular and concentrated she looks like she'd lift you if you'd step too close. Yeah, yeah, give me and get. You just gotta put it in one of those tubes. All right, where's it going?
Hey, I sent it. I sent it. Now, as you say on your freaking planet, I'm Scray. How may I direct? It looks like a legitimate church, even though Solene Solux is reported to slip in here regularly. Maybe it's the lure of the flaming bank of candles. A long golden taper. It's hollow, with a wick inside that allows various berobed clerics to light candles from a safe distance. Solix! Did you think you had done away with the great Imperator Solene Solix? Fool! You won a small battle. I will win the war. I have created an entire dimension. What have you done? My mind is sharper, my body stronger, my knowledge vast. I rule two empires because I am capable of nothing less. Two empires indestructible and unquestionable. Don't show your face to me, Solix. Unless you're ready to fight this like a man, a woman, like whatever the hell it is you are. This time there's no virtual war. I want to feel your flesh rip in my hands and your blood spill on my shoes. This time I want to know that you're dead and rotting in a place fouler than any hell you could create. As you wish. It's time you felt the power of the hand of God firsthand, Gideon Ashanti. Let's see what you're made of. I've already seen what you're made of, Solix. You destroyed the woman I loved. You destroyed an entire nation. You even destroyed me once. But I'm back. And this time I know who I am. I'm the guy who's here to kick Imperator Solene's ass. Give it up, Gideon. Relinquish your soul to me. It's God's will, brother. And these are God's hands. This is almost as easy as having to do away with your little girlfriend. But I must admit, it won't give me nearly as much pleasure. <laughs> you bastard.
You've never seen a computer system like this one before. The hand of God's mainframe that controls hell. No, those aren't New Age Barca loungers. They're simply meant to encourage REM enhancement of the VERT program the chair's victims will be hooked up to. Progress is charted on the giant video monitor, while program options can be programmed on the smaller bank of vid screens. Once you introduce the crash bug, it will begin to corrupt the held data files. While the crash bug does its work, we will do ours by storming Voice of God Communications. strike in Washington and cyberspace. The torture must stop. When the pain has ended, I will address the nation. My fellow Americans, the liberation has begun. Solene Solux's rule ends today. As this video output proves, hell is a lie. A malefic computer-generated illusion rendered with illegal technology and used to create fear. A fear they use to perpetuate their unjust rule. Today, because of great acts of individual heroism, that rule ends. In the coming days, I will need the help of all Americans as I move to form a provisional government. I will formally address the country in a few days. Until then, I say with renewed energy and spirit, God bless America! Excuse me, Mr. Ashante. The ceremony honoring you and Ms. Brock begins in ten minutes. President Burr is waiting. Thank you, Sergeant. I'll be right there. Well, we saved the world, babe. Sleep well. You've earned it. At least I know you're in heaven. You've already survived. <laughs>